Stroke by stroke, he's going past him, and he's gone past him like he's standing still. What a race! What a race! God, be I calm, Gagin. Be calm, be calm, be calm. The Hungarians are away. The South Africans are South away. Africa side are by away. side by it's side. It's Hungary. Hungary take the initiative. Just a mass of quality punish. See collision in the background. World champ. Look at that. Uh, from that's going to be. Republic. That's going to be tears. It's going to be laughing. Yeah. She can't believe it. She's so happy. Egan is going to get squeezed out. That is dangerously oh, close yeah. to the edge. It is McGregor. It is McGregor. No one has given up. Boris is hanging on. Alonso is hanging on. Gold medalist Hank McGregor, South Africa. Welcome back to Beskov in Romania for day three of the Canoe World Champion Canoe Marathon World Championships. It's a beautiful day here. You can see on screen it's cold though. Two degrees this morning, mist on the lake, and we've got some exciting races, but they're gonna have to be wearing a few more clothes than they would have been earlier in the week. This morning's schedule junior k1 and women's c1 on the course at the same time you see the juniors in the background warming up already and the boat holders on the pontoon doing a uh, bit of exercise there to keep warm but uh, that's what the lake looks like this morning and what a fantastic venue for some fantastic racing
So here we are, back to the course, and 10 minutes to go until the first race of the day. Junior boys, K1, always a difficult one to call, especially after a two-year break, because we just don't know who's who. But here's the course they'll be on. Start at the pontoon we've just seen. The yellow lap is the first lap all the way around the top turn and back to where they started. Round, no portage this lap. All subsequent laps are in red. Same course as that first lap, but at the end of each subsequent lap, we get out around now. Portage, as many of those laps as the class dictates, and then the final lap, the green lap there, just up round the top boys and back to the finish. So junior men's, we were just saying, hard one to call. Um, you have to go with history and point out potentially the uh, Hungarians as winners. But in this also, we've got uh, both 377, Zach Tava from Great Britain, who had a great world championships at the sprints, ninth in the K1000. So that must put him up there at least. The South Africans, Fancy Millwood, that's both 365, training with his dad in Peter Maritzburg. But there's your schedule for the day. K1 juniors, C1 women, C1 men, K1 men, C1 women. No, sorry. Let's stop, let's stop at the K1 men. So it's a, a big day. All the individual senior world champions will be decided today. Air temperature is up to four degrees now. That's two more than it was an hour ago. So things are looking good in terms of getting a bit of temperature. But just look at the venue there, it looks fantastic. Here's the big guns, Chief Official Rood Heisler. Deputy Chief Official Brian Chapman, he's my ears and eyes for the stuff that I can't see on screen. And uh, that's where I get my little snippets of information from. So here's the uh, type of boat they'll be in. Kayak sitting down double-bladed paddle, rudder at the back, doesn't show on the picture, but there is a rudder at the back, they steer with their feet, makes it a whole lot easier than the canoes where they don't have a rudder. That's why you see bigger groups in the kayaks than in the canoe. So here's your list. Merberg from Sweden, Didier from France, Mikotti, Italy, Santos, Portugal, Millwood, who the South Africans are touting as a potential. Itria from Argentina, Martinez, Spain, Sorensen, Denmark. Cellier, Hungary, always got to be on the list. Basil, Moldova, Gladikowski from Poland, Wortmann from Germany, Jorgensen, Denmark, Hasco, France, Alemo, Italy. Zach Tava, ninth in the K1000 a couple of weeks ago at Junior Worlds. Kolos Vary, the other Hungarian, looks like a good draw for both of those. Retrosins from Ukraine, Hennis from Germany, Monte Rosso from Uruguay, Keslin from Ireland, Rybanski, Slovakia, and Seriuk from Romania. Luca Ferry from Great Britain, Valdery from Spain, and O'Keefe from Ireland. I think there's still more on the last sheet. Salinas from Argentina, Rick DeLind, son of Dolph DeLind, who used to race years ago, multiple medalists in these events. Yehuda from Czech, Smith from South Africa, even off Bulgaria, Stefan off Bulgaria, Kupas from Romania, and right at the bottom of the list, Traczewski from Poland. So a massive field. It's going to be hectic. There's a lot of testosterone, uncontrolled testosterone in the junior men's K1. It's usually pretty eventful, and there'll be some uh, naive decision-making at times, which makes for a bit of excitement. Sometimes when you're out there, it's the sort of excitement you don't need. But so far, the races have all gone pretty well. Very few swimmers and very few incidents on course. So the lull of the quiet, if you like, before the storm. On the course at the same time as the junior men's K1 will be the women's C1. And that field gets bigger year on year. trying to find the list of women's C1. I'm sure they'll come up on screen at some stage.
Their lovely little morning's going to be interrupted shortly. By these guys. Just four minutes to go. You can see how crowded the start line is going to be. The sheer number of officials on that raft. It's really nerve wracking when you're on those lines. Everyone feels like they're too close to you. You really don't feel like you've got enough space to paddle. We saw Luca Ferry from Great Britain going across. Both boys from the same club in this one, Elmbridge Canoe Club. And I know that Katie is down there making sausage sandwiches this morning for anyone who went wanted to go down and watch the race live at the club. So good morning to everyone at Elmbridge Canoe Club. Can't believe you haven't brought me a sausage sandwich, but hey, we'll cross that next time we meet. So good luck to the boys in that one. I've got a bit of a personal interest there, so forgive me if through the commentary I get a bit biased at times. That's my prerogative though. So minutes to go. And the boys will be lining up on that pontoon. It will be extremely tight. I'm guessing also that out there in the uh, viewership is Dolph Talind with his son, number 389 racing. Morning, Dolph. We had some good old races together back in the day. Dolph was one of the top enders, multiple medal winner, and great guy to race. Always good fun. And one day, all us old timers need to get together and have a few drinks, that's for sure. Morning, Dolph. Three, six, eight there is Sorensen from Denmark. We saw how good the Danes were yesterday. Um, it's always difficult to call, but it's definitely worth watching out for them in this race also. Apparently, the Danes have their best chance in the Junior K2 tomorrow. But we saw how well they raced yesterday, and they can't be written off. So about five up from the bottom there, South African Smith trains with Uli Hart, who had such a great race yesterday. So that's part of the, I think, of the Orca squad. And uh, he also third at the uh, World Championship surf ski. So he's hardcore. Not going to be frightened of the distance, not going to be frightened of doing a bit of work. So the blue boat of South Africa with Smith, definitely another one to watch. 378 there. Kolos Vary from Hungary. It'd be easy to spot in his fluoro hat. Traditionally and historically, the Hungarians always do well. Ferry from Great Britain coming across screen in there in the distinctive white and blue patch boat. Closest to us from Poland, Traksuski. I would give a name check all the way up, but uh, we can't see them really anyway. And it's going to take a little while for everything to settle out to a point where we can identify individuals the spaniard just getting on the line about halfway up the field will be maybe valdere there's a list of names coming up that's our list look up from the bottom up so from the bottom up poland romania bulgaria bulgaria south africa check 
And it's going to be a long time until I can pick out individuals. Somebody's not quite back on the line yet. And they'll, they'll be not on the line because that is so tight there that nobody really wants to settle in case they say go. They don't feel like they're comfortable enough to get a good paddle stroke in at the start. And it is an awful, awful feeling. It looks like the Hungarian with a hat on is a bit keen to get away. So right by him to his left is Tarver from Great Britain, ninth in the K1000. So he's somebody to watch. So somebody needs to pull that Hungarian back a foot. And then we can go. Maybe he just has a longer boat than anyone else. Away they go. And just above the South African Smith was Zahuda from Czech. It was away well. But somewhere in the middle there is someone pretty fast. And this race, Smith going really well from South Africa, close to us on screen. It looks like a Romanian or Ukrainian. I think a Romanian. Check away fast from the start. So South Africa, Spain, Denmark still struggling to pick out the name of the leader. A little clash there from Spain and South Africa. Looking for Romanian, could be Hans Seriuk from Romania, currently leading. Smith from South Africa in the green. Hungarian in the fluoro hat. Kolosvari. Tava just at the back of the group there. The white shirt, red and blue band around it. We've got the Czech still in there. Zahuda, 390, closest to us. Through comes Spain, trying to take Either Dane off the lead wash, which he has, or he may even be going all the way to the front. So now it's Spain leading. South African comes round the Romanian. There's going to be collisions here. We've got Romanian in there. He's not used to these sort of races. Italy also up there. That's going to be Alimo from Italy. And away goes Smith. Smith working hard with intent to break the group down fairly quickly. Romanian stays on the V. Good race from him already. Denmark in the white boat. Hungary with the hat on there. Luca Ferry close to us from Great Britain. They all go through, and it's going to be a long while till this one settles. Great shot behind them, paddling into the sunrise there. It'll take a while for this one to calm down. There's a lot of action behind that main group there. Crossing over. A little bit of contact there. Smith leads from the Spaniard. So Smith, Micotti from Italy, Martinez from Spain, and Syriac from Romania, Yehuda from Czech, Valdere from Spain, Rybanski from Slovakia, Itria from Argentina, Selye from Hungary. There's more in there, but that's that's the best I can give you for now. Sorensen, Denmark, also in there. The German Bortman on the far side. So Spain lead. 
with Martinez. I think out to the side there, you've got the German, and I'm not sure who's with him exactly. Still a big group. So the two groups still not coming together. The German happier to stay out of trouble. And actually, there's a couple of guys making a run for him. Just tells you that he is looking slightly more impressive. Away goes Smith. He's coming across too. Everyone wants a little bit of Smith. That is some angle to be coming across. There's going to be problems there. You've got no chance. They dealt with it extremely well. And on they go. The boys racing really well. So we've got a huge front group still. So Bortmann from Germany leads. The way the whole group ran to him suggests that he was pretty impressive coming up that left-hand side. They would have doubted him to start with, being on his own. They would have thought that attack would fizzle out. But he came through and is leading very, very strongly now. A few empty gaps in the back of that group that need to be filled. And we go back to the women's C1. So nearest us, Marley McIntosh, junior world champion a few years back. But big players are kind of in the middle. We've got Babak from Ukraine, Kisban, and Klimova second from the top. Middle in the yellow boat there, Beth Gill. It was so impressive in the short race a couple of days ago. And we have to uh, factor her in now which we'd never th thought as a commentator, at least, that we'd ever be factoring in a C1 from Great Britain. But there she is, center of the picture, and good luck to her today. Anything's a bonus after the first day's work. So two up from the bottom. Well, it's not. So I'm struggling to give you names there again. So there's Beth Gill from Great Britain. Paddling into the sun. Got a Romanian. Viridak in the blue boat. Somewhere out there. That's her in the white cap is Babak. Everyone needs to get to Babak. And with her will be Kisban. So that's Kisban and Babak. And Gil currently leading this one out. McIntosh, closest to us from Canada. A little bit of contact between the Romanian and Gil there. Just sets Gil off on a path out to the right-hand side. Well managed, and off she goes. Meanwhile, the K1s are all around the top turn with no incidents. Seem to have two Italians up there still. South African Smith still leading it out quite a lot. Vortman there. Celier from Hungary. Obviously quite hard to see who's who. Smith leads. And there's quite a lot. Only just clinging on to that group now. You could lose four or five imminently. They're coming down for the first of six big laps. They've got five portages to do today.
currently being led by Smith, who seems more than happy to do some work. Looks like the Hungarian going out round the outside. He wants to get more comfortable in the group. He's going to squeeze right across to the side of Smith eventually, I'd imagine. Going across one, two, and he stopped after two. So, he... so we're going to have a new leader any minute. I think, that, is that the German again? A little bit of contact. There you go, you got three off the back there. That's looks like the other South African. More contact there, you see, and a swimmer. We've got ourselves a swimmer. Clip the back of the other boat, and he was actually the one who came off worse. So that's what I mean about the slight. And again, someone taps the back of the boat. You see those dramatic changes in direction. That's just poor steering, naivety. A little bit too much aggression when aggression isn't the answer. So here we go. Women C1, there's the two big players. Bye back and kiss ban. It's been a race between these two for a few years now. Somewhere out there though is Beth Gill. These two are going to be hard to match over the distance, that is for sure. So just get your quick position on these. So it's currently Babak, Kispan, Klimova. They were the first three in the short track. And now they're currently sitting first three here. Gil in fourth. Macintosh fifth, Casal sixth. You see Gill and Macintosh out to the left there. Klimova out to the right on her own. But the two big players, middle of your course, <laughs> with Babak taking Kisban right next to that flag that's planted at the end of the sprint course there. So our swimmer could well be Santos from Portugal. He was up there mixing it with the front group. But he tapped somebody else's boat tail and that was enough to drop him in the water. So Vortman leads. Portugal's day ends early. So front group now of Germany, Germany, Italy, Hungary, South Africa, Spain, Denmark, Ireland, Spain, and Argentina. Potentially the second South African of Millwood also in there. Here's the women's C1 again though. And Klimova continues her charge on the outside. Beth Gill running down the waves on the inside. And this is pretty impressive stuff. Genuinely exciting to watch this. When you know the athlete's journeys to get here, there's a lot goes into this stuff. There's a lot of history. There's a lot of decision making and soul searching goes into these races. And women see one to the right. Now a four boat race. Big group coming down. Germany, Italy. I'm 
Germany again, South Africa, Spain, Hungary, So Hennies from Germany leads from Portman from Germany, Mikotti, Italy, Sellier from Hungary, Smith from South Africa, Sorensen from Denmark, Balderay from Spain. Vortman leading. Round comes Smith, tracked by the Italian Micotti. O'Keefe on the outside there, doing a great job for Ireland. Hungarians struggling out the back there. You can see the yellow hat of the Hungarian. He's detached from this group for now. Smith is mixing it up in this group. He's the one that's seemingly doing the damage when it's happening. So we've got Smith, Mikotti, Hennies, Vortman, Sellier, Sorensen, O'Keefe, Salinas. And then Valdere was the one just falling off the back of the group. Hungary in there, Kolosvari going out to the right. So, Smith in the green shirt, blue boat. To his right is Sellier from Hungary, white boat, white shirt. Ireland on the left, green shirt. Italy, blue shirt, white hat, that's Mikotti. To his left, the German, black hat, and carrying a drinks bag. Well, both the Germans out to the left there. That's Vortman and Hennies. Tucked in the back, blonde hair from Denmark is Sorensen. Argentina, Salinas is the blue hat and then we're looking at Millwood as the second South African at the back of that group. Still quite a big group. But now down to a more manageable size. Three nine three there from Bulgaria. That's Stefanov. Again, his moment of fame. Long moment of fame. Main group though presses on. All calm down just a little. Change of direction there, suggests one of the Germans on the left side of the group is pressing on again. The group will go over to him. So Italy. Sorensen there in the white, two Germans on the far side of the screen. Smith again piles on, takes on the, takes on the lead, but held off by, maybe not, by the Italian. Argentina blue hat tucked in the back. The Argentinians race so intelligently. They're always there, thereabouts, always in the front of the groups. So Germany, Germany, Denmark. Danes have to be confident, two golds yesterday. When your team's doing that well, all of a sudden you feel a whole lot better about yourself. Yellow hat of Hungary back in the game. 
That's Solier. Okay, Notification through that 376 Italy Alamo is out of the race. But his compatriot leads at the moment, Micotti. Italy, uh, um, Italy, Ireland, O'Keefe, right there. His day ended early. And as we expected in the women's C1 two boat race, Babak and Kisban. Babak would normally like to be away already by now, but uh, not going to happen on the first lap at least. It might take a portage to break these two. So there's your Italian. 376, Alimo, his day's over. So in the women's C1, got Babak and Kisban. 20 meters behind, Limova. And about another 20 meters behind her, Beth Gill presses on ahead of McIntosh from Canada. The others fall in further behind is Casal, Kovaleva, Antos, Nishiban, Sansonina, Kazakova from Russia, Antos from Poland, and Honcharova from Ukraine. Kisban, Klimova, Gill and McIntosh seem to be the ones in with a shout of deciding who gets what in terms of podium positions. These are your lead two. And I think that's not going to change today. It's just which one is which. So Babak in the dark kit and Kisban. There's Klimova there. Staying out of the waves, doing her own thing. That's obviously a decision she's made. Looks comfortable tracking the other two. Speeds are very similar. And the junior boys go up for their second top turn. In the junior boys, still that same big group. Germans taking it on. Sellier from Hungary, Mikotti, Italy. Millwood. O'Keefe, Rabanski, Sorensen, Smith, and Salinas. Just stringing out the two at the back of the group. A group of Oh, it's got to be at least 10 in there. Cleanly round the turn. Positions in that group fill up. And it's just a case of deciding if you'd be happier somewhere else. If you're uncomfortable where you are or you feel vulnerable, then you change your position. If everyone's happy, it'll stay like that for a little while. Somebody coming out round the outside on the left side of the group as we look at it. Pulled out round the back. He's going to make a move up the side. Two more following him, hoping that he's their lift to the front. That's spotted on the right-hand side of the group. Action on the right-hand side now. Group widens. Others on, on the left moving out to hold off the attack coming up the side. And that's why you've got that change of direction and the coming together we saw just at the top of the screen there. All action in the junior boys, but the procession 
at the front of the C1 women remains the same. Babak leads from Kispan. Kispan just struggling to get round the outside of Babak on the turn. Ducked in behind her. And we'll come up the other side by the look of it. Just in the back, Klimova. Back of the shot there. Babak leading. Kispan. On her tail for now. Round comes Beth Gill. Little look across, see who's behind her. It's McIntosh from Canada. Klimova on her own, just behind the lead two. Looks catchable to me. The distance between Klimova and Gill is currently about 35 metres only, seven lengths. It's very seeable, and if you can see it, you've always got your hope. So Kisban struggling to get back to the side of Babak. Marley McIntosh on her own, currently in fifth position. Junior boys, still a big group. Looks like the Spaniard dropping off the back of that group now. It's Martinez just adrift, struggling. There's a wave there behind the second right person. So well organized now. So Hennis Mikotti, Selye from Hungary, O'Keefe from Ireland, Sorensen, Denmark, Millwood, South Africa, Smith, South Africa, Wortman from Germany, all in this front group. And the Spaniards still just hanging on at the back. There's the line of women's C1s. It looks like it's opening up at the front. That's a single file day by the look of it. At the front, Mikotti takes it on. Sorensen to his left. Sellier to his right, through comes Smith again, then Germany, Argentina, and Ireland. Looking good, Mikotti. Two Germans this side in the red boats. This one, though, 382 is the other Irish, Kesleen, with two French, Ukraine, and 361. From Sweden is Merberg. Group very much changed shape again. A bit of chaos. I don't know who did the damage, but it's being done as we speak. Italy still out there with Makotti. I think Sellier to his right. And the group's exploded right now. There are people all over the place. 
when it comes back together, not everyone's going to make it. It's Selye doing the damage. Meanwhile, in the C1s, it's Babak. Out on her own at the front. And we've got a day of this. Kisban lost the wash going round the turn and has never regained it. And she's going to watch that gap grow and grow. Bad news for her, but good news for those chasing. Klimova, Gill and McIntosh all in with a shout of medals at this stage of the race. Babak just seems to have that relentless cruising speed that the others just can't match. The graphic at the bottom shows Ukraine, Hungary, Belarus and Great Britain. That's the top four. That's the look down the line. One, two, three. Babak, Kisban, Klimova. Gill on her own, comfortably now in fourth. So the man must be approaching the first portage. Here we go. All action. South Africa, Smith. Hungary, Selye. Those two are first. South Africans always, always run well. Then we've got the Argentinian, Salinas. Smith, who watched his teammate Uli Hart yesterday come third in the K1, looks to be planning on going better than that. These three potentially away. Sorensen next in on the right hand side. Smith goes with him. Goes the Hungarian, Selye. Smith just about to make contact with that group. It could be a group of four. Spaniard off the back now. Martinez. He's not going to make contact again. Check coming through. Zahuda through the drinks lane. Second Spaniard. Argentinian. Second Argentinian there. Itria. Coming through. Great Britain, Zach Tarver. About a minute off the pace now. Still big groups there, though. Still company. We've got a swimmer at the end of the pontoon. So Smith, Mikotti. Sorensen and Selye. That's your group of four. They're away. At least three of those have been happy to work so far. So three out of four is not bad. A bit of encouragement being shouted to press on. But the chase group is just behind with the Argentinian, Salinas. German just hanging on there. Hungarian making hard work of it. At the back, he's been in and out of the group. Come back to the French. Not really built for land speed, that fella. Oh, he's got a dead leg. That's a horrible situation to be in. Just trying to shake out his right leg. The two French together. So often happens that you end up racing around with your teammate. It's kind of a magnetism to your teammate in a way. You know where you are with them. And 
it's uh, very frequent that you see teammates going round together. So from Romania there, strong on the first thousand meters, but it's faded slightly. And Seriuk from Romania. Could be Kupas. So the groups gradually reforming. German on the outside there, strong throughout the day, but can only do so much work. He's done a lot on his own. Smith leads, looking over his shoulder, a bit of help may be required, not getting it from anyone right now. So to his right, we've got Smith leading, to his right, Sellier, to his left, Mikotti. Then we have Sorensen in the V, they're the ones who are comfortable. Argentina, blue hat, Germans on the far side, with second South African, Millwood, the other blue boat. So now that's our group of eight. Kolos Vary, the Hungarian with the yellow hat, not appearing on the graphics. Obviously lost his tracker. There's back to the women's C1, and the gaps are beginning to open. Babak untroubled again at the front. Kispan being hunted very much by Klimova, Belarusian in third place. So Ludmilla Babak, pretty much on a journey to her, I think it's her fifth title. We've only had this race six times. She's going to have won five of them. Pretty much establishing herself. It's the dominant force in women's marathon C1. Klimova gradually hunting down Kispan and Gil just behind. So not settled yet. So Babak moves ahead. Kisban hunted by Klimova. And Beth Gill about 70 meters back on Klimova. Ahead of McIntosh in fifth place. Then it's a fair way back to Casal from Spain, Kovaleva from Russia, Antos from Poland, Sansonina from France, uh, Nishibun from Japan, and Kazakova from Russia, and Honcharova from Ukraine. So Klimova slowly but surely hauling in Kisban about 20 meters, but it looks less on, on camera. Graphics says 20, 
The visual says less. I think this is a view we'll get quite a lot of today. Miller Babak out on her own. Just seems to be better than the others. So Lamilla Babak heading down towards her first portage of three. And it looks to me like Klimova is on terms now with Kisban. Kisban looking at the back of two people for the first time in a very long time. There's the juniors. We got eight boats in the juniors. That's Sellier from Hungary, Smith from South Africa, Mikotti from Italy, Hennies from Germany, Sorensen, Denmark, O'Keefe, Ireland, Salinas from Argentina. And one more. Millwood from South Africa, I guess. Still in there. Bit tough for the cameraman today by the looks of it. It's lovely having a sunny morning, but for a cameraman, it gets a bit tough. Leading now, Smith from South Africa. Clearly has a bit of a magnetism to the uh, grassy bit, keeping everyone pinned against the edge. We haven't seen that all weekend, but. Uh, One way of keeping the group narrow. Out to the left, I'm guessing, is the German again. Well, that can't last all day. You can't do all that on your own all day. That's Wortmann from Germany coming out on the left. He's the sort of guy you wouldn't want to be racing in a time trial, but in a group race, he looks like he really struggles with the cut and thrust of moving around the group, just much happier out on his own. Be a good K2 partner for someone. But he's come through the group. You can see the chaos he's caused. He's made it to the front of the group. It was a long journey round, but stirs up the pot again. Go back round the bottom turn for her first portage. So Babak, pretty much a formality now for her. the next few laps, the next couple of portages. It's difficult when you watch this, you, you think, right, you know, is it too easy for her or is it just massively impressive that she's that much better than anyone else? It's a tough call, but second out there is Klimova. 
Got Kispan carrying her boat on her shoulder. Klimova has overtaken her and is second onto the grass. That's her you see running towards us in the all black. Kispan behind her with the white shirt. And we've got <clears> ourselves a change. Neither looking particularly lively on the land. It's going to be tough for Kiss Band now. Klimov has caught her on the water. There goes Gil. I think she's going to gain some on the running section. Definitely moving better than the other two were. And there's still chance for her. It's going to be the Hungarian Kispan. If anyone that Beth Gill's going to catch. Up comes McIntosh. Getting things organized and bizarrely turning her boat round. Sure, there's a reason for that. Maybe it's easier to carry. I, I, I don't know. So Macintosh in fifth position. So it's Babak, 95 metres ahead of Klimova, who's 10 metres ahead of Kispan, who is another 100 metres ahead of Beth Gill from Great Britain. McIntosh, 150 behind her. So position's pretty set at the moment. This one is set, set in stone. We've seen it before. I'm sure we'll see it again. Babak on her own at the front. Sal from Spain, only 50 metres behind McIntosh. There you can see it. That Casal was pretty sure has closed down time in that. Probably while McIntosh turned her boat round. So top of your screen there, Klimova. Then Kispan, then Gill. Then back to McIntosh and Casal. Running through the porches now from Poland, Antos. And in come the boys for portage two. So, Hungary, Celia from Mikoti. And this is going to get busy at the far end. Hungary, two out the first three. Smith and Sorensen also there. Then a small gap back to. Millwood. This could get a little bit tense. Celier leads. Mikotti, Smith, Kolos Vari, Sorensen. All the C1s out the way. That's good. Oh, little mistake from Sorensen there. So he still can't get away. Sorensen's in trouble here. A lot of trouble. The race is going without him. He's now trapped behind another boat. And that was oh, torrid time for Sorensen. He is not happy and his rudder doesn't work. Sorensen's out the game. There you see him going to the right. Just can't steer. Unless, unless he just got the steering bar trapped over to one side because he looks okay again now. But he lost the front group. And that is not what Denmark wanted to see. And all of a sudden, it's Hungary, Hungary and Italy out in the front. Smith has to be there somewhere. Pretty much from nowhere comes Kolos Vari. He's been loitering around at the back of the group up till now. And then all of a sudden, when it splits to three, there he is. 
he's not on the graphic because his tracker's not working, but that's Colos Vari in the yellow hat to the front. There he goes into the lead, and he's clearly more comfortable in a group of three than he was in a group of ten. So Hungary, Hungary, Italy. Tava from Great Britain running through. Currently in 18th position. And the sky gets clearer. The mist has gone now off the lake. The mist we had this morning, it's beautiful when it's mist on the lake, but it was a bit cold. So gradually warming up for the subsequent races. And the K1s now are going to come hauling through the women's C1 race. C1s won't be enjoying that. They'll end up with a long period of rough water. I'm sure some of them will deal with that better than others. There's your three leaders in the junior boys. Stirring it up now is Cellier. These three are going for it. They've made a break that they want to stick now. The two Hungarians and the Italian are off and away. Further towards the back, that's Prosciens from Ukraine. Two Frenchmen. That's Hascoe and Didier from France. Stripy shirts there, We're almost missing the string of onions. There's your three leaders, and it looks to me like the Italian is struggling. Mikotti needs to find a position that's more comfortable than where he is at the moment, because that just isn't working for him. Romania to Lind there in the Netherlands. Kathleen from Ireland. Top turn. And Babak continues her journey. You don't get a lake much flatter than that. Look at that. It's going to be disturbed for them soon, though, because the K1s are coming through. There'll be the K1s that catch her. Or she's troubled by any of her. C1 mates in that race. There is Klimova from Belarus in the background. She has pulled out a fair distance now on Kisban of Hungary. Kisban making her way around the turn. Next round that turn will be Beth Gill of Great Britain, followed a couple of hundred metres behind by McIntosh of Canada. Casal after McIntosh. Single file racing, though, in the women's C1. There's your first three. Very much a foreshortened picture. The actual distances, 109 metres between first and second and another 50 between second and third.
100 metres then, back to Beth Gill in fourth position. Still time though. And if Kisban cracks, there's still a medal here for Gill of Great Britain. And that would be beyond awesome. So lap times there. And there come the K1s, the three leaders. Celio leading, and they're being chased down now by, well, by loads of people. Hard to see who's who, but it looked like the South Africans leading that chase. And we're going to have, well, there's your chaos as the group reforms. People fighting for what's left if they didn't get there first. It's a tough call. Closing down a group of three. There's only one good wash. Only one of you gets it. And then it's a bun fight for what's left over. Always stressful times when a group reforms. But they've already come through. All but the top four of the women's C1. Pretty consistent lap times for Babak, which isn't a surprise. When you're on your own, it's pretty much a time trial, and you're just going to hit your speed, and you're going to go and go and go. It's going to be the same speed pretty much for her from start to finish. None of the changes of speed that you get in those big groups, and very often it's the changes of speed that kill people. That's the drain on the energy. And the winner of these races in the big groups is rarely the person who would be the fastest if it were down to a time trial scenario. It's how they manage the ups and downs in the speed and the recovery from the times when you're going slightly faster than you want to be. And it's that that counts. Average speeds count for nothing in a big group. They do count for something if you're in the women's C1 race, though as Babak will testify. So the big group in the juniors is Mikotti, Smith, O'Keefe, Hennes, Vortman, Salinas, Sellier, Kolosvari, Millwood, Actually, maybe not Millwood. Millwood's bringing it the second group. But that first group, here it comes. So here come the juniors. Hopefully, they'll get past all three of these C1s before the turn and the portage, because otherwise it's going to be chaos. Guess at the moment, the South Africans lead in that K1 group by how close they are to the edge of the lake. Just coming past Beth Gill in fourth place. So Colosfari has been added in now. So it's Hennies, O'Keefe, Sellier, Colosfari, Vortman, Mikotti, Monterosso from Uruguay. We haven't mentioned him all the time, so that's probably my error. But Monterosso from Uruguay in the mix. Mikotti from Italy also there. 
Salinas from Argentina in that group also. Big group just behind them as well, about 100 meters behind. Sorensen in there after the mishap he had on the portage. Not sure what happened there. Looked like he got his rudder to the bar, caught to one side of his footrest. So South African leading. That's why the others are seeing a little bit more foliage than they're used to. South Africa, Germany, Hungary, Ireland still hanging in there with O'Keefe. Super impressed by him today. And this is going to get tight at the portage. We've got a nine boat front group. That's further down the course. That's the, one of the chasers chasing groups could be the First chase group. There's Itri of Argentina, Slovakia, Spain, Sorensen from Denmark, Martinez, second Spaniard. All in that group on his own. Dangling between the two groups, though, is Millwood from South Africa. He's moved wide to get the big waves rolling down the center of the course. But he's got a hope that front group disintegrates a little bit and he can pick off a few people. That's hard work for Millwood right now. Trains in Peter Maritzburg, coached by his own dad. That always goes one of two ways. It uh, works for a lot of athletes, self-included. Did I just describe myself as an athlete? I think I've gone back in time. Still, back to the race in hand. Cellier leads. Moretti, not Moretti, Micotti, sorry, right behind him. Smith on the far side. Germany with Vortman still in there. Here comes Babak through the portage. She's going to get through her portage before the boys come. She's going to be the lucky one, I think. Through the portage clean, she's got a lead of some 100 metres from Klimova. That distance isn't really closing down, but what is opening up is the distance between her and Kisban, which is now 80 metres. The Kisban falling back. Through comes Babak. Kisban, no, sorry, Klimova, just climbing out of her boat. Kisban on the outside of all those K1s. That's a tough break for her just coming into the portage. Klimova will be caught on the run, I think. And she's going to be getting in at the other end with all the K1s. Babak away and clear. And the boys come out for their third portage of five. Through comes Smith in the drinks lane. Selye from Hungary. Kolos Vary from Hungary also going in for a drink. We've got the uh, blue shirt of Argentina, I think, there. No, it's Italy, sorry. That's uh, Chotti. 
Smith, Sellier, and Mikotti. They're the first three away. A little bit of space between them now. Someone else has joined them there. Not sure who that was. O'Keefe, maybe, of Ireland, was up the sharp end there. And here comes the second group. This is getting busy now. Somebody's doing the work to pull that second group back, and the two groups have now mingled. Tail end of group one is mixing with the front end of group two. And there's hope again for those in group two. Spaniard there, Martinez, just running behind Beth Gill on the portage. So Martinez on his own. Seven and a half K to go to the finish of the juniors. Gum, Ferry, and Tava. The check. So Huda. Red boat, Poland there. Ferry, Tava, Zahuda, and Traczewski. Casal from Spain. In the women's C1, currently in sixth position. In that C1, the gap between third and fourth has halved. The waves from the K1s have upset the Hungarian way more than they've upset Beth Gill of Great Britain. And the chase is on. It's still a 30-second gap, but it's a lot smaller than it was. And Great Britain's Beth Gill is in with a shout of closing down Kisban all the time. The water's rough. Beth trains with a big group of guys up in Nottingham, and rough water is no stranger to her. Oh, close call from the C1s there. So there's the differences. 80 metres between Gil and Kisban. Gil with a sniff of a medal. K1 group catching up two more of the women's C1s. French coming through. France, Ukraine, and Sweden, all in the junior men's there. Seven K to go in junior men's K1. Women's C1, closer than that, three and a half K to the finish, one more portage.
Ireland, Kathleen. Stop for breakfast in the drinks lane there. Second Ukrainian in the C1, also coming through. That's Honcharova. She's coming through with Kazakova of Russia. Polind <coughs> still chasing down the Romanian. And they are currently in 27th and 28th place. The junior men's K1. So France, France, Sweden, Ukraine. There's the view up the course. It's a bit of a mishmash of classes up the front there now. <coughs> K1s will be catching the lead C1s now. Babak's probably in there. In the thick of that somewhere. You just see her in the middle of those two groups. Top group goes round. Top group currently, Mikotti from Italy, Smith from South Africa, Selye from Hungary, Kolosvari from Hungary. Santonina from France there in the women's C1. And she's with Antos from Poland and Kovaleva from Russia. So final portage coming up for the C1s. Two more to go for the K1s. Selye, Kolosvari, Salinas, Mikotti, O'Keefe, Monterosso and Vortman. It's looking like those two groups still confused as to who belongs in which after the last portage. Strung out further than it looks on screen. But that front group looks like about six people solidly in that. Others just dangling off the back right now. Just trying to find somewhere that's a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> Smith leads it out. <laughs> Come in, tail enders here. That's Romania. It's quite a long way back now. It's a Kupas of Romania. With Kupas is Stefanov, Bulgaria. So getting to the sharp end now of this race, we've got two portages to go. Smith leading out. Taking his group close to the edge, maybe studying botany or something. Maybe he's got an interest in trees, foliage. 
definitely likes going down that edge of the course. The other group moving into the center of the course to run down the big waves and move out, move in down the waves and hopefully get contact again with that front group. So the front group, five people at the moment, Smith, Cellier, Salinas, O'Keefe from Ireland and Colos Vari. Big day for Ireland out there today. Awesome to see. John Simmons doing most of the coaching over there. He's had some great results in these races over the past few years. He's really made something out of not much when he first went over there. And hats off to him. Great job. Something's happening now. Either those two groups are a lot closer than we thought could be coming together or someone just got fed up with looking at trees and they've moved out slightly. Could be moving out just to keep that second group from running down the big waves. Smith leads. Cellier to his right. And this is going to come together, I think, by the portage, isn't it? Group of four just behind these, which is Itria of Argentina, Vortman, Micotti, and Monterosso. I suspect that's the German out to the right hand side. Dash across the back of the group, which means that they're getting in touch. Solier, Salinas, Colosvari, O'Keefe, and Itria. <laughs> so Itria made the jump into that group. So we've got two Argentinians now. Nutria and Salinas. Six boats. The South Africa lead. Argentina to the left. Salinas. Argentina dangling at the back of the group with Itria. Ireland in there and the two Hungarians. Just behind them, Germany, Uruguay. Maybe Italy. Hard to see on screen for me at the moment. Sun reflecting on the water. Go back to turn at the back. Meanwhile, in the women's C1, state of play hasn't changed much. Babak leads by about 250 meters now from Klimova. Further 100 back to Kisban. And almost another 100 now back to. Beth Gill. So there's your leader. One portage to do and a short lap. O'Keefe trying to get past Cellier. Smith in the blue. Colos Vari at the back of the group. Three six three. Micotti of Italy had a great race for the first half, but it's all closing in on him a bit now. Cellier, Smith, O'Keefe, Colos Vari.
Itria and Salinas. Selye first, O'Keefe second, Smith third, Itria fourth, Kolosvari out at the back there, Salinas. Selye running quite well. Smith digging in. He's not going to come in for a drink. Selye goes in for a drink. Argentinians look like, well, he looks like he's struggling. That's Itria. Front of his boat's looking like it's heavy. Maybe a bit of water in there. He's just struggling to stop it bouncing. Polosvari goes through. And Salinas from Argentina. Whoa. Tough break for Millwood there. Just lost grip of his boat. And he's running with the Italian Micotti. Gap to the group in front. Looks too big. Going to be Sorensen there. These boys are looking a little bit tired now. Heads rolling back a bit on the run. Oh, oh. Millwood in a lot of trouble there. He's done something. Is but that's that's someone who needs some help. Maybe we don't need the camera on this, guys. So Bavak comes in for a final portage. Bit of a formality here. She's got a big lead. Matching the junior boys for running pace on the portage. So Babak, short little lap of honour for her next title. She's going to be added to the list of people with multiple titles. Tava running through. Chasing down. Ferry is goes through the drinks lane. And Zahuda from Czech Republic. Babak untroubled. Up at the front, Kolosvari leads. Smith to his right. Tucked in the back, Selye. Then it's the two Argentinians. Itria in the white boat and in the blue hat, Salinas. Group of five. One more portage to go. Last long lap. Kolosvari looks back. See who's going to help him out. Itria is the one who takes over. Very motivated now. Stay ahead. So on that last portage. Through comes Klimova on her last portage. Dress for bad weather. Who knows? Could close in. Klimova in second place and comfortably in second place. Here comes Beth Gill. Not too far shy of Kispan. Probably see her on the run now. So 
about 30 seconds the gap, but only one small lap to go, and it's a big ask now. Back round the top turn, Gill on the portage. That gap is very, very small. That is gives a lot of credibility to our first competitor in women's C1 in a long time. Fantastic work from Beth Gill. I heard a Macintosh from Canada by some 350 meters, so she's not going to be closed down. Top four is going to be Babak, Klimova, Kispan, and Gill. Girl closing down Kiss Band by a further six seconds on the portage. There's Klimova. She's in second place. Kiss Band top of the shot. We just saw her boat heading up. Maybe I was mistaken there. It was different, different boat. There's the South African. He's clearly in distress at that portage. I hope he's okay. It's Millwood from South Africa. Obviously gave it his all. So there's Klimova, bottom of the shot was Kispan. Klimova, silver medal position. And she's going to hold on to that fairly comfortably. <clears throat> With Mula Babak, though, untroubled. She had company for the first long lap. Second turn was where she made the break and has never looked back. Pretty much a repeat of every race she's ever done. It's very hard to see that gap closing in the near future. So there's the lead group of junior boys. I think that's the lead group. Seven boats. Seems too many. No, O'Keefe is back in. Salinas, Itria, Selye, Smith, Kolosvari. Klimova coming in for her silver medal. She's across the line in second.
Beth Girl. Fourth place. Hats off to her. She's taken on marathon after an introduction to the sport in the sprint program. And she has absolutely blitzed her first year's competition in marathon. Fourth in the short course, fourth in the long course. And she has to feel like change of discipline for her has been a positive. Awesome. Love it. Round the top, Marley McIntosh being chased quite hard now by Kovaleva. First Casal in shot there. That Casal may have overhauled McIntosh into fifth place. A few late changes. In position. That's Poland's Antos. Casal in fifth. So Babak, Klimova, Kisban, and Gil, top four. Casal coming in for five. That's what a long time kneeling up in a C1 does to you. Hopefully happy with her day's work. And the boys continue towards their final portage. Back to seven in the group now. Salinas, Smith, Itria, Selye, O'Keefe. Kolosvari. And who have I missed out? Somebody. Smith in the blue boat, trying to take the initiative again. Final portage coming up. Oh, that looks painful, man. Just struggling to pick out on the picture who our seventh man is. Got Celia and Kolosvari from Hungary. Got Salinas, O'Keefe, Smith, Monterosso. And it's all getting a bit tense now as they come down for the final portage. Smith leads. There goes Kolosvari. 
very strong on the water. Smith closes out the Argentinian Itria. Closed out in turn by Sellier. Sellier takes the lead from Colos Vari. Sellier looking very, very strong there. Salinas to his left. Colos Vari struggling to keep on terms. He's going to fight it around the outside of the bend there. Sellier looking very, very strong. Down to five now. Smith just tucked in the back. It's going to be a survival game for him if Colos Vari drops. With depending now on Colos Vari. Itria struggling at the back as well. Colos Vari just makes his way up. Could be a lifeline for Smith. That's desperate times. That wave is just disappearing. There it goes. Smith is going to lose a length or two coming into the portage. And Sellier, Salinas, and Colos Vari. Fifth the victim there of Colos Vari just dangling too far back on the wash. There was nothing he could do. I think he can outrun some of these guys. I don't think he'll be that phased. Sellier, slow, slow getting out of his boat. Polosvari. So through comes Sellier. Salinas from Argentina. Big gap opened up now. This could be the moment that Sellier takes it. Watching him go around that bottom turn, he's going to be very hard to catch if he gets away cleanly. Colosvari on the right. In the yellow hat, he's going to come out pretty much side by side with Salinas. That's your first three. Smith just behind them. It's going to be very hard for him if Salinas gets to Colosvari. <clears throat> Round the top, round the bottom turn, Spain. Valdere leading that group. Germans paying for the early work that they did. That's a tough, tough run now. Three eight one there. Monterosso from Uruguay did well to be in that front group for quite a long time. But both these boys now out the running. There's your leader and very probable winner, Celia from Hungary. So while these guys finish the sharp end of their race, Ross Solly is going to get us an interview with somebody. Is it, is it the right time for the interview? Who knows? Let's see what happens. Over to you, Ross. Yes, thank you very much, Ivan. I'm here with uh, Sophia and uh, Beth, third and fourth, I think, uh, in the, uh, the women's race. Tough race, girls, but congratulations. Uh, bronze medal, Sophia. How hard was the race? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was very, It was very hard because it was very cold and uh, the girls are very good so it's a very hard race it was very cold this morning wasn't it w was it hard to get going in that cold weather uh, yes uh, in winter we <laughs> paddled but yet my legs like ice and i can't running and this was so uh, hard for me and beth we're used to seeing you in sprint this is a, a whole new picture for you have you had fun Yes, yeah, I have. I'm learning a lot, um, learning from these guys. Um, but yeah, it's a great, good, good opportunity, good experience. But we just need to get more women into canoe and make it more exciting for everyone at home. 
Yes, uh, it's a bit hard when the girl at the front is so good. I mean, what about Ludmilla? I mean, she is such a classy athlete, isn't she? Yeah, she's very good. Um, we're all chasing, uh, working hard to get a bit closer, but she's she's very good paddler, and we can learn a lot from her. I mean, you've been racing against her now for a couple of years. What do you think of her? What do you say about the way she paddles? Uh, I don't know. We train harder and harder, and uh, then we maybe get closer to her, I think. <laughs> well, congratulations. As, we, as you both said, it would be nice to get more women involved in canoeing because it is such a great sport to watch. Congratulations on your performance today. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the interview, Ross. And while that was happening, Celier was making his progress towards a finish. He's close to the line now, on his own, ahead of his compatriot, Dolos Vari, who's fighting it out with Salinas from Argentina for silver and bronze. Celier, though, on his own, across the line now, and it's a win for Hungary, as it so often is in the junior classes. So Hungary first, and now there's a race between, it looks like Colosvari for silver, yes, and Salinas from Argentina, third. Smith couldn't make that stick after the portage. Three, six, four. Santos from Portugal. He was the one we I'd missed in the front group, just behind Smith. So apologies to Santos and to probably the whole of Portugal for not mentioning him for the entire race. Um, yeah, that's commentator error for you right there. The two Ukrainians paddling around together. They've still got their final portage to go. As we race in with Vortman and Monterosso. Looks like Monterosso gets the best of this one. So Monterosso in sixth place behind O'Keefe from Ireland, who had a great day out. So Uruguay, sixth place. I don't think we've seen a Uruguayan in the top 10 in junior K1 before. So that's super impressive from him. Bortman from Germany, who did just way too much work early days and paid in the end. Behind them, Spain. Valderay, sorry, I missed those guys going across the line. The screen blank of Valderay, Kabanski, and Hennies. across the line now. So that was Rabanski of Slovakia from Valderay of Spain and Hennies of Germany. So they are in eighth, ninth and tenth. Martinez from Spain in eleventh on his own. And then it's a battle between the two British athletes and the Czech for 12th, 13th and 14th. Martinez coming through. Been on his own for a lot of the day. Crossing the line. Salier. Santos. And Colos Vari. Colos Vari, a very familiar name in marathon racing. Used to win the C1. A few years back, over and over. Zach Tarver there in shot.
So Zahuda finished in 12th, Ferry in 13th, Tava 14. Sorensen, who had rudder problems after, I think it was the third portage, never got back on terms. And Mikotti of Italy, who was so, for so long, up in that front group, doing so well. From Poland. Trekzuski. So Romanian running through for his final portage. So Mikotti, sixteenth, Traksuski, seventeenth. And a little flurry from these four. Two French, Haskai and Didier. Merberg from Sweden and Gladowski, Gladikowski rather, from Poland. French taking it to the others here. So it'd be France, France, Sweden, and Poland. Two French locked together as they have been all day. And round the top turn goes Keslian of Ireland. I'm sure there's a bit of pride at stake here. Because Haskai. No, it's not. <laughs> it was. And then it turned out to be Didier ahead of Hasquay. Three, seven, nine from Ukraine. Petrosians on his own. A look over his shoulder, not sure who's chasing him. It's never too late to make a big deal if you finish. 369 there from Ukraine, Kuzniak. There's some very tired looking boys out there. Lind. Here comes Ireland. Good day for them in this race. Storm into the finish. 
looking strong at the end of a hard day's work. Okay, Celine from Ireland. You will have seen O'Keefe be mixing it in the front group today. And I'm sure he will want to be doing that next time. Happy with his day's work. Nicely done. Romanian, Hanseriuk next. We start to turn our attention already as these guys come in to the next event. Next up, C1 men shortly after the finish of this one. So Hans Seriuk coming across the line shortly. Quite sure what's happening there. I think the two buff shot maybe haven't done their last portage yet. The last couple of boats in for that final portage. Kupas from Romania and Stefanov from Bulgaria. I think that's the last of it. Just having a little uh, boat twizzle. Because why wouldn't you? Game on, Bulgaria. <laughs> Try, trying to get round. But Romanians' route is uh, variable. Just holding them off. Making their way down to get in the water for the final time. Neither of them looking particularly sparky right now. They'll get in together, finish the race together. So this has to be the last one from Moldova, Basile. About five minutes to go until the water's cleared 
and our next race starts at 10 30 20 minutes time which will be the men's c1 just fueling him up for the last thousand When they're paddling like that, it's hard to see why they're still. Three, nine, two there from Bulgaria. Ivanov paddling very strongly for someone this far back. A few weeds on the front of his boat. To Bulgaria across the line with Ivanov. That's Romania and Bulgaria right there. Millwood again from South Africa. He's gone back out. He was the one we saw in trouble. Fair play to him for going back out there from the state he was in. Gone back out to finish. Awesome on the first half of the race. Then clearly struggled. Collapsed on the landing stage. I think fourth portage and has gone back out there to finish the course. And that's a lesson to a lot of people. So Millwood finishes. This is Stefanov from Bulgaria. And from Romania, Kupas. pass across the line and from Moldova Basil Big guns coming back down 
Colin Simpkins there from South Africa. You know you've been bad when you have to go on the umpire boat at the top turn. Colin Simpkins paying there for something he's done in the past, I'm sure. Basil finishes. Long day out for him. And things calm down for the men's C1. Men's C1 has pretty much a roll call of everyone who's anyone in it. And the big news really is that boat 433, Kova is back in the game. Haven't seen him for a while, but back in. So all the big names plus are all in there. few highlights. Smith, it was so good early on. The Italian there as well. Early days. Sorensen still there at that stage. Just went wrong for a few of them. Ultimately, it was the Hungarians that came through. So we've got 10 minutes till the next one. I'm going to leave you briefly while I go and get myself a cup of coffee and we'll be back.
Reverend Stefan. Hi. Yes, no worries. Uh, no worries, mate. Historically, he always has a tussle against the Hungarians, and the Hungarian is back. So there's your list. 422, Busto from Spain. Dunilac from France. Campos from Spain, current world champion. Brezina, always there. Davidov, always there. Lenikov from Russia, again, one of the big players. Balas Adolf, he won the short course a couple of days ago. Very impressive, also very impressive at the 5K in the World Championship sprints. But Martin Kova back in the game. Vincente Diaz from Chile, Sergio Maciel from Portugal. Again, we've seen him already this weekend. Jan de Luis from Czech. Usually gets better results in the C2 than in the C1, but uh, everything to play for. So, Stefan. Yeah, and the condi conditions this morning is uh, absolutely marvelous. I was watching uh, when when um, the juniors and the C1 um, ladies were paddling this morning, and it was absolutely marvelous uh, at the course, as it seems. It was really cold this morning, uh, two degrees when we yeah. first got down to the course, and four when the boys actually started. That lovely mist hanging over the course, over the water that you get in the autumn, winter months, and it did look very picturesque. I'm sure the boys were cursing a bit that it was that cold for their race, but uh, no, it was a good one. It was a good race, and ultimately, I don't know, 
it, you know, it looked a big group, so many people in with a shout. And so many from that big group faded right back in the end, and it was the Hungarians that came good in the end. And uh, as they do, they continue their dominance of the junior races. They do, and um, the dominant uh, players here, you already mentioned Manuel Campos and Martin Cover. I mean, Campos has quite an impressive record. He started to uh, take medals already back in 2009, had silver 2009, 10, 11, 13, 15, 16, and gold medals in C1 tw uh, 2012, 14, 18, 19. And actually... Uh, in uh, China in uh, 2019, he had a double gold. He, he also won the C2. Uh, but he, when Martin, Martin Cover is there, it's always good racing between the two of them. Yeah, and I think Balaz Adolf is, has stepped up now yes. as well. I think that's yes. another one in the mix. And Belenikov, always quite good as well, especially in the early stages. So I think yeah. we're in for a good race today. Brazil yeah, and Davidoff, they're all in today. Yeah, they, they are. They are. And we, it was also <clears throat> interesting in a short short course where Manuel Campos gave up or something happened to him the last 200 meters. We haven't still found out what. But he, he was in a medal position that just dropped off uh, when, it, when 200 meters were left of the race. So... Yeah, it will be interesting to see if he is up to his uh, traditional standards or if he I've, actually... I've sort of kept in touch with his, his social media stuff and he's, there's no mention of any problem. And, yeah, he's looking forward to this one. They were they were fourth and fifth, the Spaniards, in uh, in the short course. And, you know, he, he's not talking about any injuries. So, yeah, everything to play. But I, I, I think... Stefan, with, with just the limited numbers still in this, that short course hasn't taken on the importance that it has in the kayaks just yet. I think that'll be another couple of years, maybe. Yeah. So there's Kova. 4 3 3. And what do you think old Campos thinks when Kova's name goes back on the start list, Stefan? <laughs> he must, he must yeah. think, oh, come on. Give me a break. Thought you'd retired. Yeah, we all remember the gear in, uh, in sprint. Uh, that's one of the it clips was, at the beginning yeah. of these shows, Stefan, yeah. when he went past him. Amazing. Yeah, it was. Uh, and Campos knew at that moment, yeah, I can't do that. That's not not in me to do that. But also Roman <coughs> Erlenikov, he had been uh, within these um, races for a couple of years now, and he did very well at the Europeans previously this year. But um, He did really well in the Worlds at Portugal as well. Yeah. So I think that's, what's that, three years ago now. Yeah. So yeah, Erlenikov there. Ready and lined up. Maciel closest to us. He had a swim yesterday in the under 23s when he was mixing it for a top spot on the podium. But away they go. Pretty much an even break for everyone. To Louis there, check. Leading it out. Maciel. Maciel, yeah, just having a look to his left. Taking his time. Two Spaniards. Top of your shot there. Maciel going across. That's a pretty even race as it stands. And I think that's kind of what you'd expect looking down the name yeah. list. There's no real... No one's really going to break it up. So Delui leads... Hungarians with him, Spaniards out on their own with Elenikov. There are not so many in this race, but all of them is um, the top guys. So we don't miss anyone, I think. No, I think I think they're all in. 
from France there, Dunilac. I have to compliment myself on the coffee I made in the break, Stefan. Sometimes you make a good one, right? Yeah. Perfect. So a little bit of change of direction from a few there as the washes get a bit confused. It's a rush to get over to the Spaniards. Rosina. Orange hat on the outside. Balazadov moving up. And moving up swiftly. Maybe a little group forming there. Maciel just off the back of that group, as is Rosina. The Campos and Busto from Spain. And Kova from Hungary. Balaz also. Balaz Adolf also from Hungary. So that's your four, two from Spain, two from Hungary. That leaves us open to team tactics, individual tactics. There's a lot of individual history between these guys. Adolf leads in the white hat. Cova in the white shirt, the two Spaniards. Campos was on the left of the group as we look at it. And Busto on the right. Presentation for the junior men's K1. The ones form a large group again. So as the anthem finishes, we look down at the group and we've got Kova leading Adolf to his right, uh, Campos to his left, Davidov from Ukraine in the blue boat and just at the back there is Busto from Spain and Maciel from Portugal just about clinging on to that group. The women's C1 presentation in a minute. K1 
October Leeds from Campos from Adolf from Davidov and Maciel. Elenikov in the white boat, the last of those in shot there. Still keeping in touch, just about. Brezina, a good distance down, next on the line. Seven boats, all in contention. Elenikov just going through the backwashes as they all line up to go around the turn. It's Kova leading from Adolf, from Campos, Davidov, Maciel, Busto, and Elenikov. On his own, to the right of shot there is Brezina. Cover is setting some speed now. It's splitting up. Yeah, stringing the group out around the turn. Down to four in that front group. That's Hungary, Hungary, Spain, and Ukraine. Maciel, Busto, and Brezina, the three adrift. So four guys all in the group. So while the anthem was playing, we've watched in the bigger part of the screen, Sergio Maciel from Portugal gradually work his way back to that front group, went wide, ran down the big waves in the middle of the course, and has managed to get contact back again with the front group. So we're now looking at Campos, Adolf, Maciel, Kova, and Davidov as our front group of five. Just behind them, Busto from Spain. Olenikov, it seems, isn't going to feature in today's race. He's behind another 20 metres from Busto. Brezina in the red cap, just to the back of your shot there. He's also 
a little way back, 10 metres further than Elenikov. So Kova leads, Adolf in the white hat, Maciel, red shirt. <laughs> We have seen Erlenikov in, in that kind of position before. I uh, remember the Europeans two years ago, he was exactly positioned That's like right. that. Yeah, I do remember that now, yeah. Stefan. So, yeah, good point. He, he didn't give up, he was just going on, and then suddenly he, he was within the group again. He's two years older now, though, Stefan. Yeah. More experience. Uh, that's what it is. We'll <laughs> We'll, we'll big up the experience. Yeah. Yeah. They're... I mean, there's, there's a lot of paddlers with lots of experience here. I mean, in the Manuel Campos, a silver medal already 2009 in yeah. Prestuma at the Worlds. And then medals in almost every every world championship. Yeah, in every world championship. Every world championship. Yeah. 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 And Kova must be the same. He's missed a couple recently, but before yeah. that, he was. Yeah, he had a his first gold. Medalist. Yeah, he had his first gold back in 2013. Missed out to Campus um, 2014, but then won 15, 16, 17. He didn't participate 18 and 19, at least not in C1. But now he's back. Back in a group of five at the front of the race. Adolf takes the lead from Kova. Maybe not. Maybe it's Campos. He went through. Kova drops into the back. That's one of the first times we've ever seen a C1 in a V-Wash, Stefan. Yeah. Good sign. So that's Kova. Tucked in the back of the group. You can see it's quite hard for him to steer in there. You can see all the corrections he's having to make. And that's why, presumably, not many people do this. He's struggling. He's all over the place. But he's staying in there. The wave's a benefit. Steering's really hard. And I guess that's a compromise that you have to weigh up the pluses and minuses. But for now, at least, Kova sat on the V-Wash. And these perfect conditions probably help. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely flat. Yeah, today. Maybe a bit too flat. It's no wind taking away the waves. Behind that front group, it's Spaniard. Busto on his own, and just behind him, Elenikov and Brezina. So one big lap done. It's Adolf that leads. Adolf, Kova, Maciel. Great effort from Maciel to get back in touch with this group. Campos and Davidov. Davidov on the outside of the group, coming around the turn. Working hard to stay there. As long as he doesn't drop beyond half a length down, at which point his boat will get pushed out. They're all doing well. Very well organized around that turn. Maciel on the inside of Adolf. Just slips off the back. Just lost a length or two. Kova straight back to Adolf. Kova looks good. Indeed. Changing speed when he needs to, going where he wants to in the group. Basiel working hard to get back to the left hand side of Adolf. Davidov on the outside of the group. Working well.
and Campos also in that group. This is Prezina and Elenikov. Prezina in blue, Elenikov in red for Czech Republic and Russia respectively. So Hungary, Hungary, Spain, Portugal, and Ukraine in the first group. One big lap down, seven, six to go. Busto on his own. And then Brezina and Olenikov chasing him down. Bit of a turn of speed in that front group. Stroke rate's gone up. Somebody struggling on the outside. That's going to be Maciel. I think it's Adolf. Oh, it's Cover. Martin Cover, who set his so, speed. And that is pressing on. Yeah. It's Davidov who's struggling. He's off the group. Maciel also. So Kova's done his bit. He asked Balaz Adolf to come through, and he does just that. And this could be the break for the yeah. first three. There's definitely intent here. Maciel will go out to the left and try and keep on the big waves and the flat water. That sounds contradictory, but you know what I meant, Stefan, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's big, nice rolling waves out to the side of a group. There's not the mishmash you see behind. Yeah, I can see it perfectly well. Davidov there is in the mess behind the group, whereas Maciel going out to the right there of our shot, you can see those big waves that he's trying to get onto, and they'll keep him in touch. And he will just be hoping that at some stage this speed drops and he can get back in touch. Then he Campos just can now. Follow, follow that V wash uh, to the front. Yep, absolutely. That wave will go all the way. You can see the group slowing down as the waves get more more perpendicular to the course there. The Campos has slowed down just a little, but not for long. That's a fairly significant break. Campos, Kova, and Adolf position themselves well for the podium as it stands. So once again, it will be Hungary and Spain. A familiar sight in this race, that's for sure. Looking back down the course, Maciel just losing ground slowly. Davidov pretty much out of it, and he's being chased down by Busto of Spain. And then the two behind them is Elenikov and Brezina. But there's some 150 meters adrift now. These three back to a more manageable pace. And they'll continue their journey. Cover some ground. Well, we have a bit more action, I'm sure, at the first of the six portages. So Campos leads, tracked by both Hungarians. It's an interesting race, Stefan. That, that Campos has to work out a strategy. Yes. He, I mean, I know there's miles and miles to go now, but if he's going to win this, he's got to have a plan to deal with two Hungarians. Both of them very, very strong. Yeah, um, and they have a better turn of speed than him at the end. Yeah. yeah. So he's going to have to do some damage, or at least try to do some damage, over the laps between now and the finish. And uh, that's a that's a big ask because you, the default wants to go to preservation first. You want to look after yourself and not work too hard. I think he hasn't got a lot of choice, has he? No. He need to do that, but uh, he'll probably probably wait until uh, 
the not the final portage, but uh, the portage before that, or something like that, in the far end of, of the race, and try to do something, because um, gaining a couple of meters um, with the two Hungarians chasing behind is not a good situation either. No, I mean he, he's he's having a planning nightmare up there. Yeah. So there's the graphic. Adolf, Kova, and Campos there at the front. Maciel on his own out to the left there. Davidov has fallen back. And he's with the Spaniard Busto. And then the two behind them, Rosina and Olenikov. So the second of their top turns coming up, back round and down for the first of six portages. It's going to be on a slow burn this race. The Campos just tracking the two Hungarians round the turn. Adolf leading. Kova on his wash and Campos on his wash. So one, two, three, Hungary, Hungary and Spain. Maciel on his own, at least for now. Behind him, Busto from Spain and Davidov of Ukraine. The Campos, I'm sure, will be racing C2 as well tomorrow. I'm not sure if the Hungarians are, but if they were, Adolf and Kova would make a fairly intimidating pairing. In fact, it's going to be Kova and Horvath racing yeah. C2 tomorrow. I'm just checking the start list there. And <laughs> there's a second Hungarian C2 of Zilanyi and... She die. Campus uh, pal with Romero as usual. They've got a few medals between them as well. Yep. So the one we're missing from this race is Borgil from Poland. He's normally in these, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I'm not sure what's happened there. Maybe is sick or maybe he's saving himself for the C2 tomorrow. Yeah. Where when he battles with Sochora.
two distinctive groups now. Two distinctive That's groups. A yeah. second group of threes formed, hasn't it? With Maciel's yeah. dropped back to that, with Busto and Davidoff. So that's a significant group. Yeah. They, they, like you say, that that's not necessarily over yet. Maciel always prepared to work, and we've seen, like you said, Elenikov come back from that sort of distance behind before. So, if the front group starts to race, put the race between them and starts slowing down, messing around a little bit there's still a chance for that second group to have an impact on the result here. It depends, distance, a, lot. Sorry, it depends a lot on uh, how the Hungarians are thinking now, if they will help each other or if they start to compete. Yeah, if they start fighting among that yeah. front group, the speed yeah. can go. It might, be, might go up occasionally, but on balance, the speed changes usually lead to a slowing yeah. of the average, don't they? Yeah. So you, that second group, if they keep their average speed up, keep working together that gap's not very big there you're looking at 65 meters 70 meters maybe four sets of boys but then you've got to think yeah if they do get back what are they going to do to these three it's going to be a tough ask for them to have any impact when they get there yeah but anything could happen so Adolf seems very, very relaxed, uh, doesn't he? Looks like he's just resting. The speed is low now. Yeah, that second group's closing quite quickly. Yeah. They're down to about yeah. 60 meters now. So in that situation, you, you have to wonder whether the guys in the front group actually care if that second group catch up, if they don't feel threatened by them at all, then it doesn't really matter to them. Although I think in C1 where you've got that slight you know, discomfort with the waves and the big groups, you're probably happier with a group of three, I would think. Yeah. I think that's why Martin Cover put up the speed previously. Yeah. Yeah. They went quite to quite a lot of trouble to break it to a group yeah. of three. And now... That gap is definitely closing. Hungarians for now, though, content just to board the Spanish train to the first portage. Olenikov and Davidov there, and Brezina, rather. That's that pair at the back. Davidov, Busto, and Maciel make up group two. That's Elenikov and Brezina. Brezina in the blue, as always. Still quite slow speed. Campos pulling. Slow and relaxed. Gap under yeah. 50 meters now between them and group two. France. Dunilak and Krautloa from Germany at the back of the field currently. He might be destined to stay there for the day. Group two. Busto working hard to catch his teammate. Adolf takes over the lead just before the turn into portage number one. And he showed great ability to run and to do the portage also in the sh uh, short distance. 
Yeah, and I think if you can do it in the short distance one where there's that heightened pressure on each of those portages, yeah. I think doing the portages on these long races, it's really not going to be any stress to any of these three. Uh oh. So Adolf on the inside of the turn, the right-hander, Kova on the outside, left-handed, as is Campos. So Campos and Adolf to the right of the landing stage as we look at it, Kova to the left. Campos just struggling to get his boat out from behind. Adolf, just a bit of mistiming there on his part. No intent to block from Adolf. Massiel running hard in the background. He thinks he can close this gap, I think. Yeah. Davidov going into the drinks lane. Doesn't seem like the right time to be doing that if there's an opportunity to catch these three. Front three, in and away. Campos first. It's Maciel who leads group two. Davidov, last minute decision to run round the front. And he traps Maciel in on the landing yeah. stage. Unnecessarily. Yeah. Uh, and to no gain. They were, they were doing well Same. as a group there. Yeah. Rosina and Olenikov. Maybe not looking quite as sharp on their portage. The front group away, and it's 50 meters back to that second group, Davidov, Maciel, and Busto. So the front group gained a bit of ground on the portage. Five meters of that was Davidov putting his boat in front of Maciel on the put-in. Front group away, Kova leads. And the speed has increased. But it was interesting in the portage. Uh, the second group were, were gaining uh, to, to the first one over the portage, but then the second group uh, made some troubles for themselves getting into the water again. And uh, everything that was gained was lost immediately. It's a tough thought process, Stefan, because it is. if they were the front group, Davidov did the right thing, didn't he? He put his boat yeah. in, got out first. Sure. Right? So in terms of racing the two people he's with, Davidov did the right thing, made sure he was safe and comfortable coming out of the portage. But in terms of the bigger picture and the job they'd been doing, which was catching that front group, he really put, he just added five seconds to the gap. Yeah. Just, just for the yeah. sake of it. And kind of, kind of crazy in a way. Not sure what just dropped out of Dunilak's boat there. I hope it wasn't anything significant. Looked like maybe just a drinks bottle. He's running through the portage with the German. Kraut lower. Drink change for the Frenchman. And a comforting pat on the back as he goes into third of their big laps seven to do adult taking up the lead in group one while campos takes a look over his shoulder to see what the state of play is between them and the second group
Campos, Adolf, and Hova. Maciel, these are the lap times, top 10 lap times. Davidov, Brezina, Alenikov. Adolf leads and looks extremely comfortable. Yes, indeed. He doesn't move much, just using his shoulders and and the front leg to get um, to get about going. Very relaxed, using as little energy as possible. I'm thinking the water's got even flatter since it was yes. flat last time. Yeah, it's just looking like a mirror now. It's a lovely day for paddling your C1. It is. It looks like a nice little Saturday morning paddle for him. <laughs> the gap back to the second group has doubled now to 100 meters. Here they are in shot now. Busto leading. Maciel on his left and Davidov on his right. Still a long way to go. It is. That's Brezina and Alenikov. Almost 200 meters back now from the lead group. The so gap's roughly 100 meters between group one and two, and another 100 back to group three. And it is a bright day as well. Uh, sun is shining, and it's, it's really great to, to watch, but um, it's also very bright, the, the, what do you say, the reflex on the on the water. It's like yeah, a mirror. And that, that can get to you sometimes, kind yeah. of, Stefan, if you're it, constantly staring, squinting exactly. into that reflection. As, as you get dehydrated, you got the sun coming off the water, you get your headache going, and all of a sudden it's not quite so idyllic out there. Kova, Adolf, and Campos, top three. Busto, Maciel, and Davidov, the next group. Top three, tidily round the turn. Looks like there's very little stress in that group. The gap definitely opened up now back to group two. You feel that chase has come to an end. Still with five big laps to go. So 
Olenikov and Brezina trying to keep that gap to under a minute behind the leaders. It's stretching out all the time. Seems to be when Kova's leading that the gap opens a bit. Yeah, he definitely seems like the one that wants the speed as highest. Adolf is just trusting his ability to put up a high speed in the finish, at, as it seems, saving strength for, for the far end of the race. So retirement from this one, Jan De Louis, who was one of the impressive ones off the start. Maybe he never had any intention of doing the start. He always gets a better result in the C2 anyway. So he's out. Little drink stop in the front group there for Adolf. We might have a bit of a breakup in group two there. It looks like Maciel off the pace. So we're down to Adolf leads from Kova from Campos. And it doesn't look like it's going to go his way today either. About three minutes to the next portage. Two for the leaders. And these two will have Maciel in their sights now. Probably close him down at or around the portage. It's about 70 meters, the gap. Campos takes his turn at the front. Up goes the speed again, probably just approaching the turn. Campos wants to be sure. A little bit of a flurry from Adolf there. He wanted to get past Campos there and didn't make it. That will be logged by both men. And around the actual turn, we're all quite relaxed. That was a little flurry to see who could get there first and Campos wins that battle. Campos leaving no room at all there for Adolf. And as we thought, 
Rosina and Davidov. Sorry, Olenikov. Rosina and Olenikov catch up to Maciel and get the feeling that Maciel might find today a little bit tough out those Campos, Kova behind him. Adolf behind him, all three running straight through this time. Stride for stride, the two big players historically but I'm sure Adolf has intent to add his name to the list of winners of this race. Through come Busto and Davidov. Both look like they're coming into the drinks lane. Davidov takes the drink over his head. Busto drink kept in the boat swap overs done three away 140 meters back to these two Regina Maciel and Olenikov Rosina not taking refreshments on on that lap. Rosina away. Melenikov on the right. Maciel on the left. All three away and clear, but at the front it's Campos, Adol, and Kova. So 180 metres now, the gap back to Davidov and Busto. I think that's a gap that's going to be very, very hard to close. France and Germany heading down for their second portage. So two portages of six done. Group two, both stopping for a drink. <laughs> so Davidov stops for a drink in the hope that Busto will come past. Busto's thinking, not me, mate. I will also stop for a drink if you're stopping for one. And they carry on as they were before, losing a bit more ground. Well, they did so. Front group going very slowly now, though. It's just uh, transportation for the moment, transporting themselves to the final stages where racing really will start. Maciel on his own again behind now Brezina and Olenikov. Uh, you're questioning at this stage whether Maciel will finish this one or not. Currently in eighth place. France and Germany. Quite a long way back, 600 meters or so behind Maciel. So the German, considerably faster across the portage than Dunilak. 
Dunilak looks to have a little bit of a limp there. Looks so easy up the front. Nobody particularly wanting to take this on. And if they continue like that, starting to <clears throat> to not doing the job uh, together at all, uh, anything could happen. It can, although the, the, the gap now, 170 yeah. meters, is yeah. it's a, it's, yeah, that's close to a minute, isn't it? And yeah, it is. It's a long, a long way. German on his own now. Frenchman very slow on the portage. See that gap back to the chase pair has opened up somewhat. Seems to be a bit of action back there with Brezina and Elenikov catching Davidov and Busto. That's going to be a group of four fairly soon, I would think. Maciel behind both those pairs on his own now. So Frenchman's caught up to the German. It's quite an elaborate drink system, presumably, that the German's got there with his drinks vest on, Stefan. I mean, no one else in yeah. the race has that. At what point do you think you might have a better or different idea to everyone that's, that does the sport? It seems a strange choice. It is. Uh, they... They don't want to be dependent on on the support at the portage, and maybe they think they can gain something from that. But on the other hand, they are carrying the weight of the of the drinks all the way through. Yeah, and carrying a bit yeah, it's high that weight as well in a C1, yeah. isn't it? You, you yeah. know, you're kneeling up, and yeah, there's a lot see, of the Germans, movement in the C1. Yeah, as well, <laughs> unlike the kayaks where you're kind of yeah. Just but the rotate. Germans uh, use it both in the C1s and the, the K1s and, the, and K1s and yeah. K, in everything actually. So they probably have chosen to have that as a team, uh, a team tactic. We have seen that throughout the years. Yeah, the power flow guys always yes, have the exactly. system exactly. on and. It was more common uh, 10 years ago, and so quite a lot of athletes used it, and especially in the in the races where where it was not this many laps. Yeah, I mean, the, you could have a, a huge distance between portages back yes. in the old days, couldn't you? Yes. Uh, kind of self-sufficient out there with no yeah. no access to your supporters especially after the era when the supporters were allowed to jump off bridges and mm, yeah. <laughs> swim in the lakes. And uh, I miss that, Stefan. I mean, <laughs> where's yeah. the drama of a support crew guy dangling off a bridge trying to give his athlete a drink these days? Yeah. And actually swimming out there. Yeah, swimming out into the middle of the lake, holding the drinks up. Yeah. It was a comedy era, but it, was. it had some, it had some uh, very good plus points to it. Speed goes up again at the front of the C1 race. Another concerted effort to break the group. It's Adolf again. He did, and there it stops. So that's the second time we've seen him do that. Yeah. A little attempt to break the group. Or maybe he's just he, he just wants a different uh, speed to relax a little bit after. Maybe. Yeah. 
Get some flexibility into his body. That's a, that's a good point, actually, Steph. And there are comfortable speeds to be going on there. Yeah. And sometimes the speeds that are too slow are not comfortable mm. for you. You feel restricted. You feel like you want to break out a little bit, do something yeah. a little bit more active. And uh, so you're always mm. torn. The, the slow speeds, you know, are energetically efficient, aren't they? You, you can, but your body doesn't feel right sometimes if the speed isn't right for you. Yeah, and you get stiff. Yeah. So these three, led by Kova, looking comfortable again. That little flurry of excitement from Adolf stretched the gap. So nearly 200 meters. The second group had been closing for a little while, but that little flurry stretched the gap back to 200 again. There's your view down the 1,000 meter course. Not a bad race course, that is it, Stefan? It looks really uh -huh. quite nice, sheltered. Yeah, they had a sprint world staff, 2019, I think it was. Very pleasant little venue. The wind's come up a bit now from this morning or earlier in the day. Little shimmer on the surface of the lake from the waves and the sun. Watching these three in front, it looks like uh, uh, Adolf is using less uh, energy. His his movements are smaller than than the, than the other two. Certainly, a lot less body movement, isn't there? Yeah. You see, Kova and Campos both leaning down, putting the weight on the paddle. Adolf just like you say, arms and shoulders. Yeah. And it's. Davidov, or Brezina, rather, I meant, who's caught that chase pack. That's a lapped athlete there, is it? No. What are we looking at? No, that's um, yeah, Alenikov that. just fallen off that group of yeah. four. Yeah, that's right. There he is on his own. Yeah. Just behind Davidov, Busto, and Brezina. It's Brezina who's made the chase from the group behind, Busto and Davidov were out there together. And now and Lenikov tried try to use the, the wash there. Out to the side, but very much got the feeling that he's losing ground on yeah. those three. But he's moving left just to try to get some, some, some use help. of the washes, yeah. yeah. And that's a great learning shot there, isn't it, for anyone yes. who who races. Yeah, the, the stress is often when you get dropped that there's no wash for you, but there is if you go out there and look for it. Maciel, it seems, in all sorts of trouble. He's dropping back all the time. He's 200 or three, 150, 160 meters behind the group that he was with and making his way back.
The leaders come down to the third portage of six. Oh, look at that. So there we were, writing off Elenikov, and he's right back with the group. Yeah. He rolled down those waves that he was on and straight back in there. Pretty impressive. Davidov leading that group. Rosina, Busto, and Alenikov. Masiel on his own. This time it is Adolf who's going to lead in to the turn and the portage. Davidov leaves group two. Nicely round by Adolf. Campos dropped round the back behind him to come up the right-hand side. The pontoon, Cova left as he has each portage so far. Number three. So the two Hungarians just ahead of the Spaniard. all very much in touch with each other. Possibly more important in the C1s to get in with the group than in the K1s because catching up is just that little bit harder with the waves. Away goes Kova. And at the other end, Davidov leads in Brezina. And Busto all a little bit. Oof. Busto only just made it to the landing stage there. Elenikov also with these three. But Busto just struggling a little bit. Hampered at the exit of the portage, or the entrance rather, to the portage. Davidov goes left into the drinks lane. Drink over his head. No trouble at all. Rosina, a little way behind on the run. Davidov's run well on this one. Small gap back to Brazina. Elenikov and Busto looks to be struggling. Away goes Davidov. Rosina with him. Elenikov away now and Busto five six lengths behind that's going to be a big chase and out of the front significant that it's just two Kova and Adolf it seems a broken Campos Campos some 50 meters behind already 
I'm going to assume it was Cobra that did the damage. Yeah. Massiel running through. He saw the opportunity. As you said, the campus was not really within the group when they left the portage. We were just a boat length behind, and, and the cover saw that and increased the speed quite substantially right after the portage and off they were. We saw actually the same happen in the short distance. When, when Campos um, was off, he was really off and lost a lot of ground immediately. Yeah, it is really difficult, I think, just to be in that backwash in the canoes. And if the two at the front are motivated, just having to chuck in the steering strokes as well as the propulsion, I think, just takes the speed off you. Yeah. And... Uh, so it won't be a repetition from um, <clears throat> from 2015, Cover Campus. Now it's uh, all about Hungary. It'll be an interesting one to watch that play out. The Spaniard didn't make it back to this group either. So Busto not in this group. It's Elenikov now takes this yeah. group on. Brazina is going to drop around the back of him and Davidov to his right in the black boat with the yellow tips. Once again, Lenikov is doing this kind of race. He's dropping off and then back again, and his strength goes up and down over the long distance. We yeah. have seen that before and also here. Yeah. Not too far. Well, they're, they're quite a long way. A couple of hundred meters down on Campos. Yeah. So still a long way to go. Adolf and Kova away clear and it's going to be do you know the Hungarian anthem off by heart now Stefan or <laughs> yeah do we, can you sing along <laughs> I shouldn't do that <laughs> Germany France yet to go around the bottom turn CL. Yeah, he looks like a little bit more motivated this time when we see him. Yeah. Krautzler. I've, I've just taken an offer from uh, Rebi Shimon in Hungary. She says she'll teach us the words to the Hungarian anthem if you like. <laughs> so we'll be able to sing along now. Thanks, Rebi. <laughs> Appreciate you listening. So France, Dunilac is having a torrid time on the portage in. He was dropped by the German on the previous portage. It's going to be the same on this one, but he caught him up fairly quickly afterwards. Any of that coming in for another drinks change, drinking the boat for him. And he looks really, really uncomfortable. Oh, he's got three more portages to go as well. And it's not going to get any better. There's Maciel on his own, looking at the back of seven men, two at the front from Hungary. Then the Spaniard, Campos, on his own now. Then three together, Elenikov, Davidov, and Busto. No, Busto's off the back of that. So we're missing one there, is, is Brezina from Czech on that list. So Brezina's up there in fifth place. So that's the chase group of three, Elenikov, Davidov and Rosina. Busto on his own and then Massiel also on his own. And the German and the French 
behind Maciel. So there's Campos, bottom right of your screen now. It's a big gap opened up between him and the two Hungarians, over 100 metres, and that gap's opened up very, very quickly since the portage about 1,200 metres ago. Two Hungarians away and clear. There's the German in his drinks. I think, I'm thinking, Stefan, with the waistcoat look of the uh the drink system you can go straight from the race to the after party no need to get changed <laughs> that nice formal look about you <laughs> saves an awful lot of time evening wear day wear it's a great combination cobra leading from Adolf. Thirty-six seconds now, the gap between these two and Campos. There's the visual on that gap. So we saw Campos fade in the short race, Stefan. And yeah. you you highlighted that before this race. Um, there was no talk of anything wrong, but it looks like Campos is just a bit off the boil. It wasn't like the speed was consistently too high. There were those turn changes of pace that maybe took something out of Campos, but uh, it seems it's just not his day. Adolf leads Kova. It'll be interesting now to see if um, the sprinter, Adolf, will stand for this long distance. Uh, he, we know he was among the top 10 or so in Tokyo on, in K2000. Uh, and previously, has, he has also done some great racing in, in the, uh, on the 1,000 meters, especially in K2. But he's also been junior and under 23 yes in the marathon for a good few yeah. years now yeah the background's there um yeah he, he seems to be able to dip in and out of both disciplines very comfortably yeah. but yeah there's a difference between sprint speed and that marathon change of speed that you need for that last 100 meters if they're together it's not the top speed it's how quickly you can get there that seems to count more than the top speed itself yeah yeah if you come past someone like COVID did to campos back in hungary the the doors close don't they yeah it doesn't matter if someone comes past you in five strokes you your motivation is sucked out the window and uh, it's just a very intimidating thing to see so the change of speed that the top end marathon guys have is, is significant and you see it in the k1 as mcgregor had it maybe still does have it we'll yet to find out that'll be this afternoon yeah. and uh, yeah it, it's a it's a huge tool to have is that acceleration campos on his own 
Hungary, one, two. Hundred and forty meters the gap between these two and Ampos chasing. The group of three behind, a long way back, two hundred meters behind Campos and that group of three that you can see with the Spaniard Busto just dangling off the back of that group of three. Still a long way to go. Campos having to face three laps on his own to settle into a sustainable rhythm, a sustainable speed for him, not get too fearful of the chase group and just settle into what he knows he can do. That's Busto. Closest to camera, and he's looking at the back of Davidov, Rosina, and Olenikov. Olenikov in the red, Rosina in the blue, and Davidov to the right of that group. Here's the leaders making their way down, portage number four. Over, takes the pace up again. Perhaps trying to stretch Adolf just enough to sap some energy. <laughs> I'm sure these two know each other very, very well. Know each other's strengths know each other's weaknesses and indeed their own strengths and their own weaknesses. Campos on his own in third. Consistently holding a 200 meter gap on the group behind him. Adol takes the lead for the turn before the portage. Davidov leads. Alenikov being cut out by Brezina. There's a duck round the left hand side of him, coming up the left hand side before the turn. Zina leads, Lenikov tidily round the back, Davidov. Two Hungarians in, over to the left as he has been all day. Race on. Probably due a drink stop. Didn't come in on the last lap. Both of them in. No real rush. Two different uh, drink systems. Adolf 
carrying a bag on his body and switching a bottle in, in, in that bag. Have you ever tried yeah. putting a bottle in one of those bags while it's you're moving? Really, yeah. It's really difficult. Yeah, it is. So, kudos to his support man who did that very efficiently. That's a really difficult job to do. Yeah. And that's over, that's about a minute, the gap now. That's the length of this portage. A minute from entrance to exit. And Campos on his own, also coming in for a drink. Four down, two to go. He also uses a drink system with the bottle in the in the boat, as most uh, sea paddlers do. Try to to carry the weight in the boat and not on the upper body. The support crews have good access to the whole of the boat as well, which they yeah. don't in the kayaks. I mean, but it's important to... for them to train that as yeah. well. You need to practice and practice until. It really moves quickly. 170 meters now, the gap. And that's the same gap back to these guys. Rosina from Davidov. Wow, Davidov on a mission. Let's go fight off. And Alenikov is a fair way behind these two on the run. There's a huge run from Davidov there. Spaniard still not in touch with these, and he runs slowest of the four. Away goes Davidov. Maybe they're on the hunt for Campos now. At least they see the opportunity now. <clears throat> it's going to be Brezina that takes the pull. And there's the target. hundred and sixty meters the difference between Campos and Brezina. Over and Adolf, two portages to go. goes Davidov. They can't afford to slow up if they want to stay in the chase for a medal. Maciel on his own. Almost a thousand meters down on the leaders now. I think he's done. He's done. A shake of the head. He doesn't want to know. From two laps ago, it looked like this might happen. Rui Cancio, team manager, one of the best looking men in the world, apparently. 
At least to himself. Yeah. <laughs> Especially to himself. Yeah. And he's there styling it out in some fashion glasses, holding a conversation, telling Maciel just how good he was. Rui, one of the, been in the sport, knows the sport incredibly well. There's a lot of the coaching, huge knowledge and a great character. All the way since his medals, uh, I think the last one in Vaxholm 1996 or something like that. Yep, I think you're right. Third in 92, behind yeah. some very good paddlers, Stefan. Yeah, indeed. In a very, <laughs> very tough race. The longest one ever, I think. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah, it was. Three and a Four, half hours. 48 kilometers or yeah. so on the Brisbane River. <clears throat> we actually had some, some support crews standing on the banks out in the water, several hundred meters uh, from, 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 uh, from the bank, actually. With water, water up wow. to, to to their knees, giving. That's because your support crew cared about you, Stefan. Exactly. We were just left to fend for ourselves. There was no love <laughs> in our team. Your team had love that we lacked, and uh, <laughs> but you had Jim. We did have Jim, and if you're going to have anything in your toolkit, then Jim is what you need in your exactly. toolkit. Exactly, exactly. Jim Rossiter. Who used to comment with us as well? Yep. He's deserted us this year. Yeah. The German runs through on his own now. He didn't get caught by Dunilac of France on this lap. And he now has a gap of some 300 meters over Dunilac. And Dunilac's going to lose further ground on the portage. Just nine people left in this race now. Ooh. So he lost his footing a bit there. So Kova and Adolf lead. And they are almost, well, a kilometer and a half ahead of Krautler, who we just saw, and Dunilak here, 300 meters further back. And I think this is going to be a painful looking portage for Dunilak. He looks kind of broken already. He comes around the bottom turn as the leaders go around the top turn. their current lap times on the board. You can see the gap now that's opened up. Dunilac comes to the portage. As the German moves off and heads up towards the top turn. Not looking too much more stressed on this one than the last one. In fact, I think he looked more stressed on the last portage. Maybe that's a shake of the head. Maybe he's not going on either. Looking like a broken man. And yep, job done for Dunilac. He's had enough. He looked like he was in discomfort for the last couple of laps. Gaps opened up between him and the German. Now they're just discussing what went wrong, what went right. Bit of commiseration.
and we're down to eight in the race. These are the lead two. So Kova leads Adolf. Campos, 300 meters behind. Only 130 meters behind Campos is Brazina. That gap is most definitely closing. Well, Stefan, we saw Campos loses bronze medal that he looked like was assured of in the short course. Yeah. Are we going to see the same again? Is someone going to pick him off over the last two laps? Well, it could happen. It could happen here. Be the first time he's gone home medalist in the C1 for many years if it does happen. The gap between him and the chase pack 130 meters. Yeah, Campos have been in this game for many, many years now, since having medals every year since 2009. It's hard though, uh, after this uh, two year break, from international racing to really know how good you are. Yeah, you need that exposure, don't you? I mean, yeah. it's, it's very easy to feel like you're good when you're yeah. on your own. Yeah. In fact, that's why I paddle on my own when I do paddle Stefan, so that I can exactly. still be good. Yeah. And anytime you actually mix with anyone who's actually good, you realize that, yeah, maybe, maybe you're not quite what you thought you were. <laughs> but uh, that, there's a benefit to that in your later years but when you're still trying to compete you need that exposure to what yes. the other people are doing yes. and how yes. good the other people are so kova and Adolf, 300 odd meters ahead of Campos. Gap in front of him is three times as big as the gap behind. And that gap is back to Alenikov, Davidov, and Brezina, Russia, Ukraine, and Czech. And there is that chase group. It's Davidov doing the work at the moment. Zena closest to us, Elenikov in the middle. Just over 5K to go. Stowe on his own up at the thousand meter mark. Not too far behind the group of three. Still keeping that gap to under a minute. This doesn't look good for Campos. Oh, that it's does done. not look like a man who thinks he's going to finish. Yeah. Oh, 
he will finish, but he will he will finish early. I yeah, think. I think you're right. I think that's over. Just doesn't look right. Yeah, the gap down to 100 meters now from 130. And that looks like someone who isn't going to carry on. So dropping out of this race very, very quickly now. We're down to eight athletes still in the game now. And it could be down to as few as seven by the end of this lap. Campos, maybe an eye on tomorrow's C2 race. Eighty meters now, the gap between Campos and that chase group, and it is shrinking by the second. These two ahead and clear. Campos looking every bit the broken man right now. Adolf and Kova come into the sharp end of this race. Just one more big lap to do. <clears throat> Coming to the left side of the landing stage for Adolf always means that he's first out. Kova runs well. Adolf, a little gap opened up there. Kova, maybe he's going to find himself with two or three lengths to catch after this get in. No, he won't. So efficient getting in. It's down to one length, that gap, and he's done remarkably well. Not to let a gap open up. Busto on the far side. 400 meters back from those lead pair. It's currently in seventh position, but we're questioning whether Campos is going to finish this race. Maybe looking a little better now than he was halfway up the straight, but 50 meters only back to a chase group of three, which is Elenikov, Brezina, and Davidov. One big lap to go, one small lap after that. There's the chase group, and they have to be motivated now, surely. There's a bronze yes. medal dangling right in front of them. There it is. Campos out. You'll be able to hear the shouts for the other guys. He's still running. Yeah. Looks like he's decided he's going on. Yeah. <clears throat> That's pretty brave. He knows how he feels. Rosina right behind him now. Davidov coming into the drinks lane. Great swap of drink over there. Drinks for him there. It's going to be Davidov first. And the chase for Campos. Ooh, Olenikov struggling on this one. Will be interesting to see if Campos just uh, was waiting for them, saving some strength to to do an effort uh, for the bronze later on. That's how it looks at the moment, at least, doesn't it? As he leaves the landing stage, yeah. certainly not in a rush. 
Lusto there on his own. He's coming in for his portage. He's going to come right to the end. Clearly doesn't enjoy the running quite as much as the others do. Taking the slightly shorter option. So two races in one now. You've got the race for gold and silver and then the race for bronze. And that's the race for bronze right there. One portage to go and one short lap after that. So far, Adolf has had the best of the portages. Kova, that's great acceleration and a lot of experience. Olenikov made it back to this group, despite his slightly shaky run. I think this will be a slow lap for these four. Everyone's going to be thinking already of the next portage. Yes, absolutely. The very experienced um, Martin Cover that actually did stand up paddling, paddling for uh, for a couple of time uh, during the 2019 uh, World Championships in China. He had a knee injury, uh, so he couldn't do uh, normal C C1 and C2 paddling, but um, managed to participate in stand up uh, during during that year but now back as, as strong as ever as it seems do you know how he got on on the stand up stefan did he no actually any... no i will find out but um but uh, it was because of his knee injury yeah. and he really wanted to to uh, do some international competition, and so he did. And Balash is also, as you said, uh, have had some experience, um, not only some. He had a bronze um, medal uh, at uh, the Junior World Championships in Brandenburg back in 2016, and the gold uh, in 17 uh, for juniors. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the Hungarians have that. A lot of the Hungarian yeah. sprinters have that sure. as their as their background. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of the junior's name who won in South Africa, who's just got a, yeah. a silver medal in uh, the thousand in Tokyo. Um, yeah. I'll get there. Can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's uh, Adam Varga who who did that. He won the K1 and K2 marathon as a junior in uh, South Africa yeah. and this year won a silver medal behind um, his compatriot in uh, Tokyo. Yeah. But a lot of the Hungarians use marathon as their background and their base for their leap into that sprint system at some stage. Yeah. And Adolf is from Budapest or rather Santendre that is uh, a uh, also a village based um, at uh, Dorno, some kilometers from Budapest. The bronze in um, <clears throat> C1000 meters. Um, 
at the Worlds a couple of weeks ago, and a gold on 5,000. So, so no slouch then. He's looking oh. pretty impressive this year. Yes, yes. See if he have, have pres preserved his good shape. It's hard to beat old timers in these races, Stefan. Yeah, yeah. Koba knows how to win a race. Yeah. And it, that's a big jump to overcome, I think. It's, I think it's going to come down to the run and who gets in first yeah. on the run. Yeah. But uh, even then, if they're together coming down that finish straight and Cobra's on the sidewash like he is now, there's still a chance he can overtake because he has that belief in himself. He knows it's possible and you still wouldn't write him off with 100 metres to go if he's on the sidewash of Adolf at that stage. So eighth place, the German, Kraut Lower. He's just entering his last lap. These guys already halfway around theirs. Almost 2K the difference now between first and last in this race. Pretty much just covering ground now, Adolf, Kova. And covering ground with as least energy as possible by the look of it. Neither the action, though, is in the group behind. It's Brezina trying to stretch that group out. Somebody has dropped off on the left-hand side. Can't make out. We've got Lenikov on the right. Uh, I'll try and get an update for you. I think... Oh, uh, group's broken... Elenikov is the one to the right. Rosina is the one that's leading. And it's just whether it's Davidov or Campos. And I think it's Davidov. I think it's Campos out the back of that group now. So Elenikov, definitely. White hat, red shirt. Davidov leads, and I'm pretty sure that's Prezina in the middle. And it's Campos about 30, 40 metres adrift, and he might be wishing at this stage that he had stopped at the last portage, because that is a torrid day for him. Just been hauled in by that group. Now he's been passed.
There's confirmation, Brezina, Davidov and Olenikov ahead of Campos. Significant at the lead that Kova has taken the initiative. They've got about 2K to go to the finish, just under 2K. And if I was Kova now, I wouldn't want to relinquish that lead. Get to the portage first. And at least give yourself a chance. on that last small lap. But for me, it looks like Kova is the one with a plan here. Three minutes to go. Oh no. He didn't have the same idea that I had. He's stopping, allowing Adolf, take the lead. Brezina in the orange cap, currently holding the bronze medal. Olenikov with him, Davidov also with him. Campos no longer in the chase. Two races down for Campos, and he's missed a medal in both. There's that gap that's opened up between the hunt for the bronze medal and the Spaniard. Was with those lead two for a long time. From the moment he left them, it's been a journey back through the pack for Campos. So it looks very much like Adolf is going to be first in to the portage. Seemingly no stress at this stage. No real tension building. Adolf content. Keep the speed slow. Kova going with him. Busto quite a long way back now. Nearly a thousand meters off the leaders. And the leaders must be going around that bottom turn and coming into the portage any second now. Here we go. This is it. Last portage. Adolf to the right. Kova to the left. It's been the same every time. Kova's been last out every time. Just that slightly longer route into the portage. Definitely more intent this time. Absolutely. And now the Adolf race is out. Kova is out. Running hard. Kova knows that he can't let a gap open up. Just let go of his drink bottle there by movement of his boat. Doesn't need that over the last 500 meters. Adolf running well, and he's opened up a, a gap, a gap that's going to be too yes. hard to close. That's too much, I think, for Kova. Adolf is going to be away and paddling before Kova gets into his boat. And that gap, I think, no, that's surely, he can't close that. But away goes Kova. 
definitely with the body language of someone who wants to catch up. Definitely. Bronze medal on the opposite side of the lake with Brezina currently. It's going to be tough to know what to watch, whether we watch the portage of these three or the finish of the other guys. It's going to be exciting times. Through goes Elenikov. Elenikov thinks he can have this one. This is the race pretty much for the portage right here. Brezina holds them off. Elenikov still pressing on. He's going to try and make this move stick, but Brezina says no, and Brezina means no. There's no way past for Elenikov right now. Not giving it up yet, though. Running down the wash. Davidov, happy just to sit with Brezina. Brezina, who had a silver medal back in 2019, is, of course, eager to have another medal here. This one's not over, either. No. going to come down. If Kova can keep his nose inside the tail of Adolf around this turn, it could stay tight. Oh, it's not panning out for him. He's losing ground, I think. Yeah. As he goes round. Yeah, yeah, he does. Ah, that looks painful, man. He had a Just... disadvantage of being a left-hand left paddler around the last turn as well. And that gap's too big to close. Yeah. 500 meters left. And he knows it. Brezina, though, in charge. Davidov with him. Alenikov went from the inside of the group to the outside. He must have had a bad turn himself. And Brezina up and running. Davidov runs the best of the three. Look at him go. Quick look from Brazina. He's thinking, what? How do legs that short run that fast? Davidov through. Brazina losing ground all the time. Campos, sad figure, really, in back in sixth place. Let's watch the others get in if we can. There we go. It's Davidov from Brezina. Olenikov out of it. On the far side, you see that Adolf has broken Kova. That's only going one way now. It's Adolf yeah. from Kova. And the real interest is in that bronze medal. Adolf versus Kova. Adolf just pulled that two, three lengths out on the run. Too much for Kova. He closed well to the turn. Couldn't get round the turn at the same speed as, as Adolf. And that gap's now opened up. Gold and silver for Hungary, though. Brezina still leading in the other race. Here we go. So Brezina, Davidov. And it looks to me, if Brezina's ahead now, they couldn't close him down on the race to the turn on the last lap. And Brezina looking every bit a bronze medalist. He does. Going up to that turn. Elenikov not going to take part in that sprint finish. There's your winner. Balaz Adolf had a great season. Medals all over the place for him. Kova Silver this year. I think he's pleased coming back. I think so. that's a good return yeah. to the sport. And they'll know each other way better than we know either of them, obviously. They know where they stood with that. Sure. Both seem pleased. If we can get back to the bronze medal while they congratulate each other. There we go. Brezina round the top turn with Davidov. They're going to enter the finish straight together. Lenikov out of it for now. Just watching him make his way around the turn. Quite sharp turns by the look of it. One medal, 
two men and 400 meters. Rosina from Czech, Davidov from Ukraine. It's going to kick off at some point. Davidov just waiting. Rosina has to measure out when he starts to speed up. Brazina holds the advantage at the moment. Brazina, Davidov, Czech and Ukraine. 300 meters to go. Speed's quite high already. There goes Brazina. He thinks 200 meters is what he's got in him. Davidov matching him. Davidov looking strong. And here comes Davidov now. This is it. He's having a go. Davidov coming past. He's going past. rosina has got nothing left. And it's Davidov looking the stronger of the two. Davidov much quicker. He's gone past. Brazina's broken. And Davidov... Efficient and strong as broken Brazina in the last 150 meters. Super impressive. And another medal to Ukraine in, in C1. Across the line. This morning. And he is a happy man. Brazina broken. Came so close, did everything right. Led out the turn, led into that finish straight. And what he needs now is a Ukrainian hanging on the end of his boat. That's <laughs> <laughs> just what I needed, he's thinking. He's wondering, should I paddle and drive my boat through, <laughs> through this Ukrainian as a thanks for beating me in the last 150 meters? Alenikov, fifth place. Davidov's decided he won't be needing his paddle. Maybe he won't be needing his boat. He's going to climb on there. Fair play to him. That's how happy he is. Good man. So, Hungary, one, two. Ukraine, three. Czech, four. Russia, five. And it's going to be the two Spaniards... Campos, gracious wave. Not his day. And then just two more athletes to come in. That's going to be Busto from Spain. And Krautlauer from Germany. I wonder if uh, Campos uh, tried to save some some uh, strength for tomorrow in the C2. He has another race coming up then with Diego Romero. It's a tough call, that, isn't it, yeah. Stefan? I mean, do you, do you finish? Nobody wants to give up in a race, do they? No. There's, there's, a, uh, there's something against you doing that. Something stops you doing that. And he, yeah. he's raced and he's raced well for so long. He, he wouldn't want to give up. So that last lap or so for him, I'm sure he's got his mind on tomorrow. Yeah. But you can't just let today slip by. And uh, fair play to him for finishing, I think. He, yes. He, he, no doubt it's there good. are ideas of not finishing going through his mind at some stage today. Busto finishing about 100 metres to go.
And as the tail enders come in, just the German left out on the course now. He's probably going over his last portage as we speak. Our minds start turning towards the next race, which yes. is the K1 women. That's that going to be another be good one. Yes, absolutely. Coming up at uh, quarter past one. Just enough Ooh. time to go and get a snack. Yeah. Replenish your stores for a bit more viewing. And we will start the broadcast 10 minutes before that or so. So 1.15 K1 women. Yeah. So wins this morning, Ukraine in the women's C1 and Hungary in the junior men's K1 and the men's C1. Hungary 1-2 in both of those. The dominance continues. Very much so, and even more so than previously in this C1 category. Rosina there, fourth place. Heading back to the boat sheds. We're ready. Come on, we're ready. I think we're looking for an interview from Ross yeah. in the near future. So as we watch the German head up to the top turn, and final turn, let's hand over to Ross for an interview. Yes, thank you very much, Ivan. We're here with the uh, the world champion. Congratulations, Bale. It's a, a really tough race, but you look strong. Köszönöm szépen. Igen, ez egy nagyon nagyon kemény verseny volt. A kövér Marci az egy legenda ebben a szakákban. Még ifi koromban sokat edzettem vele, sokat tanultam tőle, és, és nagyon, nagyon kemény kiélezett küzdelem volt, és örültem, hogy most én tudtam nyerni. It was a very hard race uh, in when he was a junior. He uh, trained a lot of with Marton Kavir, the second Hungarian person, and uh, he said they, uh, he hoped he will win, and uh, he did it. Uh, how did he feel about the, uh, the World Championships this week? Because he's been preparing for sprint this year. He was uh, in Copenhagen, and then he had to come around and do the marathon. Amit um, kérdezett, ugye, hogy mennyire volt másabb a felkészülés? Igazából nagyjából két heten volt felkészülni a maratonra. Próbáltam hosszúakat evezni ebben az időszakban, de de annyiból szerintem nem volt nehéz, hogy az ezer is olyan, és a maraton is olyan, hogy azt ki kell bírni. Igazából mindkettőz nagyon sok munkát bele kell rakni. Uh, he had got two weeks to the preparation, and uh, he said that uh, it's same uh, like the 1,000 meters because uh, the marathon and uh, for the 1,000 meters uh, need uh, you very good stamina, so it 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 it, it couldn't be hard. Uh, it's um, it's it's work. <laughs> Uh, and I think uh, in the 5,000, he outsprinted Sebastian Brendel for the gold medal. So he must have felt confident today in the last lap that he could uh, outsprint Martin. Hasonlóan csináltad, mint a, a Brendel ellen, hogy ez volt a terfi az utolsó a végére tartogatod? Igen, azért a sejtettem, hogy ha fent tudok maradni az utolsó körben, az nekem kedvez. Hát a sprint miatt, az ezer méter miatt nekem szerintem a végsebességem gyorsabb. Végez volt a tervem, hogy minél pihentebben érkezzek az utolsó kis körre. He trusted in the top speed, his top speed, and the, the, it was the same tactic like in uh, with, uh, against Brendel, and uh, they, uh, he hoped uh, he will, he has got uh, very good stamina, and uh, it, it will be working in the last meters. And final question: Into the future, will he continue to do both sprint and marathon, or is he going to focus on just one? 
a csak marad, vagy maraton, vagy is. Mi elsősorban a síkvízrekkel koncentrálnom az olimpiai számokra, de úgy gondolom, hogy a felkészülésbe, ha az idő engedi, akkor belefér a maraton folyamatosan. Tényleg ezer méterhez, meg szerintem még 500-hoz is, és jó ez a féle felkészülés. The first will be the 1000 meters, but uh, in the preparations is, is, is very important uh, the marathon. And uh, he said that uh, if he had got time to the marathon, he, he will do it. I'm sure the marathon community will be very happy to hear that. Congratulations, world champion, well done. Thank you. Köszönjük szépen, remélik, hogy a TV is látni fog téged még a maraton versenyeken. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ross, for the interview. A little bit of insight there into how the Hungarians consider the two disciplines to overlap, and they've shown that for many years. Yeah, I think it's interesting what it says there. It's uh, um, the basic capability for 1,000 meter and marathon is the same, and um, I also think so. I think I agree, and it takes a lot um, of the metabolism to to be good at both these distances. 100%. So here's a little recap. Highlights. Massiel closest to us. It didn't pan out for him. Yeah, and De Louis in the red boat. He was out there for a glory run for a minute or two. But the big players eventually made their way to the front. So there's confirmation of the results. Adolf from Hungary, Kova from Hungary, Davidov with that good sprint finish from Ukraine takes the bronze. Brezina just missed out. Alenikov there all the way till the last portage. Campos, who was in the front three for so long, eventually faded into sixth position. Busto, his teammate in seventh. Krautloa, the only other finisher in eighth place. Lots of retirements today, lots of discomfort out there. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing a lot of those guys in the C2 tomorrow. For now, though, we'll leave you for a short break and we'll come back for the senior women K1 Marathon World Championships from Baskov in Romania. See you later. Cheers, guys.
So here we go for the midday session, and it's the turn of the women. Senior Women K1 World Marathon Championship. Paddling in kayaks as illustrated double-ended paddle rudder at the back to help you steer. Current world champion, Vanda Kisley, and she's going to be in the mix today, most certainly. Already won the short course this weekend, and she won it convincingly, and she will line up in this one next to her teammate Sophia Boris. Here's the start list. Luda from Germany, Kostromita from Russia, Sikali, she's going to be in the picture from Italy, Osa, Jenna Ward, now Nisbet from South Africa, Christina Bedek on good form for the short course, Lizzie Broughton on top form, medal already in 1,000 metres, 5,000 metres and short. <coughs> she lines up next to Kisley from Hungary, probably the favourite. <clears throat> Sophia Voros, another big name, as is Jenny Egan, silver medalist from the 5K just weeks ago. Eva Barrios has got increasingly consistent at being in the front group of these women's races. Anna Sletjo, gradual progress through the field also over the last couple of years. So hopefully she'll be in the mix. Milova from Czech, Mostovenko from Ukraine, Vitalska from Poland and Kurihara from Japan. Moving down the list, Melanie Nykirk, she's been in this race before 2017 back in Cape Town, in um, Peter Maritzburg. Sam Reese clark fourth in the short course. Ann Winter was going to be a potential contender, hasn't been well recently and may not have the race she was hoping for. Barros from Portugal, Andrew Kiv from Ukraine, Rivera from Chile and Kolowek from Argentina finishing up that list. So a lot of good paddlers in this one. Stefan, it's going to Absolutely. be a good race. <clears throat> Absolutely. And a, a lot of big names uh, as There's well, as you mentioned. In shot. Yes. Yeah. Jenny Egan, very efficient around the course. Potential medalist two years ago in China, but for a disastrous last portage. And, uh, well, Kolowek's clean, keen. Huh? She's already on the start line. But, yep. Yeah, Jenny Egan, always very efficient management of the group, management of the race. And it's always good to watch that from anyone. So just looking up the list there from the bottom, that's going to be backing on 454. That's Nykirk from South Africa. Lives and trains in Cape Town at Milnerton, where the World Championships was held many, many years ago now. 98, actually. 98. Oh, it's not that long ago. <laughs> Lizzie Broughton from Great Britain is going to be in this mix. That's a certainty. And she will be there hoping, I think, for a win today. But to win, she has to overcome the might of the Hungarians. And these two Hungarians work together very, very well. There's the main player. 445, Van der Kisli. Sofia, Chelai Voros, 446. They line up next to each other, which isn't very helpful for anyone who else wants to break up for that pairing. It's a tough one. Lizzie Broughton lines up to their left. Christina Bedek in the green boat to Lizzie's left and 4-4 four, four to their Jenna Nisbet from South Africa. Actually better for Lizzie not, not to stay in between these two Hungarians at least. So it That's could be, true. Yeah, it could be good for her. Yeah. Good she for raced anyone. the 5K not long ago and was so slow off the line though. Uh, it took her most of the race to catch back up to the front group. So she could be caught for speed here. Egan yeah. will be one of the first away, I think, yeah. here, along with Kisley. Away they go. 
Sam Reese clark in the yellow boat. She's first off the line and high up in the field there, Barrios also going well, but it's going to be Sam Reese clark and Kolowek from Argentina, closest to the camera, leading at the moment. South African makes her way to, to Reese clark in the yellow boat. And started six. next to her there. And Susanna Sikali on the far outside as well. Quick, quick start from her. They were the two fast starters in the short course as well. Kisley yeah. in the red boat. Uh, you can see the dark blue. But boat blue boat of on Susanna. the far side yeah. is Sikali. But it's Reese clark sharpest away. So Reese Clark leads from Van Nykerk. Reese Clark medaled way back in Oklahoma in K2 and also nearly medaled in Portugal three years ago, but for rudder failure again in K2. Looking good today. So we got all the players making their way to the front. Jenny Egan, a little bit further back than she'd hoped to be, but she's with Lizzie Broughton, and you know that train's going to the front at some time. Here she comes. Lizzie comes around the outside, hoping to get to as far up as Sam Reese clarks side, currently on Van Niekirk's side. One more jump to go, and she's going to do it all in one go. Superb. Jenny Egan follows her up. And the group forms. Brilliant paddling there. Kolowek on the outside of Broughton. Kisley looking good. Bedek looking good. In the back, Van Nakirk. And everyone who's anyone is there already. Can't quite see where Chelai Vorosh is at the moment. She's on Betting, the struggling on the with left. the crowd. Yeah. So uh, Sofia Vorosh is on the left hand side. She didn't have such a good start, but she's coming down now on the outside. <clears throat> she will make it to the front at some stage. Yeah. She likes leading and she likes doing some work. Sofia Vorosh. Sophia Boris that had a silver medal 2019 and a gold medal 2018 in K and 19 uh, in K2 actually. Very experienced Hungarian medalist, as young as she is. Reese Clark still at the front though, looking strong. There's Chelai Vorosh and the sunglasses on the right-hand side, and that's yeah. going to complicate things because she's yeah. going to cut into the front yeah. of this group. There's exactly. going to be action behind her. It's cutting out the Italian for now. Didn't make that move stick. I think the Italian held her off. Great Britain's Reese Clark, I think, doing the right thing for now, just staying out of trouble. Again, Chilo Voris comes around on the outside. She might be going all the way to the front this time. Nope, still doesn't make it stick. Just isn't coming in. She could come in on the Italian and close that gap. Bedex next wave. Reese Clark strong, confident, and well managed. Isley also, well, the two big players either side of Sam Reese Clark at the moment. I think it was uh, quite cleverly done by uh, Sophia Voros there. Uh, if she 
would have maintained that effort, it would have caused a lot of trouble uh, in the back, and maybe the whole group would have slowed down. Maybe. you got Jenna Ward Nesbitt just behind her in the yellow boat on the outside there. 4-4-1 is Irata, Irati Osa. And Kisley takes the lead. So well, the anthem was changing, so too did the lead. Kisley took the lead from Sam Reese clark Broughton chose not to come round the outside of Reese clark instead dropping back into the V and allowing Egan up to the right-hand side of Sam Reese clark To the left remains unchanged. We've got Bedek to the left of Kisley, and then I think, actually, I can't remember now, so I, I wish I hadn't started that, that sentence, Stefan. <coughs> I faded out horribly there. I started so confidently and it just fizzled out. But the group remains the same. Bedek, Clark, Van Nykirk, Egan, Barrios, Broughton and Winter there for now. Reports are she hasn't been well, but she seems to be sticking it for now. The per Barrios perfect. in there also, Boros in there also. Perfect group. Very disciplined. And very unusual, actually. Everyone seems to be pleased for the moment. No big effort. I think the, that will the... change very shortly. Yeah, yeah. But, coming, uh, up, yeah coming up to the turn I mean, now. To people who aren't used to groups this size, that looks like it's chaotic and it looks like it, it's close and it looks like it's uncomfortable. But it's not when you're in there, is it, Stefan? Everyone knows their place. Everyone knows yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. It's only when you come to a turn like this, but even then, there's there's, there's accepted ways of getting yes. around that turn. You can see that, yeah. The left side of the group kind of falls in behind, and it all is quite well managed. It's only when somebody does something that they're not supposed to do that problems occur. There's ways of getting around, and they've done it very, very well. I think you're going to lose maybe the two off the back of that group, <coughs> but generally. It's Everyone Bedek, round safely. It's Bedek in top now, I think. I think it is Bedek. Yep, took it round the yeah. turn. Graphic says Kisley. Bedek, Kisley. I think it is Boros. Bedek in the green boat. Yep. My graphic says Bedek. Well, your graphic's better than mine. <laughs> Maybe I haven't got the full picture. So Bedek leads, Kisley red, Sam Reese Clark yellow, Jenny Egan pink, Broughton dark boat tucked in the back there, Boros white boat. On the left hand side of, of uh, Bedek. Sakali at the back of the group, blue boat. With the coloured tip. And the lead Kisley changes again. Over. Yeah. Vanda Kisley, who had a gold medal uh, both uh, 2018 and 19, a silver 16 and 17. Um, 18-19, she was beaten by Renata Shea, 2018, and Lani Belcher, actually, in 19. 
So very experienced. Christina Bedek, good shape. Uh, we saw that in the short course. Um, she had been in this kind of racing for quite a long time. First medal, then she paddling, paddling for Hungary was 2011. Well, wow. She had a silver, silver in K2 to K, together with uh, Farkasti, uh, the former partner of uh, Renate Che. That was uh, silver with Alexandra Barra. Yeah. <clears throat> and they also won the Europeans back in 2011. Then the bronze 15 and the bronze 16. Yeah, she's certainly been there or thereabouts for a long yeah. time. One thing yeah. you notice this weekend with her, though, Stefan, is she seems less comfortable in that close quarter stuff. She seems to have lost a bit of confidence or a bit of stability. We yeah. saw her struggling on the turns on the short course. And uh, it kind of happens, doesn't it? As you yeah. do get a bit older, the stability goes a little bit. That confidence yeah. goes. So currently, leader, I know she's married. I know she's called Nisbet now. But all the graphics say Ward. So for the convenience of the fans watching, sorry, Jenna, you're currently Ward for the next two hours. 446, Boros, Sam Reese Clark, 455. We've got Barrios in there. Osa still in that top group. Barrios and Osa. Side by side, white boat and sort of turquoisey blue boat. Back of the group, Van Nykirk and Sikali. Jenny Egan to the right. And that must be Winter, I think, in the blue boat with the white tail. So currently a group of 13 or 14 and Oh, my word. That's uh, German, Luda, who did the whole of yesterday on her own. And now is going to do the whole of today on her own by the look of it. <coughs> Jenna Ward in the lead. She has been looking forward to this event uh, a lot. Staying back in, <coughs> in South Africa, in uh, closed down from the COVID pandemic and now able to go for it again on the international level. She seems to have spent uh, the, the time uh, paddling because uh, she is in a very good shape having the initiative in this group now. Finished the trial second to uh, Bridget Hartley, who's opted yeah. not to race K1. She did the short course and she's going to do K2. Chile there. Good to see different nations coming and having a go. That's Rivera from Chile. Chile, that is uh, participating in this uh, World Championships for the first time. It's actually really good paddling conditions in the, in Chile, especially in the southern part and southeastern part, so to speak, down there at the border of Patagonia, a beautiful mountain area of, of southern Chile. Have you been down there, Stefan? You sounded very knowledgeable there. Sure, like been. sure, absolutely. Fantastic. Doing some paddling as well. So Ward leads from the two big Hungarians. Then we've got Winter in the boat with the green top. Round the outside on the far side. Jenny Egan holds off Sikali. In turn, Sam Reese clark holds off Jenny Egan. Not sure how serious well, it is. Serious. It's become serious now. It's gone on longer than 10 seconds. Sakali having to duck into the back. Egan wants to get to the Hungarians. Reese Clark does not want to let her in, and she's going to win this one. Egan backs off. Go right back to how it was. No, it won't. That's left Reese Clark at the front. Dominance from Reese Clark there. And none, and of the is... big, none of the big names want to leave any room competing already on this early stage of this yep. long, long race. 
I'm liking what Reese Clark's doing. There's a purpose about uh, that I haven't seen for a couple of years. Egan would have wanted to overtake Reese Clark there and get to the two Hungarians. But, and this is why, because Kisley's going to take it on. <coughs> Egan gets left second washout. This fits well for Reese Clark, at least for now. Jenna Ward tucked in the back, comfortable. Winter out to the left-hand side. Check in there is Milova. Got Winter, Sikali, Orton, Barrios, Bedek, Osa, Van Nykirk, Sletjo, and Milova. Interesting, Sletcher is uh, within the group still. She was in China for quite a way, wasn't yeah, she? Yeah, she was. In the early she stage, was. she's really stepped up in the last yeah. couple of years. and Coming from a great long-distance canoeing family. Good heritage there and have done many good, quite good races over the years as well. Round goes Egan this time. Reese Clark knows the group's calmed down a little bit and to get into the V now could give you quite a nice long ride. Italian, very unwilling to get out of there. You can see how nervous Reese Clark is putting her left paddle in because the bow of the Italian hasn't got out of the way. It's Kisley, great shot of how hard those legs work, how much power comes through from the footrest. Egan tracking her. Egan, that's where she loves to be, next to the eventual winner. Very comfortable there. And picked a good time to get there. Brought him think, to the right of Egan. I think Eva Barros also liked the position she is in. She used to stay in the back of the groups. And I mean, she had a bronze back in 18 and a K2 silver as well. She used to be in the top top group. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I I also like the position she's in, Stefan. I I yeah. used to like being there myself. You're not seen. You're not you're part of the big picture until later on in the race. So you can kind of keep out of trouble, keep out of the big bits of work, and it's a uh, it's a little bit of invisibility, at least for now. Yeah. <clears throat> I rather liked uh, free water in front of me. <laughs> we differed in that respect. Yeah. Stefan. We could probably <laughs> argue that all day. Of course. So big group remains. Two South Africans, Dane, two Great Britain, Ireland, Italy, two Hungarians, Norwegian, two Spaniards, that's probably about it. Yeah. I didn't add up all the maths. Round comes Slet Joe on the left-hand side of the group. Not sure where she thinks she's going to end up. There's not a lot there. It would just be the wash outside Sikali. So needs to get in contact with something. Van Nykirk at the back of the group there. Yeah. Bedek and Winter. And now it's all reformed nicely. Nice steady pace now. No one troubled there at all. So Voros. Was cut back into the V by Jenna Ward. Meant that Sam Reese Clark had to fall back one V behind Jenny Egan. Everyone comfortable at the moment, though. And Luda 
at the back in the yellow boat on her own. Something brewing. Oh, just as we go back, go back to Chile. So one big lap done. So Kisley leads, <clears throat> working hard on the outside there of the group is Milova yeah. from Czech. No Kaziskova this year, Stefan, it's, it's been around for so long. Yeah. And now it's being a mum. Yeah. Bringing up the next generation of that canoeing family. Slet Joe goes on the outside. That will change things. Yeah. That won't be welcomed, I don't think, by the big players. But she's making it go. She's making a go for it. Get an overview. There'll be a bit of, yeah, Kisley's not going to have that. Oh. So Joe needs to cut in now, take the Italian out. Yeah. She could have got across. She could get across to Kisley. Don't just run have. level. And now she hasn't. Now the door's closed again. And yeah, I think it's Jenna Ward there who's going to hold that position. Even from now, Slet Joe needs to come across yes. to the red boat. She, Maybe she's doing it. Yeah. Maybe she's She's tapping. trying now. So Carly's really slow to drop back out of places where she shouldn't be. And I think that makes the, the girls nervous. They're always trying to run into it. You see how close she is to Sletto yeah. there. And there, there she's hit her paddle. So it's Sikali is quite aggressive in the way she doesn't drop out of a wash that she should have by rights she, dropped out of yeah. much sooner. She fought off Sletto instead. But it, you, you know, Stefan, it's not possible to fight off if that move's made positively. It's that Sletto dithers, she, she faffs about at it. She doesn't actually finish the move that she started. And then you do all that work and you're back where you started. Yeah. So it's, uh, just, just if you're going to do it, do it. Yes. And if you do it confidently enough, everyone gets out of the way. Yeah. And that's just a, a confidence issue. And she needs to, to move on from that, I think. Otherwise, you end up where she is now, always on the outside of the group. Yeah, and in the turn, probably in the end of the group as well. Yeah, yeah. It's not far to the turn from here. That group not changing shape. Comfortable at the back there. you still got Van Nykerk. Bedek, Winter, and one of the Spaniards. I think it's, Bar it's Barrios towards the back of the group. Oh, no, yep. Osa. Osa to the back of the group. Barrios the further one up. Now, as things are moving on again, a little bit of change happening, maybe. Yeah, it's just a change of pace by Kisley at the front. Sets off a little bit of panic in the group. It's great to have such a such Cicali a big goes. Sicarly yeah. goes, trying to go around Jenna Ward. I think she's going to make it. Kisley still going to end up leading, I think. But Sicarly is taking on Ward for that side wash before the turn. I think everyone is uh, appreciating this. It may make some order in, in the group around the turn there. As so Charlie's going to lead into yeah, the turn. Exactly. I see Dan went in very steep, made it hard for the people. There's only one on her left. And Fletcher dropped off. 
quite substantially. That was always going to happen, I think, from yeah. a position. And yeah. uh, you called that early, Stefan. So who have you got top of your graphic now, Stefan? See, Kelly. Yeah, you see, I'm missing my top one on my, it must be my screen. So Sikali leads. Kiss lead to our right. Ward and Sam Reese Clark, the next best positions. It's Osa from Spain on her own, just dangling out the back of that group. She needs to get in touch. She's going to make it run across. Always try running across there, get in line with the leader, which she's going to do. Brilliantly done. Sakali leads. Kisley. Egan in the pink boat. I think it's still Boris tucked in the back. Behind the leader from Italy. A very well organized group, and it's <clears throat> great to have such a big group in the ladies' race after having paddled close to five kilometers now. Still a big group, such a big group, and so well organized. When, when did that happen, Stefan? We, we, have, we didn't have big groups 10 no. years ago. No, no, or, no. Or maybe even five years ago. I now mean, all of a sudden we got all yeah, these girls up with yeah. that level of race skill. <clears throat> In China, it was a complicated, much more complicated course, and that split, split it up to group uh, earlier. But th this is great racing. It's all it is all different uh, courses, and uh, it's different patterns of, of the race depending on on what kind of course it is. But such a course as this uh, really uh, do for for uh, good group group yeah, racing. It does Brandenburg was the same, wasn't it, on the yeah. regatta course? There yeah. big groups, a lot of catching up done there. Yeah. So finally, Luda has company, and that's Milova of Czech Republic. So main group goes on. Osa still at the back of that group. There's really no change she can make that makes her more comfortable than where she is now. So she's going to have to stay there for now. Kolowek from Argentina, very fast off the start, but clearly not made the cut. So Sakali from Ward, Visley, uh, Kisley, not Visley, obviously. Um, Boris in the best wash possible, tucked behind the leader. Sam Reese Clark to her right, level with Lizzie Broughton from Great Britain on the far side of the group in the purple boat. 
Poland, four, five, two there. Is Witowska. And they're coming down now to their first portage. Portage in doesn't always go well for Sakali. Jenna Ward will be well organized. The South Africans all are. Bisley, too experienced to mess up. Boros, pretty much the same. And Lizzie Broughton will make ground. Remember on the short course, she had a stunning portage to end up in the top three after being roughly where she is in the group at the moment. So here we go. This is to take control of the portage. Kisley versus Sikali and Boros pushes her way into that lead V again. Super dominant from her. Bedek, watch out for her on the outside of the group. She's not going to be happy being there. So she's going to want to come up, but she's got to take on both Broughton and Egan if she wants to get to the Hungarian at the front. She may give it a go. No, she's going to relax back and sit three washes out to the side. So Kisley, first blood to her on a head-to-head -head with Sakali. Just let Joe vulnerable on the inside again on this turn. I wouldn't be surprised if Kisley is trying something in this uh, portrait to split up the group. <clears throat> she seemed very, very confident and strong uh, in the short Here comes course. Bedek now. She's going to yeah. take on Broughton to start with. And then, and I don't think she'll have any problem cutting across the front of them. Be great to pan out just slightly so we can see the effects of what's just happened. Barrios in the back there, Van Nykerk on the far side. Bedek doesn't make it stick against Egan. She took off Broughton, but Egan was a step too far for it. Egan's too sharp for that. <clears throat> Broughton probably just didn't have the power at this stage of the race. That will change as the race goes on. Absolutely no doubt about that. But for now, Bedek outgunned Broughton to get to that wash. Couldn't outgun Egan. And they go around the turn. Sakali and Ward on the inside. Select Joe being squeezed to the back of the group there. Can't quite paddle. Sakali but... uh, seems strong. Yeah, she, she does. Really, yeah. I don't Confident. think we've seen her mixing it right at the front like this before. Oh, exactly. Egan and Kisley coming around to the left-hand side as we look at it, along with Bedek and Reese clark Sakali out running. Everyone up and running nicely out from Egan there. So they're the first three. Kisley, Sakali, Egan. Broughton again from pretty much nowhere in the group has ended up fourth here and coming through the drinks lane at speed is Barrios. Nicely done. That's a, that's a yeah. quality drink stop from the Spanish Spanish right there. Ward also going through the drinks, but Kisley superb run from her. Yeah. She's got two or three lengths Italian and the Spanish having a bit of a tussle. That's not going to end well. No, Skilly falls over. Now stressing to get in the boat, and there's going to be a little bit of aggro. Away she goes. Oh, yeah. Kisley away, two, three lengths. I think that's Egan with her. I think it was Barrios. Oh, you might be right. Let's have a look. Yep, Kisley, Barrios, and Broughton seem to be the three who left early. Yeah. Sickley had a little bit of a fall as Barrios came past her. 
I think the group will reform. There's enough behind. You've got Voros, you've got Bedek. Kissing is going Egan. hard now. Kisley is setting the speed now, trying to make the group at least a little bit uh, smaller. Asking Marius to take on. Yeah. yeah, it's going well. Uh, hey, come Lizzie on. Lizzie there as well. Yeah. And Lizzie's not work shy, that's for sure. Portugal running through there. That's Barros. Barros at the back, Barrios at the front, three girls away. Here comes the fourth, and it's another very useful person Boris. to have in your group. Yeah. That is an intimidating group of four. Yes, Sofia Boros. That's expected. You do not want to be chasing those four down. That's something. And there comes Bedek. Bedek, Reese Clark. No, uh, there's oh, Egan yeah. as well, sickly. But off goes Kisley again. She's not having this. Ward on her own, kind of dangling off the back. Bedek needs to match Kisley here. She's probably the only one in that group with the firepower to do it. Currently, Kisley seems intent on taking her yeah. group away. Yeah. <clears throat> That second group of four are watching this and they are hoping against hope, I think, that Kisley will slow down. I don't think she's going to. Oh, she she's feeling very strong and she seemed to be very strong. And I mean, her role, role model has always been Renata Shea and we have seen Shea doing exactly this many, many times over the years. She's, it's a proven tactic if you if you are strong. Just Into the back it. goes. Yeah. Boros. Uh, oh, they slow down. Barrios looking over her shoulder. It's still, it's still a little gap, I think. It is. But Bedex there. Sikali looks to be struggling to me. Egan also working super hard right now. And again, the Italian just doesn't get out of the way. And Egan won't be thanking her for that. But everyone take a breather, including the commentators. It's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's little stressful moments. Kisley's done. She's going to let someone else take the lead. Barrios doesn't really want to do it. Bedek comes through and gets on the front, and that'll be such a relief to her. It was Bedek that did the closing. And now I'll try and fill up those comfortable washes behind the leader. Gorton looking good. Reese Clark also looking very, very good. All the gaps filled now, and the group will settle down for a minute. Got a couple of minutes now before a little bit more for the turn. So we lost a few in that. Yeah. We don't have Ward in that group. We don't have Slet Joe in that group, and we don't have Winter or Nykirk. So there's another group behind with those four, and Osa maybe from Spain. And for now, it's a group of eight. Still quite a big group. It is a big group, Stefan, and it is, a, apart from the Italian, it looks like a very organized group. The Italian yes. just, just doesn't quite... I don't know, doesn't anticipate the changes as well as the others, doesn't see where the pattern's going to end up and always fights too long to hold the wash that she's currently got rather than getting out of the way. And that, that that's irritating after a while. Sometimes it has to do also with strength. If you're a little bit tired, it's much harder to use the, the uh, uh, proper tactics in a group. Yeah. You just try to hang on. To what you've well, got currently. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Luda. Luda. Luda from Leipzig, uh, actually training in Sweden for the moment. Okay. Her tra her trainer is Annette Schuch. That is uh, oh, cool. 
one of the great marathon paddlers of the past and, and also Olympic paddlers, of course. Jenna Ward has that's a job to do, isn't it? She's climbing over a wave at the moment. She'll go downhill in a minute, get a bit of a breather, but there's still one hill to climb before she gets back to the group. So Russian there is Kostromitina, and she's with 460 Kolowek from Argentina. Ward, I think, will get back to that group by the turn. But it's an expensive catch-up. Select Joe on her own. Yeah, Ward's in there already and in a nice place. Quite protected. Portugal and Poland. That's Witowska and Barros. So Kisley leads. This time on the last lap, we saw Sikali make a play for the turn. She's on the left of the group currently. Slet Joe, the lone paddler, about 10 lengths down. Sikali on the left of the group. Just trying to push up to get round the turn. Has to get squeezed back. And the group splits. Not sure who that is out the back. But they look like they're in trouble. Could be Bedek falling off the back of that group. Yeah, it actually looks like. Falling off the group and looking very uncomfortable going around the corner, which she was on the short course as well, wasn't she? Japan, four, five, three is Kurihara. Yeah, it is. Bedek just off the back of the group. It's going to get back in touch, though. So leading is Voros. Kisley. Egan, comfortable. Reese Clark in the yellow boat on the left. Sakali blue boat on the right. Bedek at the back in green. Nine boats make up that front group. So in terms of comfort there, the leader is the leader. Either side of her, you get a nice ride down her wave. Tucked in the back where Jenny Egan is, you get a combination of three waves, and that's really comfortable. Two on the outside currently have it the hardest, and that's Reese Clark and Sakali. But at this speed, that doesn't really matter. Boris leads Barrios to her left. Kisley to her right. Egan got the best of it at the moment.
So Reese Clark be weighing it up out there. <clears throat> Second washout isn't the most comfortable, but to change that, she has to take on Kisley. She may well have decided that's a battle too far and one not worth having. She'll also know that at some point, and now is that point, Kisley will lead and she'll be in the right place at the right time for that. Sakali sees this as an opportunity for change, moves up she, on Barrios. She needs to. The turn before the port is coming up and she really don't want to be too far on the left-hand side. Broughton goes round, cuts off Sam Reese clark Sam Reese clark falls back into the V. Not willing to do that, though. She's holding off for now, waiting for Egan to get out of the way, and now she falls back into the V. Bedek, the danger on the outside again. Egan waiting for Bedek to move up. Bedek has already taken... Broughton moves out on Bedek just to make that journey round harder. Up moves Sam Reese clark into the gap she's left. When Broughton moves back in, Reese clark will move back. And all that to hold off Bedek from making a play on the outside. Brilliant to watch those groups move around like that. Round comes Egan. She's going to take on Bedek. Bedek says no. Broughton has to speed up, otherwise she'll lose her ride on the side of Kisley. Her only option now, lead in. Nobody minds that. Gives Egan a chance to go around Bedek. We'll see if she does that. We'll see if she just takes a break for a bit. So Broughton hits the front for the first time today. And from here on in, relatively, she just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Germany. Barros from Portugal. Oh. A little way off the pace. So, Broughton leads. Bedek to her left. Kisley to her right. But, and Voros Sam, is just relaxing on the on the wash behind there. Yeah, Voros, Reese clark both just cruising. Easy days for them. Jenna Ward also... <clears throat> Doing well. Egan will be wanting to change from where she is or just in a drink in the back of the boat. You're not allowed to throw the drinks into the water these days, and rightly so. And if she was caught doing that, that would be a time penalty at the portage. So Jenna Ward just made a little bit of a job for herself as Kisley takes the lead. Broughton falls back. Bedek might take on. No, it's going to be Egan takes on. Bedek takes on. Broughton. Broughton holds him off. But no, hasn't got the power again. Still at this stage of the race, Broughton outgunned by Bedek, although she's not finishing the job. Broughton's going to hold that. Egan already given up that chase, and Broughton holds off Bedek. And... Yeah, Kisley saw, saw the necessity of increasing the speed. And yeah. When she did that, it was impossible for the others to, he, to continue. That's that's where the women's race is still differs from the men's. If someone had yeah. got up as far as Bedek had on Broughton there, that door would be closed. Boom, yeah. job done. But just a little slow to close those gaps, and that that gives you know Broughton fair play to her. She just persisted, and eventually earned her place. So just a slightly different style of racing to the men's racing. Voltage number two. Here we go. Once again, Sikali positioned well. 
and that gives you uh, an idea, doesn't it, Stefan, of who's, yes. who's managing well. Yes. I, th I think Voros has managed well so far. She's always yeah. there or thereabouts, not too stressed, being in the back washes. Um, Broughton always well managed, as is Egan. Ward suffering a little bit at the back there, just picking up what's left always. Here comes Sakali and Kisley. Same two as last time. Broughton round to the left, Reese Clark round to the right. Same three as last time. Egan, Boros running through the crowd, trying to find a space. <clears throat> they know that Kisley will go if she gets a little gap. One small sniff of a gap, and she will take it. Boros coming in for a drink. Reese Clark in for a drink. And I don't know what the Italians are doing there. That's a big gap that Kisley's got. That is yeah. a big gap. Kisley in. Broughton just behind her. Sakali on the far side. Much better managed this time than last. Away goes Kisley. Away goes Sakali. She'll make it back to Kisley. Voros goes. Yes. Broughton needs to get to Voros Same. and ride Same the three. Voros train back to the front yeah. because that is going. Very similar pattern to the previous one. Yep. And Boros is the ride back <clears throat> that you need, and Ward's in trouble. As is Reese Clark, because she's back with Bedek, and I don't think Bedek's got much left in her for another catch up. Slet Joe on her own. And there we go. Yeah. Kisley. She's not quite on her own. They're just to the left of shot. But each time she does this, yeah. she drains an awful lot from some of those chasers. And it just looks like she's got so much time yeah. on those portages. It's Voros that's going to do the catching. Sakali didn't have it. She was the one closest. It's a big think... chase group. I actually think Foros is the only one that could catch. Is the only you I think you're right, Stefan. I think that's she's the only one with enough pace to do it. Yeah. And it's very unfortunate for Kisley then. That the <coughs> team member do that. The others aren't gonna stay on every lap though, Stefan. Yeah. Boris well that actually had, out. yeah, Boris that actually had K2 tomorrow, uh, together with Renate. <clears throat> Russian running through there. Costa Matina. Kisley still charging on. Voros coming up her left-hand side. Good call. Sakali on the outside now. Rest. Just going to slot into place, and they'll be glad of a breather. No breather, though, for Ward. Top right of your screen. Bedek moves in behind Voros. Beaten to it by Egan. Select Joe on her own, just off the pace. That's pretty stressful for the group, those catch-ups. And yeah. Kisley is doing a lot of damage there. <clears throat> Everything looks settled afterwards, but there's a lot of heavy breathing going on and a lot of recovery needed after a chase like that. Boris looks strong, though, Stefan. There's a yes. fairly steady close on that. Kisley's done her bit. She's done the damage she wants to do, and now she's just going to let someone else take a bit of of the strain. Milova, what's that? And Luda going through yeah. on her there. Take her ball at the front. 
you can see by the reluctance of everyone in that group yeah. to take the lead that they are yeah. tired. They need recovery time. I also think Kisley would like that, but uh, they refuse her to to get it because she was doing the split and all the yeah all the trouble. So Kisley, Broughton, Boros, Reese Clark, Barrios, Sikali, Bedek, and Egan. Poland there is Vitowska. about 650 meters back from the leader. With Barros from Portugal. Select Joe on our own now. Pretty much in no man's land behind Jenna Ward, who herself is 100 metres off the pace now. That was Mostovenko from Ukraine we just had in shot there. The lead eight minus Ward. <clears throat> Press on up to the top turn. Two portages done, four to go. Very much relaxation time at the moment. For everyone, you can see Sikali on the left there, and her paddles down, probably arranging her drink, but not losing any distance as she does it. So her pace is pretty slow. Kolowek. And Costra Matina. It's a pretty pedestrian pace. Up to that top turn. Everyone a little bit tired. Poland and Portugal again. Kisley leads. Voros. Sakali coming through on the inside of Voros there. Pushing Voros back into the V. Broughton on the right hand side on the side wash. Now cause a little bit of rearrangement behind. As Sakali takes up the lead. Bedek at the back of the group. Egan will want to come up to the side of Sakali. Here she comes now. It's just a race. It's a race between her and Barrios. Barrios takes it. Maybe it's Voros. Might be Voros takes it. Barrios in the back. Oh, 
Reese Clark happy to sit on the outside, out of trouble. From Ukraine there is going to be Andrew Kiv, I think. <clears throat> so Sikali leads. Egan. It's a long journey round that side. How far do you get? Is she going to take on Reese Clark in a second to get to the red boat of Kisley? It's where she'd like to be. The next time Kisley leads. Edek tucked right at the back. Broughton also out of sight, out of mind at the back of the group is a lovely place to be. Boros to the side of Sakali. Hungarians 2-3 at the moment. Barrios tucked neatly in the back. Jenna Ward on her own, close to the edge of the lake there. Reese Clark looking smooth still. Barrios very relaxed. Bedek. Just sort of yo-yoing at the back of the group, wondering if she's a little bit tired now. And Slet Joe on her own, trying to hunt down Ward. They could work much better as a pair, potentially, if she can close that gap. You can see where they are relative Ward on the right-hand side. Not far behind the group, still under 100 metres, the gap. You see it, a better visual of it there, it's still a long way. Charlie, nice steady pace. That's Osa, Niekirk, and Winter. They're about 200, nearly 300 metres down on this group. Jenna Ward may be moving out down one of those waves. Slet Joe trying to close the gap on Ward. Milova and Luda. At the front though, Sakali. Two Hungarians, one either side. Two Hungarians, 
two from Great Britain, one from Ireland, one from Italy, and Bedek at the back. From Serbia. Barrios from Spain. Not far now to the next portage. I'm wondering if Bedek will make this one to the back of the group. It's going to be at the back of the group coming into the portage, I think. This could change, though. Kisley goes. Sakili would clearly be motivated to hold off Voros. Arios straight into the V. Strong from Barrios. Liking that. Oh, Stay with that front group if we can to the turn and beyond. Kisley leads. Reese Clark, very happy, very comfortable to be there. Kisley. Egan as well, well positioned there on the outside. She is. Boris on the inside. Broughton knows she can get in and out of her boat and run plenty well enough to deal with being at the back of the group. Yeah. Bedek, maybe not so. Maybe oh, she's she, moving around the right of the group now. Yeah, she should. She should try to go on the inside, I think. <clears throat> well, she keeps going outside every yeah. time, doesn't she? Yeah. So I wouldn't want to be Bedek in that position right now. It's not going to stack up for her come the portage. Ward and Sletcho now together. That'll work better for both of them. They can take turns. Reese Clark. Looking very, very good there. Boros on the inside. She'll be okay there as long as she keeps her nose up on the Italian. That's the tough boy there. And Bedek, I think, really needs to be further forward, but it's too late for that now. Kisley is going to go to the right. Same first two, every portage. Watch Bedek at the back. It's going to be tight for her. It's going to be a tough portage. It's not a lot of place to go at the moment. Egan a little bit slow out of her boat, as was Voros. Barrios also out last. Through comes Broughton. She does so well on these portages. Out towards the back, but always in the front four, getting in. Cross goes. Oh, that was tight can't understand the squeeze into the mouth running thing that just does not stack up Strange. and look at Kisley again this is it I think Boris knows she's got a sense of urgency about her run that she hasn't had so far Boris knows that this is going this time I'm pretty sure yeah Kisley's going Boris is going to go with her and if they can I think a split could happen here yeah I'm going to break the group size down Egan slow to get away from the side. Bedek still in it, in at the portage. Away she goes. But no one is on the Voros train back to Kisley. And so somebody else has to do that catch up. And I'm not sure who can do it. Reese Clark there in the white, maybe. It's three portages from six done. Reese Clark and Broughton. Kisley going. Up comes Voros. Reese Clark needs to go to her left. Get her nose downhill. It's going to work out for the both. For the oh, maybe not. Now coming to the right of her, looking at the back of Kisley's boat. 
and this is awesome for Great Britain. It's two from Great Britain, two from Hungary. Not sure where the others are right now. But I think this might be a group. Ooh. Oh. So that could have been a swim, I think. Somewhere. Sakali out. Let's try and get uh, the Kisley Boros. Reese Clark, Broughton is Egan next, some 30 metres back, and that's a group of four by the look of it. Somebody needs to take that on if Kisley's not doing it, because this is a perfect opportunity. Bedek is the closest. I'm not sure. I think it's, yeah, so we've still got Egan in with a chance. Yeah, that's it's right. It's a big pull, and Barrios... Reese Clark's the leader, and I think Egan will fancy her chances of closing Reese Clark down. Bedek off the pace. So another tough one, and it has broken the group. We've lost Bedek, and we've lost Sakali. What happened to Sikali? She must have swum. Yeah. Or at least have any problem. She, she'd she been sort of was, uncomfortable was, getting into a boat on the previous two portages. Yeah. But she was in, into the water quite, yeah, at least at the pontoon uh, yeah. as a third. I think that, that you know, can stem back to the feed. Thing, Stefan. She's got a coach yeah. trying to shove something yeah. into her face while she's running. Yes, yes. The stress of that, then you, you, you add to that the stress of knowing that Kisley's about to get on the water, yeah. and it, all the stress doubles and doubles and doubles, mm. and in the end, you make a mistake. Mm. They need to sort out that feeding system, because you can't put something yeah. in somebody's mouth as they run when oh. you're working at that sort of intensity. It's actually quite strange. They should put anything they need in the, into the drinks. That's yeah. the best way. Yeah. Reese Clark, amazing today. It's long time since I've seen her this good. So Luda and Milova on their own. I'm very much settled again. Everyone taking a rest. <clears throat> and Drew Kiv of Ukraine coming through. Sikali out to the left on her own there. Ward and Slet Joe. The pair just behind her, the main group. The Sikali stopped after the portage, apparently, and we don't know why yet. Maybe we'll find out as we go. Clearly not a planned stop, that's for sure. 
And that's the difference. It's a big gap back to Sikali at the moment. 105 metres from the leader. Trying to find a wave out there that will help her. Big ones, another few lengths in front, getting to them. As you stop for 30 seconds after the portage, and presumably, Stefan, that's enough time to get out, bend your rudder down, and yeah. back in again. Yeah. You suspect that would be a rudder problem. And uh, so that's the problem. If yeah. you don't, you, you have to, it's all very well getting in and out fast doing the running, dragging your boat. But if your rudder isn't working when you get back in, it's an absolute nightmare. So I'm going to assume that's what it was for her. If you yeah. remember back in Oklahoma, on their K2 on the last portage broke their rudder. Yeah. That's how actually Sam Reese Clark and her partner got a medal there. Her partner, Amy Ward, one of my favorite all-timers in Great Britain, they got their medal there because the Sikali, they were, with her sister at the time, broke their rudder on the final portage with a bit too much stress. It's so easy that happens. It's much, much uh, safer to try to carry the boat without dragging it. Especially with these modern rudders that are very, very fragile. Gone are the days where they were welded chunks of metal on the <laughs> bottom of your boat. Yeah. <laughs> Or use, uh, as Hank you, used to used to do, using a hang-on rudder. Oh, the front of the back, yeah. Yeah. So interesting graphic that Marcus on the technical side has given us is uh, yeah. Sakali left the landing stage, veered off to the right, then off to the left, then off to the right again, and then into the bank. So she's got a big S-shaped course, yes. whereas everyone else is going straight. And yeah. that's a rudder that sticks Get stuck in the middle, either lurches to one side or the other. So exactly yeah. what we thought. She's banged her rudder on the portage. Yeah. And, uh, yep. Yeah. An error that she will regret. Probably focusing uh, on getting her food and um, lack the attention of how the boat was behaving behind her. Yeah. But she's making a valiant effort to stay in touch yes. there, Stefan, in the background. Yes. You've got to get out yeah. and see the wave she's chasing yeah. out there. And uh, she's doing everything right. Yeah. Broughton leads for now. Starts to run in. So our eagle-eyed viewers and uh, the people who've got the capability to rewind say that, yep, Sakali got in, just lost all directional control and then went into the bushes to correct that fault. So it's not over for her. She looks like she's doing well back there. Yes. So sort of doing well, she could well do without, but she's gained 10 meters and the group isn't in too much of a hurry. She definitely needs to close that distance though before the next turn and portage where it will all kick off again. So Broughton leads, Kisley to her left, Bedek to her right, Boros closest to us, Egan on the far side in the pink boat, Sam Reese clark have an absolute blinder of a day tucked in the best wash she can possibly find, and Barrios just at the back of the group there. Far side of your picture on the right-hand side is Sakali trying to close that gap, and she is closing that gap reasonably successfully, another 10 metres since we last spoke about her, and she's, uh, if she makes it back to there, Stefan, that's super impressive. Absolutely. And it very much looks like she's going to. Yes, yes. You yes. can see she could easily run in at any time on one of those waves now and get yeah. within about five lengths. We complained a little bit on her tactics uh, in the early stage, but now yep. she's behaving really excellent, following this V yep. wave, uh, try, just uh, She's just, just going to climb them. Yeah. one at a time. And yes, she's, that's all she's focusing on. She can yeah. see the next wave in front of her, and she's going to do one at a time. 
yeah, resting a little bit on the on the back side of the of, of the wave every time. She's a bit lucky. The speed is not that high in the group anymore. Not at the moment. It's not. <laughs> that oh, will change exactly. as we come down to sure, the. Uh... Sure. I think uh, the Hungarians realized that it wasn't possible to to get rid of the others, so they calmed down a bit and just tried to stay stay safe for a yeah. while. Uh, watch this. She will make it. She She's gonna make it, and yeah. that is that is super impressive. Fantastic. She is in good shape. We saw that from the early stages yeah. and we saw it on the short course as well. Ward and select Joe. And here comes Sakali onto the outside of that group. So a lot of choices coming up to that group, and I'm, I don't know, you know. Would you go into one of the V's the other side? You know that at some stage Kisley's going to take the lead, and where she is now, she's not going to get round Boros. So for me, I tuck in more to the back of the group, and she is on the side there. But to be fair, she's probably just relieved to be there. I'd like to go up behind the green boat of Bedek. Myself just a little bit closer to the front of the group. Kisley about to go. And there we go. She's going to take over from Broughton. Reese Clark slips into the V behind Kisley. Perfect place to be. Boros on Kisley's left. No intent from anyone to improve their position there. It's a simple wash change. Egan and Barrios at the back of the group are both very, very comfortable. So a bit of a procession down to the turn, I suspect, before things liven up just a little. Carly, great job to be back there from where she was. She applied herself and did extremely well. Managed that catch up beautifully. Didn't think she would have that in her. But she's clearly in good shape for this year's race. Kisley leads, as she has done into every portage so far. Everyone knows the rules now. If you don't get with Kisley on the way out of this portage, you have got a lot of work to do. There goes Kisley, turning the screws, just making the people work on the way in. If you can get people a bit stressed coming into a portage, that's when they make mistakes. Reese Clark sitting very pretty right there on the V. Barrios at the back also looks very calm. Up goes the speed again. Group will get strung out. 
Carly on the inside of the turn. Should get round. Here we go. So Carly just lifting her paddles over that turn, boy. Same for this one. There she goes there. So Carly doing a good job on the inside. A very good job on the inside. Egan a little bit caught on that turn. Broughton goes up. Reese Clark still relaxed and looking good. Really liking the look of the two British paddlers here. Egan out right on the end. Kisley first. They need to run with her. This time, Boros gets out with her. Away goes Broughton. It's Barrios last out. Egan pushes her way through. Oh! Dakali oh. again smashes her boat on something. Didn't see what. On the wreck. Oy. Yeah, her. you heard the crunch on that one. Yeah. She smacked on the rail. Oh, oh. She's coming in for another one of those crazy feed stops. Look, you just can't do that. Strange. She's carrying all, all her like drinks on her body. It's like, it's like being yeah. waterboarded halfway through a portage. You just <laughs> don't need it. Watch the other girl, she's, she's so yeah. tired. She can't chew. She's got a mouthful of food. She can't breathe. She can't chew. There goes Kisley. Well oh, away. Once Boros. again. Big gap again. Yeah. Once again, she smashed her other this time, water. Broughton on her own. Yeah, oh, watch, no, watch this. Oh, it was Charlie, her other once again. Yeah. She can't do it again. Oh, exactly the same. Absolutely brutal. Could see a replay of that. It was so obvious. She she smashed the rudder, uh, trying to to yeah. switch side. Ah, uh, and that's not the body language of someone who's catching anyone uh, up now. Here go these two, and there's communication now. Yeah. Oh, poor girl. Poor, poor girl. She's just done so much to get this right. This is when the coach breaks the rudder off completely and I oh, can't make her go back out there and do it again. Oh. So she's back with Ward and Slet Joe, but this could be we can't see the others just yet. It's only it's going to be Broughton who was first in after these two. She could be the next boat we see. For the moment, just two. Maybe we can pan out. That gap's... Oh, it's a train of people behind those two. And if these two, the for Sakali. if Voros and uh, and uh, Kisley is not successful in this effort, that will uh, be kind of decisive for for the rest of the race. I think they are ahead now, and they really try. If the other other can catch, it will create a mental pressure on them. Yeah, it will knock their confidence considerably exactly. if they get caught this time. Exactly. So, Sakali there, closest to us. For those kids and stuff watching this race, that's a lesson to you. She is awesome in this race. She's done everything right except look after her boat at the portage. And the result of that is that she's back with that second group while all the people she was with are way up the lake now. 12 metres back to Clark and Broughton. That's not too far. It's only those two. It's, it's Hungary, yeah. Hungary, Great Britain, Great Britain. At least you've got a friend out there. Clark and Broughton will organise to work together in the same way the Hungarians yeah. are. Egan, further back, another 10 metres behind those two. 
And she's with Bedek. I know oh. she's ahead on her own. Yeah. So they will make close it. Close in. Yeah. Come on, girls. We haven't seen Voros do any constructive leading. Uh oh. Uh oh. Good catch ups, but no constructive leading. Great Britain just behind. Fingers crossed for them. Obviously, strong. There's the gap. It's not much. Luda and Milova. Right away back now. And Jenny Egan's back with Reese Clark there. Good for Jenny, good for the girls, and that group is going to close up, Stefan. Yes, yes. Wow. Hats off. That's Egan has done the catch to Reese Clark and Broughton, and Reese Clark did the catch back to the group. And as soon as they're back there, the paddles go down, the speed drops. Everyone's yeah. going to take a break now. Immediately when uh, Sofia took over the lead, the speed That's when it decreased. all closed up. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Girls racing has progressed considerably in the last few years, and this is absolutely so. it's fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> So the group back together again. I thought that was the one. And it turned out girls from Great Britain and Jenny Egan from Ireland were just too good. So that's case group of three there, Sakali, Sletjo, and Ward. Big group up the front remains at seven boats. They come up to that top turn. Around the top turn, just off the back of the group there. Struggling is Bedek again. Just doesn't get round as well as the others.
So seven boats still in the mix. So Carly leading that chase pack. Surely she can't be thinking she's going to get back again. No, that's too far. Gorton leads from Kisley, from Boros. Sam Reese Clark has been so efficient around the course today. She spent an awful lot of time. In the V there, so <clears throat> Broughton leads. Everyone in that race knows that she is just going to get relatively stronger and stronger. Kisley and Voros tracking her. Vegan out to the left. Barrios tucked in the back. Bedek picking up the pieces at the back of the group and looking the least comfortable of all. Barrios very, very relaxed. Two portages to go. Quite a surprising development of this race, at least to me. Uh, such a big group staying together for so long, despite that the Hungarians tried at least two times seriously to <coughs> break, yep, break, to break away. it down. Shows yeah. you how good the other girls are now. Yeah, there's no longer that total dominance from the Hungarians. So Sakali back with Ward and Slet Joe. Broughton leads. Everyone happy just to cover the distance at the moment. Nothing going on. Certainly to look at. There's plenty going on in each one of those seven heads. Just working out where they are on the course, how far they've got to go, how many portages there are left, and how they're going to manage those portages. bigger the number of people on that last portage, the higher the risk. And if it comes to a last portage, well, you've got to favor Kisley. She's been out first for all of them so far.
Luda and Milova. Sikali leading the chase again. He surely can't be thinking of closing down that group again. But she's going for it. She's working hard. The distance is closing to that front group, but so is the distance to the finish. Kisley leads. Voltage coming up. She knows where she wants to be. And the crowd begin to lift. I see them coming. Egan finally has the lead side wash. She'll be happy with that. Reese Clark on the inside of the turn. Not long to suffer being on the second wash out. Barrios very well organized. Sikali, unbelievably, is continuing that chase. Kisley leads. Egan, well placed this time. Boros, well placed. Reese Clark sensibly dropping back, making it easy on herself around this next corner. So here we go. Gradual speed up into the portage. Kisley left, Boros right. It's going to get a bit tight on that right side. Kisley leads as ever. Voros chases her down. Egan well positioned. Broughton always good at managing these situations. Reese Clark on her left. Coming into the feed station is Barrios. Kisley opening up a small gap from Voros. Egan. Egan's run well. Small gap on Broughton. No stress this time. It looks like they're going to get in together. Bedek a little bit slow. She's got Beck catching away. Goes Egan third away. The two Hungarians, then Egan, then Broughton. Reese Clark away now. The gaps open up so quickly there. It does. All of a sudden. Yeah, they all got in together, right? Yeah. And they all come out at different times. It is, I don't know. Chase Pack, not too far behind now. A little Thank bit strange. They, they, were, they, were, they were not Let's running see. that fast over this portage. Carly's so tired. Yeah. That's someone nearly in tears. That's, uh, she's only just going to, she's leading this group. She's leading the catch up, but she's so tired. Can't be again. No. Oh. All right. <laughs> Select Joe away with Ward up at the front. Kisley again puts on the squeeze. Boros goes with her. This time, Egan comfortable all the way. Great portage from Egan. This doesn't look easy, though. There's discomfort on the faces. Egan looks back to see if any damage is being done. 
maybe to see if anyone can come and give her a V on the side. But for now, it's these three. Hungary, Hungary, Ireland. A look over the shoulder to Voros. Kisley wants Voros to take it on, and you're not going to. Voros looks back, asks Egan to come through. Egan's going to come through, but Reese Clark is doing the chasing again. She was the strong one last lap, and she's doing it again. I think she'll fancy the chances of closing down Egan. Bedek at the back of the group. Ward, Slet Joe and Sakali. Sakali struggling to get back on terms with these two now. These two, a little bit of a sniff of the back of the next group. Thanks to Sakali's great last lap. Still a good 150 metres off the pace, though. And what will we see when we go back to that front group? Is it going to be two groups of three or... One group of seven again. That doesn't, that's maths, isn't it? That's gone horribly wrong. A group of three at the front, a group of four behind, or the one group of seven. I think it's, well, they're all, not all back there. Broughton's back with those. Reese Clark going around the outside. Barrios just trying to get in contact with Reese Clark and a ride to the front. Egan leads. Bedek kind of just out, off the back of the group still. Everyone getting into position. Reese Clark on the back of Voros. And it's relaxation time again. One portage to go. So Osa and Nykirk and Winter. Egan leads. Should we want him to take take a breather fairly soon? I'm sure. We've seen nothing from Voros yet on this race. She's just been there or thereabouts. She did one good catch up. Other than that, it's been very very conservative. Kisley forced into the lead. Egan taking an energy gel, maybe, or whatever she had strapped to the front of her boat there. And everyone will be very grateful of a bit of downtime. So, Kisley has led for so much of this race. She want to keep the speed uh, high, at least a little bit high. It's such a fine line, isn't it? It is. If you keep it too high, you've got no change of speed when it all kicks off. If you keep it too low, everyone else has too much of a change of speed left. And uh, yeah. then the battles begin. Bedek in the green boat there, just finally moving up into the second V behind Voros. Still see the nose of the boat hasn't gone down, has now. Shoulders drop, hands drop, and she can relax at last. Egan dropped back into the V for a bit of a break. And we're coming up to lap boat 459. And that is Rivera from Chile. She can have her moment of glory in the front group. Get a taste of what it's like up the sharp end. Round the outside goes Broughton. Not happy sitting on the tail of Barrios, obviously, and 
I don't know why FedEx chose to swap washes there, but she obviously thinks Broughton has the potential of going all the way to the front. So Chile is going to be caught at the very worst point to be caught. Reese Clark on the left of that group has got a job to do here. That is going to be very, very difficult to manage. Reese Clark drops to the back of the group. Chile has sensed the danger and she's going for it around the corner. Good for her. Exactly the right thing to do. Just get around the corner and get out of the way. Well done to Chile on that. Good work. That's Rivera from Chile. Managed to keep ahead of the main group around the corner. And there'll be some very grateful women in that group that she did exactly that. Broughton goes on the right-hand side of the group. Bedek tries to get on terms with her on the right-hand side. Kisley will move over to her, pushing, I think that's Barrios into the back. Boros trying to take on Kisley. This is something big happening. There's a little bit of posturing going on here. Three of them, neither one wanting to give up the lead. Roros is hoping Kisley leads so that she can get on the side. But Broughton is having none of it. Still pressing on. We'll see in a minute who goes where. They're still side by side. Nobody wants to give this up. So Kisley doesn't really want to lead. Broughton did want to lead, but Voros knew that she had to get to her side. Kisley didn't want to drop back. She didn't want Voros going to her side, and that's forced Voros to lead. She hasn't done much leading, but that was an interesting little episode. I think that Broughton did want the lead there and just couldn't quite get it. It was group was too nervous to let her go and held her off. So first little show of strength from Voros there that we've seen. Reese Clark comfortable through all of that, as were the two girls at the back. The ones who suffered there, well, probably only Bedek, really, on the far left of the group. Boros leads from Kisley, from Reese Clark. Just bouncing a bit of weed off the front of her boat. Barrios, been very good all through today. Still seven boats, one portage left, and about two and a half K to go. Voros leads. It'll be interesting to see when Kisley wants to lead into the portage whether Voros lets her go past or hasn't got any choice 
in letting her go past, or whether she'll make this her play all the way from here and decide to hold on to that lead. Clark, very well positioned. Egan as well, I think. Yeah, because if Kisley takes it now, Egan yeah. can follow her straight yeah. into the V. Egan's got pretty much everything covered. Yeah. I would like, if Kisley leads, I would like to see Clark take on Voros and see what she's got. But if you fail, it's an expensive one. But I think, I think a reasonable risk to take. I think it, Clark was so sharp away from the start. She's got yeah. some speed in her. And it could be the time she gets to close the door on Voros. Of course, we're just, that's just supposition on our part. We don't know how they're feeling. For sure not. The only thing we know is uh, that uh, tension is building up now. Too Everybody, right, tension yeah. is building up. Portage just looms closer and yeah. closer. Adrenaline is pumping. Everyone is focused now. Who it's a will, strange thing because like, you're trying to conserve physical energy, but the mental yes. energy is leaking out the whole yes. time. And yes. you, your brain is going at 1,000 miles an hour. You want your body to go at two miles an hour. And uh, oh, it's, uh, it's crazy times there. Yeah. What you see yeah. is not what's happening, that's for sure. And Nykirk. with Winter and Osa. Bedek is, <clears throat> Bedek, Bedek is moving a little She's bit. She's kind of positioning herself yeah. for something, Trying. isn't she? Yeah. I don't think she's got it, though. She's got to go uh, around from there, Kisley. go around Broughton yeah. and Kisley. Yeah, I watch Kisley. Watch Kisley. She's not really going for it, but she can't stay stay on the wash either. She can't drop right back <laughs> no, and be comfortable. No. She's got to be high up on the wash. Yeah, Here goes, yeah. is, is that, no? I keep thinking Bedek's going to go. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> so Milova and Luda, not quite the stress back there that there is at the front of the race. Let's get up there. And Kisley uh, went yeah. past. We missed it when it yes. happened, but she's gone past. Egan, exactly right, tucked in behind her. Sam Reese clark hasn't taken on Boros. So looking good for me yeah. here. If it stays like this to the portage, Broughton will get out early, and she'll do very well out of this, I think. It's going to be Kisley. We know that from all the other yeah. portages. The probability says Kisley will get in first. It's who gets in with her. I would love to see Clark have a go at Boros here before the turn. But she knows what she's thinking. She knows what she's feeling, and she is... Super intelligent racer. Barrios in a spot of bother, really, at the back of this group. If she's thinking of medals. And Bedek just not positioned well. Ward, Slet Joe. And a Chilean matching them now. Good for her, giving it a go. Right, we must be on the turn now, and the turn coming into the portage would be great to see that. There we go. Yeah. Boros having a go around the inside. This is her play for a win. Boros scores. Kisley having none of it. Broughton managing to stay with them. It's a big move, this one. And Broughton's going to run down that hill. She's got a great run into the portage. 
This could be first three right here and now. Egan still in with a chance if she gets out early and runs well. Through goes Kisley, then Boros, then Broughton. And I think that's your top three yeah. right there. Yeah. They're the best runners in the pack. Kisley safe at the front. Boros running hard. Broughton. I think she's losing a bit of ground, certainly on Kisley. Orton looks to be laboring a bit on the run. Oh, which is watch this. Kisley's running really fast. One, two, Some... three. Egan just desperately has to hang on to these. She's got it. Uh, looks very tired. For her. Yeah. Reese Clark, tired, I think. One, two, three. Kisley's not going to be overtaken. Broughton's not going to be overtaken. It's just whether Broughton can pick off one of those girls at the yeah. end. She's been so strong on her finishes, Broughton, this year. She's, yeah, she's very strong also now. She's picking. She's I think actually she can catch. take yeah. Boros. Yeah. I really do. I don't think she's got it for Kisley. But I think Boros is a target, a realistic target for her. Ward comes through. There's Kisley. Boros chasing her down. And Broughton on her. Yeah. I think I think Boros should give up the chase to Kisley and deal more with Broughton at this stage. I think it could be a mistake to wear yourself out catching someone you're not going to beat anyway. She wants to be on the wash. I know, but how much does that cost? Yeah, a lot. She's not going to and get... And she's not going to overtake no. her at the end. She no. knows that. She's giving up So now. Broughton yeah. is playing into Broughton's hands. Oh, the Chilean girl has been told she just does the short lap now. She's a bit confused by that, but that's the rules if you get lapped. You just finish your short lap on the same as the other guy's. So this is interesting. My money is on Broughton for a silver here. Did you see that? Um, Kisley got something on her bow. She had to to move the, the boat up and down to get rid of it, but it seems like she was successful. Also, the eagle-eyed fans out there have said that Reese Clark in the yellow boat had to swap her paddles on the last portage. So something was going on there. Uh, we missed that from commentary, so apologies for that. Come on, Lizzie. Kisley all the way. And Voros has got a job on her hands here because Broughton does not give these up easy. Kisley safe in first. And for me, Boros is just working too, too hard to go yeah. nowhere. And I think this is just playing to Broughton all the way. Boros has got no speed she can go beyond the one she's got now. And when Broughton comes by, fingers crossed for Great Britain, it's going to be nothing that Boros can do. Kisley safe. Boros full on. 200 meters to go. Broughton looking at the end. Boros has got nothing. And here we go. No, no. Not yet. I think that's all. That's all Broughton's got. She might not have enough. Here we go. It's the best she's got. Both of them flat out now. Boros holding her off. Here comes Broughton. Oh, wrong time to go to the leader. I think He's still no, a champ. it's not going to happen for Broughton. It's going to be third. Boros just too strong. So Kisley from Chelo Boros from Broughton. 
What a great race, Stefan. Yeah, I enjoyed was... every minute of that. Yeah, Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. <clears throat> Thank you for the entertainment. It's going to be Barrios fourth, Egan fifth, Reese Clark sixth. And Bedek, seventh. You could see that coming from the bottom turn. She was just caught for speed, caught for positional savvy, and seventh place for Bedek. So many, <clears throat> she caught up so, so many times after, yeah. the, after the portages. And it's, I think she is pleased. Good race for her. But Vanda Kisley, once again, once again, world champ, winning. 2018, with, yeah. 2019. And with some to spare as well, as well yes. there, Stefan. Yes. Slet Joe. Coming in. Great race from the two Hungarians. And Kisley always gives a great interview also. She's always so nice to hear from her. Yeah. Slet Joe across the line. First one behind that group. I don't know where Ward went. She was with Slet Joe. Yeah. And now is, isn't is even in sight. And it's Sakali next. So, oh, there's Ward there. So it's just the camera wasn't on her. So Ward... And then, yeah, here's a brave girl today, Stefan. Yes. I mean, problems caused by her own stress levels, I think. But she did remarkably well to deal with. Uh, yeah, a very, lap. very relaxed uh, technique. She she doesn't seem to suffer when she paddles, but it's fast and uh, yeah, yeah, it's great. Smashed her other twice. Oh, and there's a dent in that boat somewhere as well, Stefan. You yeah. heard it. Yeah. That, bo <laughs> that boat's going to need a repair somewhere. Yeah, she's disappointed with her day, obviously. Yeah, Because it could have been so much more. But yeah, when you do these races, you look at a performance like that and you realize that she's doing something that you're not sure you could do. And I think when you see people do stuff that you know you can't do yourself, it's always super impressive. So Winter just holds off Van Nykerk. Actually, I'm probably doing you a disservice there, Steph, and you would have done that all day, every day. <laughs> it would have been me that couldn't do it. <laughs> and from Argentina, Kolowek. So Osa talking to the girl from Chile, Rivera, who did one big lap less than the others because she was lapped, and that's how it works. Luda holding off Milova for 14th and 15th position, respectively. Oh, we still got another race to do today, Stefan. We do have. These guys only have one to do, but we've got loads. Yes. And uh, I just don't think they give. I just don't think they give us the uh, appreciation <laughs> we deserve for doing all these. <laughs> Four three nine Kostra Matina from Russia. So she's going to finish in 16th. <clears throat> 4 5 1. Mostovenko. 4 60. Kolowek. It's confusing who we, we're going to here. Sorry, I'm losing touch of who's in front of who. 
Milovert was our last finish. I think this is our next finish to uh, uh, Costa Martina. Sixteenth uh, position, I think. Yeah, you're dead right. Koloek from Argentina should be next. Yeah. That's a that's the Ukrainian. Four, five, eight. Um, from Japan. Well, I don't think we've got a tracker on the Japanese athlete. But that's Kurihara from Japan. Oh, yeah, four, five, three, twenty second position for Kurihara. And motorboat following her down the lane suggests that she's the last one because the only one behind her Paddler behind her, sorry, was Rivera from Chile, who was lapped and has already finished. So Japan, last finish. This is Witowska crossing the line now. And while they finish, we go to Ross Solly, and he's interviewing our new world champion in the women's K1. Yes, thank you very much, Ivan. I'm here with uh, Vonda Kisley, uh, world champion, third time in a row. Vonda, congratulations. Uh, it was a very good win. Thank you. How did you feel out there? You looked very comfortable for most of the race. Yeah, I feel comfortable because uh, I try to not put all my energy on the portage. Uh, I just try to save uh, for the finish because I know that every girl is very fast. So, yeah, but it was a thought race. Yeah. It's interesting you say you didn't try and use too much energy on the portage because your portages were very strong today and you seem to always get a good advantage. So uh, that wasn't your tactic, though? I think I don't have any tactic, but <laughs> I don't know. I just go and try my best. You also, as well as looking relaxed, looked in control. You always seemed to know what you were doing, who was around you, where everybody was. Did you feel like you were in control for the whole race? Yes, I, I felt um, I always watching where the other girls and who are there. Uh, so, yeah, I think I was in control. One or two times you went out fast after the portage, but the girls caught you again. Did that uh, disappoint you, or were you happy to have them back with you again? I wasn't disappointed because I love uh, sitting at the waves. So I said, OK, then I can sit on the waves and relax. Yeah. And Vonda, as I said, this is the third time now uh, for you in a row to be world champion. Do you feel pressure? Did you feel pressure? this week being a two-time world champion, coming back again to try and defend your title? I did, yeah. Yeah, and it's not a good feeling. Yeah, I was so nervous. Yeah, it's not a good feeling. So how do you cope with pressure? Do you, do you still sleep okay? Is everything still okay for you in the lead up to a race? Mm, yeah, I sleep okay, and but I couldn't eat. So 
<laughs> I was nervous because uh, if I don't eat, I, I will be hungry, and then I'm nervous. So <laughs> it's a uh, round, round, yeah. But I'm happy. <laughs> You're a world champion. Your new nickname is Hungary from Hungary. Congratulations, Vonda. Well done. So impressive today. Good effort. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Vonda Kisley there, our new world champion, and she always does such a great interview. And she's I know, you yeah, you listen she's to her, a... Stefan. She's so confident, isn't she? Yeah, she's confident and uh, she's open. She, yeah. she always says, uh, t tell us her thoughts yeah. in a straightforward way, and uh, it's, it's great. Yeah, I love that she's at that place in her racing where she doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't really have a plan because she knows she can plan as it goes. She's, yeah. She can cover whatever happens. Yeah. So she doesn't need to have anything set in stone because, you know what, if people are with her, they're with her, and if they're not, they're not. It, it's no... It doesn't matter either way, does it? Sounds quite simple. I just, yeah, what a lovely place to be. And I think the, the other thing there, yeah, she tells you how nervous she is before a race. And everybody yeah. looks at people like her and those those habitual winners and think that it's all okay for them. Yeah, yeah. That they don't get scared, no. that they don't worry. But everyone does, don't they? Yes, yeah, absolutely. We, we absolutely. all deal with it in our own way. Yes. But everyone gets scared. Yes, yes. I, I always thought when we were racing, yeah, you know, if somebody could click their fingers two minutes before the start and I could go home, I'd go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it worries me more when I was not nervous. Yeah. 100%. At least in the end. Yeah, at least in the end of the career. Sometimes yeah. I I didn't bother much but going to a race and then didn't get any nervousness, any feeling for it. And then almost always it was a lousy race. Yeah, so I think, yeah, if you're, if you're a young kid, watching this and you you think that yeah you, know, you get so nervous you want to throw up you can't eat you can't sleep everything That's... doesn't seem to be falling for you i tell you what everyone feels exactly the same yeah everyone. that's how it is you just yeah. need to get used to it and, and deal with it with, with it in a positive way you just have to know exactly that stefan you know this is how i feel before a race yeah the race is always pan out okay for me so i'm happy with feeling this bad and that's yeah. Just you put it to one side. I know I feel bad, but that's okay. And I think it's quite a, an important thing for you know, every racer out there to know that every other racer yeah. feels exactly the same. I interviewed an athlete once, an Olympic champ, uh, one of the great stars of our sport, and I asked her, um, "So how how did you how did you?" Um, train your mental capacity how did you deal with nervousness and she said i don't know i've never been nervous you've never yeah, been that, nervous that's no, a lie never. surely anyway stefan it's time we're with yeah we're but talking. i think I we're talking think, way yeah. too much stefan we've got that video <laughs> to introduce yeah. and are you, are you going to introduce the video i think you're good at that stuff uh, we will have an, a video from uh, f from next year's World Championships, actually, in Ponte de Lima, in Portugal. And we have been in Portugal many times for World Championships. Uh, uh, for myself, as a commentator, first time back in 2009. And uh, then uh, <clears throat> followed uh, on... Uh, uh, on uh, follow along uh, several times uh, on other championships as well and now next year 2022 it will be Ponte de Lima time for a video <clears throat> If you're going to try, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start.
And it will be better than anything else you can imagine. Nice video from yes. next year's World Championship venue. I really loved it there, Stefan. We were there a few years back um, yeah. with the Europeans. And it, it was great. And I mean, it's always great to have World Championships here in Portugal. 2009 in Cristuma, 2018 in Prado, Villa Verde. All great race, <coughs> racing. And Ponte de Lima is an amazing place. And it's kind of a halfway course between this and China last year. You've got yeah. the natural course but not the, the little rivers around the back. And uh, yeah. I, I like it as a course and I liked it as a venue. I think it's brilliant. Portuguese yeah. always organize things beautifully well. Yes. And and there's canoeing in the country, isn't there? It's a, it is. It's a canoeing area. And yeah, I'm really excited about that one. Hopefully they'll invite us back. You never know, yeah. especially because we've praised them up quite a lot now. So I think yeah. we should be on the list. We praise them even more. <laughs> But it's also Ponte de Lima is a, a city uh, big enough to host such an event, but uh, small enough to make it uh, look actually really, really big. And uh, yeah. we are really looking forward, forward to that. Good conditions, a river with some challenges. Of course, it's shallow some, some on some parts, but uh, very good for marathon. So Kurihara from Japan, our last finisher of the day in the women's K1 World Championship Marathon. We'll take a small comfort break at this stage. Oh, there's a... And uh, come back for the men's. Yeah. Very shortly, in fact. Yeah, very shortly. In a couple right. of minutes. I'm just going to have to be a short comfort break. See you in a bit, yeah. guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.
So already on the graphics for the men's race. Last race of the day. It will be a good one, I'm sure. Just a few minutes now, five minutes scheduled until the start. There's your start list. Kainatsky, Hicks, Russell from Great Britain, Redco from Ukraine, comes from Belgium, Syriac from Poland, Flyer from Netherlands, Palfler, he's going to be there from Germany. Lindbergh also, Lovemore from South Africa. He's winning their trials at the moment, and that's no easy trial to win. Egan, possibly not up the sharp end today. Um, Carey, as, ah, he's there and thereabouts always, but as yet hasn't really made it to the end of one of these. Boros isn't, he's the opposite. He's not there at the beginning, but he's going to be there at the end. Balboa, one of the favorites. Pedersen, world champion. Romalo, you saw him in the short race earlier this week. It's the best we've seen him for ages. Boulanger, Alonso, both contenders. Cox from Belgium. Yamaguchi from Japan. Thompson, well, you know what they've got. Foley wasn't too impressive yesterday, but maybe he'll have a better day today. Salbu from Norway. Aaron Yossi from Hungary. Duke Van Bakel from Netherlands. Palfler, two in from Germany. Chervov, Graziani, and Lorenz from Spain. What, and the, so the list goes on. Polotov from Ukraine. Angrisani from Italy. Tommy Yonley, all the way from the States. Concha from Chile. Shakin from India. Hank McGregor, right out there on the outside, along with Gary Kachia and Vold. That's quite a good little group in itself right there. And Conceição from Portugal, also going to be in the mix. So listing down there, Stefan, like every page has got big names on. None bigger Absolutely. than Hank McGregor. Um, he has, he's not winning the trials at home at the moment. But there's an athlete with experience, with an attitude on him, an attitude of winning. And you can't write him off, that is for sure. Exactly. And I mean, uh, on this start line, we do have people like him, 43 years old, uh, with lots of experience. Uh, Cyril Carey, you mentioned, uh, I saw him first time, I think, as a junior back in Samora, 2002. So that's also a guy with lots, lots, lots of experience, uh, both in marathon and and, uh, and sprint. And then uh, youngsters, as uh, Hamish uh, Lovemore, um, he has uh, been a senior now for a couple of years, but he's, he's still young compared to these guys and many, many others. So I think this will be a really, really uh, interesting race. And then, of course, Mats uh, Brand petersen who 2019 won uh, both under 23 and the uh, seniors as the first uh, first guy in the canoeing world doing so in a marathon. So and that yep. is... I mean, there, there's so many. Aren't there? Yeah, there, there are, are so, so many. There are so many. I, yes. I don't think we've seen um, Romalo this good for a long, long time. Exactly. And yeah, he's already got the confidence from the first race. Yeah, and even Alonso. Uh, yeah. Yeah, had his first gold medal already in 2012, I think it was, and then a couple of silver and the bronze uh, uh, in K both K1 and K2, and and I haven't seen him this eager for medals for for a long time either. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's Romalo there. He's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'd love to see him win. That's, that's you know, I've, I've wanted to see it for a few years. He deserves a win. He always wins the Europeans. That's kind yeah. of his thing. But it, it seems to be just that addition of one more team, the South Africans, that just takes him from that top pedestal takes the control away from it yeah, and he ramal you remember in in prado at the world star at his home home turf it, that should have been his big event but he had some bad, bad luck with a hole in his boat and yeah he, he missed out completely so yeah he's worth worthwhile winner it will be a really really interesting race Hank has actually 11 gold medals from World Championships. The first, the, the first one already 2003. Yeah, I mean that's. 
Uh, a long time wow. ago. Away they go. Yeah. <clears throat> Hank closest to us in that green boat. To his left from Spain is Laurens, I think. Yeah, and he's also a good one. And um, the top case, usually. And Vold also on this side. McGregor already relaxed on his wash. Yeah. You can see a lift to the front. There's no point getting there if someone else is going to do it for you. Hmm. Is he in the lead? Not unexpected. Uh, hard to tell. There's Win um, Thompson there, Romalo yeah. there, Alonso there. Lovemore coming in from the left side with Russell on his wash and coming in. There's a group to the right of our shot as well. I think that's Boros in the middle. Yeah. No, maybe not. It's the other Hungarian. Um, Are you on Aussie? Thanks, Stefan. I was struggling for that one. Tommy Yonley in the blue shirt, heading off to the left-hand side. Groups over there. Three distinct groups. So it's the Russian in the middle there. It's going to be a while until we can get. So that's Chervov leading that middle group. Bold on his wash. Green boat from McGregor. And there goes Pedersen, which means something's happening to the left. And he doesn't want to be caught out. Romalio leading. Alonso is there in the white cap. Lovemore takes over from Romalo just as that. Picture went out a shot there. So Pedersen leading. Yeah, and Hank made it to the top to the top group in a position he loves. Yeah, absolutely. Romalo in the yellow cap, left of shot. Foley over that side from Ireland also. Boros there in the middle of shot. Yeah. Just kind of floundering behind the group as always. Yeah. Alonso up in the group. James Russell up in the group from Great Britain. Yeah. Alonso on the left hand side in the white cap there. Easy to recognize. That could be uh, something for the future. Each one having a different color cap. hat. Yeah. Give us a give us a hand. So that's gonna be oh, that's a huge group. Romalo McGregor, Pedersen, Gary Katria. Chervov, Lovemore, Carey. I haven't spotted Carey yet. Don't know what he's wearing or what colour boat he's in. But we'll get all that for you as it settles down. And Balboa must be in there somewhere as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that I looks think like a white boat on the outside. Yeah. Balboa is there in the middle comes Laurens. It's just not settling. Pedersen pushing to the front again with Vold. McGregor coming around McGregor. Laurens. McGregor didn't have an answer to that, although he's still holding his ground. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of a sign there. McGregor would have had a, an answer for that in the past, I'm sure. Lovemore on the left, unless he's supremely confident, of course, and he's happy to get knocked back in the group for now. Big group going through the flags at the end of the thousand meters. Mild stress only for a couple of paddlers there going around those posts. And the group Lovemore, Carey, Pedersen, Vold, McGregor, Russell, Alonso, Laurens, Romalo, Lindbergh, Foley, Boulanger, Chervov, Palfler. Aran Yossi, Balboa, Garachia, 
Hicks still in there. Thompson, Conceição, Palfler again, Boros, Adam. Jeez, it, the list goes on, man. Yeah. It's amazing. What a great race. And what a big group for the first turn. <laughs> it will be interesting going around the first turn. Yeah. It'll be very strung out. That's when you don't want to be the wrong side of a group split. There's action all over the place in that yeah. group. To the left of the group, there's stuff happening all the time. There comes someone else out towards the left side, fighting for the second wash. Yellow boat, whoever that is, won that one. You see this? McGregor is dropping off a little bit when uh, Mads Peterson increased the speed. Is that an early sign? It's difficult to tell. There's plenty of good waves in yeah. there. Yeah, he manoeuvred to, to, in there. Yeah, and he, he manoeuvred cleverly yeah. to get on the inner side a little bit better. Yeah. That's what someone like McGregor has yes. there. Race, yes. race awareness, race yes. savvy. Yes, okay. yes. We've watched him. We've watched him from his start, haven't we, really? Yeah, yeah. And his, his race intelligence has gone up year on year on year. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, there was a time when he was the problem in the group. Yeah, but... And, uh, and yeah. then just got better and better and better. And yeah. It's so hard to get rid of someone like that from a group. Yes, because yes. He's got so many hiding places. Remember in Peter Marysburg, he was controlling the group from from uh, from the far end, so to speak. Yeah. Sitting yeah. there in the middle of the group, controlling everything and doing precisely what he wanted. Yeah, it's very hard to explain to someone who hasn't been in those groups how that works. It has to do with confidence, but also strength. Yeah. When you decide you need to do it, then people understand that uh, it's no idea to, to try to fight off. Yeah. Yeah. And they, you learn who to pick on and who not to. And, yeah. And that's one of the biggest skills you have. Yeah. Thompson is doing well, as always, um, as similar to, to what we saw on the short distance. So still big group. There's a lot of churn in the back of that group. See when people are crossing over the group, they're going for something. Group split a little at the turn. You've got those two distinct groups now. The group splitting up slightly. We're looking at Palfler leading, Thompson, Gary Achia, McGregor, Pedersen, Lovemore, Vold, Carey. Um, Is it Boris that uh, was trying there on the left-hand side and forced McGregor to re respond? I'm not sure. I'm struggling with the clarity on my screen. But what I do know is that there's no Romalo. That's in right. That group. At the moment, looks like Palfler leading. 
Romalu, Romalu is down on 13th, 14th position. Yeah, now. you can just see him at the back yeah. of the shot there. Yeah. A, a 25 meter behind or something like that, second group. Alonso as well. So big group there. And we go to the presentation. So the prize giving ceremony for the ladies K1 with Wanda Kisley as the world champ. While all that was happening, nothing was settling down at the front. We've got Alonso and Pedersen kind of fighting it out at the front. There's a couple of powerfulers up there. Miguel yeah. Lorenz is up there. Thompson is up there. James Russell is up there. Lovemore is up there in the white boat closest to us. French also. McGregor at the back in the green boat. It's kind of picking up pieces. It's looking tough for him at the moment. Foley in there. And that could be Boris. No, uh, Aaron Yossi. Lindbergh. And Lindbergh at the back. Yeah. So Alonso leading round the first to the bottom turns. Looks comfortable. Love more with the yellow hat on. Pedersen, just I don't know why Pedersen's dropping onto the tail. I, moving up. James Russell beautifully positioned there. That second group's got some big names in it. Oh, 
Balboa and Carre are in there somewhere. a big group Alonso in shot there Pedersen to his right and that's kicking off again McGregor much more comfortable now after that turn Bold on the far side I think So Alonso leads from Pedersen. Jacob Adam there with Romalo, Albert Hicks, and Conceição. Great group for Albert Hicks to be in. There's a ride to the front there. Jacob Adam always will make that haul back to the front. You've still got the Russian... Kirchhoff there. <laughs> to Romalo, just making his way back. A Lindbergh. To main group. Lindbergh, Paufler. An Argentinian. Not really clear on where all those groups are. Spreading out now. Alpha yeah. and Argentine group. It's all breaking down a little bit. That's Laurens has just come out from side there. Marlow presses on with Adam Conceição, Hicks, and Chervov. Did you find out what happened to Ramalho? No, I, I don't think anything happened. I think he just got caught maybe on that yeah. first turn yeah. as he yeah. got strung out. Yeah. Ramalho, the world champ from the short distance, where he finally got his first gold medal in a marathon championship but we now he really want to, to be to have a gold also yeah, on the long this is distance. the one isn't it yeah so pedersen leads alonso Lonzo. there bold there the two frenchmen both there yeah that's carry and boulanger Romalo steady on the outside, not rushing too much to get back. Currently a deficit of... They're uh, going uh, quite close to the bank. I wonder track why. It's gone a bit wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we haven't seen that all, all week, have we? No. Oh. It's no flow in this water at all. Maybe it's just a way it does to restrict the size it. of the group yeah, and restrict exactly. the width of the exactly. group. And maybe yeah. that's yeah. So James Russell up there on the lead wash. Great job from him. Two Frenchmen, Argentinian. Got Holland, Belgium. Plus two in that group. That's the group of Romalo up in the distance. There's the lead group going very close, like you say, Stefan, to that edge. It's a little bit longer to do to do so, actually. <clears throat> but as you said, it will limit the size of the group and create a little bit more difficulties for the guys on the right-hand side. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you can see they're going <laughs> to get quite close yeah. to the edge now. Oh, yeah. Into the shadow. So the Romalo group is still a long way off the pace. Yeah. So that first group. Still ahead, still working well. More churn at the front. When you get three, four, you got four across the front of that. No one wants to give this up. They know that if they give it up, they'll get closed in by the rest of the group and the group reforms. A little bit of chaos in the back there. So approach the turn and the splits in the groups beginning. McGregor in the lead, I think. Uh, so Alonso leading. Yeah, it is. Could be McGregor to his left. Uh, yeah. Alonso McGregor. Pedersen, Carre, Bold, Russell, Thompson, Lovemore, Boulanger, Gary Kachia. The drone pilot is stretching the limit of the drone as much as possible now, <laughs> as we can see. McGregor it's being squeezed close. out yeah. by Palfler there. Tucks in to the back behind Alonso. That wash should stay open for, and it's not going to stay open because on the other side, Pedersen starts. Whoa, somebody got a, the white hat there, got bullied out of the way by the black boat that's now in the front V. So Pedersen leads from. Alonso and Thompson. Thompson in the black boat to the right of Pedersen. James Russell to the right of him in the white boat with the stripes around. Alonso this side in the grey boat. McGregor in green. Palfler in the bloat in the yellowy boat with the black tips. So again, going close to the edge down this side. Seems to be Pedersen who's doing that to the group. Pedersen, Thompson in the black boat. We saw him impressive yesterday in the under 23. Alonso, McGregor at the back, along with Lovemore. James Russell on the right in the stripy boat. Back to Palfler, Foley, 
Boros in this group, Laurens in this group. Might be two Palflers in this group, actually. Lindbergh in there also. This is the chase group, not far off the pace, 10 meters or so back, and just about to make contact with that group again. McGregor just wanting to hold out that group just to defend his position. So a huge first group again as we come down towards the first portage. First portage of seven. Alonso takes on the pool. Carey <coughs> to his left, Pedersen. To his right, Thompson beyond that, Lovemore in the hat, James Russell on the far side, McGregor this side in green. McGregor making a move around Carey. An impressive move, and I think he's going to make that one stick. We'll see when we get back. Yeah. It's panning up now for the first portage. McGregor got round Carey, got to Alonso, but while he did that, Pedersen on the other side went past Alonso. McGregor finds himself second wash out with Carey now outside him. Lindbergh just at the back of that group, yeah. trying to find yeah. something comfortable. Well done from Lindbergh there. Balboa. Ramalio. Ramalo. Chervov. Adam. They're a fair way back on this group. Hicks was in that group also. And on Seisal from Portugal. Yeah. Everyone looking around, trying to work out who's where in that group. Because the portage is close now. It's a minute away. You just need to know where the potential dangers are coming from. Boros on the back of that group now. And the group gets longer and longer. Right at the back, Palfler. Very much. Uh, a lot of confidence in this guy now. Uh, even Alonso. Yeah, it's, change man. Yeah. McGregor, Carey, Vold, Boros, Florence, Foley, Thompson. Kaufler. Thompson in there also. Yep. Second good race for him this weekend. Did an amazing race yesterday. McGregor's positioned himself well yeah. for the first portage. And that's experience that does that. On his inside carry, it's going to turn McGregor around that turn, drops off the back, and now he's going to cause problems for everyone behind him. Problems for Vold, problems for Foley. Ooh, this oh, this is going to be tight. This is going to be tight. Last minute change of mind from McGregor, and somebody's lost their boat there. Alonso, though, 
Michael out running, leading. Bold comes through the drinks lane. Alonso smooth. McGregor, Pedersen, Russell, Bold. A little bit of a gap then. Back to Powfler. Lovemore, Lawrence, Boros, Lindbergh, Foley, Carey. And away they go. It's Alonso doing the damage. McGregor well set. And oh, Romalo. Hicks coming out the drinks lane. Bold, working hard to get to somewhere. Main group hidden under the bush to the left of shot, I think. But Bold certainly on a mission to get somewhere. You can just see the paddles of the lead group. Pedersen leads from Alonso, McGregor, Thompson. Boulanger in there. Russell, Boulanger in the blue boat. Lovemore is not anymore there. He he was quite late out from the portage. Yeah. yeah. Was he the one whose boat got maybe drifted, drifted away maybe. at this end maybe of the portage? So. It could maybe be. So. Yeah. I thought I would see McGregor and him working together. They are training, <laughs> and now they are. Did you yeah, know? I mean, they, they are training together <laughs> every day in in Durban, and uh, I've done a lot of work together due over the years, but it didn't pan out as it seems. So this is a group with Van Bakel, Salbu, Sivek from Poland, Cox from Belgium. As we look up, up the course, Lindbergh, Foley, Powfler, Aaron, not Aaron Yossi, the other Argentinian guy, Gerard Cachea, To me, the one that seems mo most relaxed now is Ivan Alonso. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You've never seen him in trouble. You haven't seen him have to come from behind ever. He's just, yeah, yeah. working well. Yeah, I'm watching his face in the close-ups. It looks relaxed, controlled. Thompson leads. McGregor, <laughs> well-placed. It's amazing doing uh, two hard races, two days in a row, like Thompson. Yeah, yeah. So Thompson, McGregor, Pedersen, Lovemore. No, that's um, fastest lap times, I think, coming up there. Yeah, yeah. James Russell just beginning to suffer on that front group. He didn't have one of the best washes, and he's just dropping to the back of the group, hoping that there's a big wave there somewhere for him. This is a chase group with Carey in it. I think that's I think and also Russell for just us. off the back yeah. of that group. Yeah. And that chasing group also Boros as well. Yeah. There's some good groups out there that aren't in yeah. the front group, so exactly. this is far from over. It's 
Yeah, I mean, I've seen Boros, I think it was in Metkovic at the Europeans once. He was uh, over a minute after when after the top group when uh, when two laps were left and he won. So McGregor goes to the front. Yeah. And James Russell, these are tense times. He's giving it everything he can to get to that wash behind McGregor. And I think he's done it. Good lad. Yeah. I just think that's going to disappear in a minute as it gets backed into by Pedersen. Yeah. Pedersen's now got it. Russell just pushed out again. There aren't many of those efforts in you and things are just starting to get a bit unpleasant for James Russell. Love more. You can see the yellow hat to the right in the second group and then in the third group, the yellow hat of Romalo. So McGregor leads, Thompson, Boulanger, Alonso tucked in the back, Pedersen. Same number of paddlers in this top group as we saw in the ladies, seven. Two guys at the back of that group struggling. And that means that this, the speed is uh, quite high. Very high, I think. It's just it's tough going for the two at the back there. Yeah. And the group's going to start churning because there's five oh. now at the front. Yeah. Alonso having to come around the edge. He's going to push Pedersen back. Pedersen pushes. McGregor back in turn. McGregor's going to have to come around Thompson. And this is going to go on for a while now. Boulanger leads. McGregor's round Thompson. Thompson pushes Pedersen out. Pedersen comes around. He's going to have to go around Alonso. Coming around now. Nobody likes traveling at this speed. Second washout. Alonso gets pushed back into the back. Thompson has to come around. Yes. He's going to come around on the side of Pedersen by choice. <laughs> Didn't fancy taking on McGregor. I think that's a good decision on his part. So Thompson comes around. He'll take Pedersen off the side of Boulanger. Cleverly done. Pedersen moving oh. back already. Yes, cleverly done. Alonso goes round. Yeah. Alonso goes round. He's going to take on McGregor. Now these two have had battles in the past. They've had yeah. intense battles <laughs> in the past. There is a lot of history in this one. Alonso on his own outside the group there. I think he's just decided that he's going to make the group come to him. Yeah. And they do. Beautifully planned. <laughs> Not the least by my Pedersen, there, yeah. McGregor having a little a little head to head and McGregor wins that one. Pedersen's not giving it up though. Again, McGregor moves out on him. Just holding him <laughs> off. It's a battle going on there. <clears throat> Boulanger, meanwhile, trouble free, keeps leading. McGregor is just told everyone there that he is fed up with the churn. Yeah. He doesn't want that to go on, which tells you either he's just bored with it or he's getting a little bit tired. Yeah. Thompson takes him on. Yeah. <laughs> he'll pull back willingly now. Yeah. 
Pedersen yeah. around Alonso, and here we go again. This will go on until someone drops off, I think. It's so hard doing that stuff. Yes. In the end, you have to keep picking on the weak one and make them do it yeah. slightly more. You've got to find out who's struggling the most yeah. and make them do it over and over. McGregor coming round, Thompson. Thompson already looking backwards rather than forwards. He's going to take Alonso off the back of the group. Alonso round Pedersen. <laughs> Immediately. Oh, man, there is no delay. No one spends any time on that second wash. <laughs> Until now. Yeah. I think Alonso will try and drag the group over to himself again. Yeah, Pedersen's already dropped back. Yeah. Thompson out. And round we go again. Great learning experience for anyone watching this. And everyone prepared to do this just so that they get a little turn in that V wash and a little break. All the while, Boulanger leads. Pedersen comes round Alonso. Alonso's showing that he doesn't want this to happen this time. Change of body language. Aaron Yossi somewhere further back. Not sure exactly where. Quite a long way back for Aaron Yossi in 24th position at the moment. Yeah. And although so Alonso had had enough, <laughs> at least temporarily, so he's gone to the front. Yeah. And the second, <clears throat> second group, small group has reached them. So now they are all together again. I don't think so. I think that second group is really on their limit at the back there, Stefan. Yeah. If they get there, they're not going to be any use to anyone. Romalo with Carey, decent group. And Lovemore. And Boros. So that's a solid group. Yeah. Got Seisau in there also, and Paufla. And um, the Argentinian, Balboa. So good group back there. That could easily be a first group if it wasn't yeah. for this one. Now Boulanger gets in the fight. He's moved out. He's going to go around Vold, just working and working to try and get back on terms with this group. Chervov, the Russian. Hicks. Norwich Canoe Club. Just the two of them. It's not a good sign for them. That's going to be a tough one. Alonso leads. He just wanted a bit of downtime from the churn. And it seems Boulanger happy to sit on the second, and there'll be some very grateful people for that. Currently, Thompson in the V. Bold and Russell back in the group. Yep. Bold looking quite pained back there. He's done a lot of work to get back. But they are back. They are so. back. And the portage coming up, anything can happen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, you can find yourself coming in in the worst place, and one small mistake from someone, you come out, yeah. you're in the heart That's of the group, and life changes. And the second group is not far behind. They'll catch up at some point, surely. Yeah. There's people in that group who belong in the front group. Vold in trouble again around the inside bend there. And this second group is going to close. Yeah. No, no doubt. Just Laurens and Lindbergh off the back of that group. Romalo on the charge. Pedersen, Alonso, Thompson, McGregor, Boulanger. That's the core of the group. Russell 
and Vold just trying desperately to make their way into it. But at the moment, they're just hanging on. Pedersen running well. Vold in trouble at the back there. Good, good move from Pedersen there. Old from the pontoon. Second group. Conseil in there. Laurens in there. Lindbergh. They were the back three. I missed the front ones. Got Romalo in the yellow hat. Got Lovemore already left in his yellow hat. Boros leading that group at the moment. And it's uh, Vold out to the left of that group. McGregor didn't do so well out of that either. He's back with Russell and Vold. Front group, just four at the moment. And Pedersen is going. Going very hard now. What happened was that uh, Pedersen um, entered the water on the right-hand side of the pontoon and just... Uh, went for it as McGregor and and some other guys on the left hand side and they lost a couple of boat lengths on that. But Pedersen wants this to stick now. Yeah. That's full on. Alonso having a look over his shoulder to see what damage Pedersen's doing. And it seems like significant oh he stopped now. Oh. So who's gonna take this on? Boulanger is the one first round. Pedersen's going to fall back to the V. He needs a break after an effort like that. Paul Fleur. Paul Fleur, Conseil Sal. Carey, Lindbergh. Third group Boros. or something like that, yeah. Yeah, somewhere there's Boros and... Romalio. Romalo, yeah. And um, the Argentinian. Boulanger takes it on. View back to the third group there. There's a group between the one you saw. Away goes Thompson. That was communicated to Pedersen before he went. There's the other group, Gregor and Russell. Thompson motivated. They had a chat with Pedersen. He let him out. You can see how hard Boulanger is working on the wave there. And these four trying to do something here. Currently traveling just over 15k an hour. That's just under four minute thousand meter pace. And that's pretty impressive. And that's why there's only four in shot right now. They're traveling the fastest of the groups by a fair margin. And that gap is opening up. So these guys going for it. They've got two people in there who know that they can run from the front. That's Thompson, who did it yesterday, and Pedersen, who did it last year in the under-23s. They know there's a, a V-wash for them after their lead, so you can overcook the lead somewhat. 
What you don't want now is that group of four to crumble. So there's people I'm still not seeing. I don't see Romalo. I don't see Lovemore. The chase group we're seeing there is McGregor, Russell, and Bowles. The other group was to the right, just came into shot as we left them. Foley, Hicks, and Chervov. Alonso takes his turn on the front. There's the Lovemore, Romalo group, Boris in there as well. Two hats. That's the third group at the moment. McGregor leading the group in front of them with Russell on the right and Vold on the left. Alonso leads. Thompson, Boulanger, and Pedersen. Thompson moving out wide. Not sure what went on there. It will get back to the group. Boulanger leads. This is a group working well together. They know the rules at the moment. They've just got to put as much distance as they can between them and the chase packs. You can make that distance long enough, the chase ends. So Boulanger, Pedersen, Thompson, Alonso. Uh, and they are still increasing the gap. It's uh, up to 80, 100 meter, 80 or 100 meters or so now. They're still on the current graphic 2K an hour faster than yeah, the second group. group behind. So that gap is opening quickly now. Yeah. Yeah. The chase group, you've got the two who struggled on the last lap. You've got Russell and Vold. And the third one in that group is McGregor. Yeah. So I think there's not the firepower in there. McGregor's not got the reason to catch up, I don't think, now. He wants to play in the front group. Yeah. He's not there. And I don't think you know, motivation ends after enough years, Stefan. Yeah. I think he's yeah. happy to play while he's in the front and he would have been mixing it with these guys had he been there. Yeah. But the idea of catching them up, it's just not in him, I don't think. And the other two were only just fast enough on the previous lap when the speed was slower. Group changes again. Boulanger drops into the V. He's done his lead, and that's the arrangement they've got. You go from the lead to the V. Everyone knows it, and that is a group that is going to just pull further and further ahead. Not sure what was happening there. I hope, hopefully that was a temporary stop for someone. Yeah. It was Alonso on the outside of the group. He's just catching up again now. McGregor leading that second group, just about to be caught by the third group. That might be his hope. That what might be. You've still yeah. got a massive group in that third group. Yeah. There's some strong workers in there. Yeah. On the other hand, he has a K2 uh, race tomorrow. So yeah. maybe... Thompson, Pedersen, Alonso, and Boulanger. Uh, 
very good Danish team this this world championships we saw them coming the previous one in China where Peterson did so well and now they are there and two good paddlers in this yeah. category well I think they got more than two as well haven't yeah they? sure but in, in uh, this yeah Catherine Rask yesterday was amazing as well you got Thorben Rask, who, who yes. could be here yeah. or hereabouts. You yeah. got Moretti somewhere back at yeah. home. Winter. There's a good group of guys, yeah. isn't it? It is. Uh, it is. Second and third group have now combined and become one. So that's a, a big group now with some big names in it. There's the visual on that. McGregor still leads at the moment. So they're about 175 meters behind this lead group. Since the previous turn, they've gained 70 meters, these guys. And you see that as well. When you're in the group, don't you step yeah. out? You you can see whether you're making progress yeah. or not very easily. Yeah. Yeah. And the difference when you gain in 70 meters to lose in 70 in terms of your emotional state is massive. Yeah. These okay. guys, if they do this full run to try and get away and get caught, there's going to be some damage done to them beyond that point. So we'll keep Any touch that? on that distance. Balboa leading that second group at the moment on Bold, Balboa, Lovemore, McGregor, Boros, Romalo, and Russell in that second group. So Lovemore leads at the moment. Boros to his left, Balboa to his right. McGregor on the outside. He's going to come round Boros. And the churn begins in this group, which might not be too helpful to them. They need a nicely coordinated group to catch that gap. Gap around 200 meters as it stands now. Seems Pedersen is pulling out a bit more distance again. And in this group of four, it's only Stefan Boulanger that does not have a world championship medal uh, before or that is not a former world champion, uh, if you count what uh, Nikolai did yesterday. Yeah. Stefan Boulanger, well, uh, I think he has a couple of European championship medals, but no world, world champ medal. He'll be very aware of that, I'm sure. Yeah. Alonso had a gold already 2012 and several medals since. So this is portage number three, right? Yeah. Second group. Balboa on the outside coming round. Russell McGregor tucked in the back. Bold. Not long for this group either by the look of that. Out comes Pedersen, Boulanger. Slight slip from oh. another slight slip from Thompson. So you, you hope for his sake that his boat's okay. He's got a bit of work to do. Coming through the drinks lane. That's going to hurt this group. Yeah. We'll hope see. he didn't hope he didn't smash his rudder. It's yeah. So he'll find out in a minute. Yeah. One minute behind. McGregor again pushing someone out. He hasn't lost his aggression over time. Oh McGregor. <laughs> but that's Balboa. They don't get on, do they? 
Balboa and McGregor. There's two very similar personalities there. Yeah. And Seisal seems to have a lot of water in that boat. He's going to lose touch with that group on this run. He's not going to be in there much longer. Romalo leads that chase. Lovemore just behind him. Boros. Oh, man. <laughs> just keeping control. The Portage police dog is there. Conceisau, no longer in that group. <laughs> There's excitement on the Portage. Carey, he's not going to stay either. That's not the right language. Not the right body language for someone who's going forwards. Oh. Pedersen, Alonso. Pedersen trying to make a go of it with just the two of them now. Three. Still got the nose of Boulanger there. Thompson is going to be suffering. Quick look round. Alonso goes. Alonso goes hard as well. Palfler, Adam at the back in the portage. Two Palflers and an Adam. Adam through the drinks lane. Romalo working hard. Boros with him. Who else do they have for company there? Lovemore. That's another good addition. Russell. Yeah. Still hanging in well. McGregor as well. So it's a good group. Not Very sure. Group that could have been the top group a couple of years ago. Not sure who's going to do the work. You've got Romalo and Lovemore maybe. Boros later on in the race comes good. Hicks there with Chervov. Yeah. Lap time. Lap times again, pretty impressive. Yes. This group. 25 seconds. Chase. 20, yeah. 22 Boulanger seconds. Leads. 22 seconds uh, faster on the previous lap, this group. It was a tough lap. Yeah. I think the chase group won't mind seeing Boulanger leading. I think uh, Pedersen's had enough. It's not fast enough with Boulanger leading. Pedersen has to go, goes again. Thompson just at the bottom of shot there. 18 seconds behind. That is a tough chase. He'll know Pedersen really well. Romalo chasing him down. Romalo 200 meters though behind Thompson who's in shot there. So it's big gap. And that top group traveling the fastest of the group still. Yeah. The gap's still opening out rather than closing. Thompson in trouble. Lindbergh. 80 meters for Thompson Lindbergh there. Lindbergh have been injured for two years, close to two years. Now back on track. OK, 
Carre, not going to be his day. He's always promised so much in these races, Stefan. Yeah. He doesn't ever quite crack it. Having done many, many years over the many, many races over the years, since I first saw him 2002 in Samora as a junior. He was I desperately think. unlucky with the COVID thing as well because yeah. he was in the K2000 that was going to do really well in Tokyo yeah. and the extra year somehow took him out of that boat and he didn't even go in the end. So he's had a rough time over the last couple of yeah. years, I think. So the gap slowly opening up 90 meters now to Thompson. Alonso leads. So Denmark, Spain, <coughs> France. Twenty three three seconds. I lost uh, four seconds since uh, the portage. Or since the previous turn, actually. Daniel Salbu, Norway there. Thompson trying to find a wave out there yeah. that will help him. Just a little bit too far back at the moment. Gap slowly but surely growing, 95 meters, yeah. 96. It's, it's quite just... unusual, uh, a group of three traveling that fast. Um, usually when they are three and three, they start to position positioning themselves and save some strength and compete to each other instead of just helping and going fast. I think they're still at a phase, Stefan, where they're, they're making sure that they've yeah. got rid of Thompson. Yeah. I think once they know that, maybe when they come around the turn yeah. and they see him over 100 meters behind, which he is now, yeah. then they might change their attitude. Yeah. And also the second group, they know the, they know, they know this big names yeah. behind them. Don't yeah. They? Yeah. Alonso looking slightly less fresh now. Got a little lean forward, trying to take the pressure off a little bit. Thompson's cracked back to 111 meters, 112, 113, 115. It's just, yeah, he's just, <laughs> yeah, he's, the elastic's broken. Yeah. He was, he was there for a while. It was a valiant effort, but he didn't need it. it was a, after yesterday as well. That was always going to be a big ask. Much faster lap, this one. 14.23, 14.58, the previous. That second lap was the one, look, 13.48. That was the tough one. Yeah. So Thompson kind of an, in, an inevitable wait now for that group behind him to close him down. 150 meters, the difference between him and them, and they will most certainly catch him, I'm sure. Yeah.
Yeah, what made that difference, Stefan, was that just that small trip, well, two, two little slips at the portage, and it was yeah. game over. Yeah. That's marathon. Yep. McGregor, Lawrence in that group as well. Here goes Alonso. Edison ducks around the back. So these are well organized group changes. They're still yes. motivated to go forwards. Helping each other beautifully. Cooperate. And they should. It's still three long laps to go. Yep. So Alonso, Pedersen, Boulanger eating up the distance. Thompson on his own, almost 200 meters back now. 300 meters back, the other chase group just over a minute behind. Looking relaxed once again. Superb. Thompson looking a little bit jaded now. Round the turn for portage number four. Quick glance over the shoulder from Pedersen, see where Thompson is. They'll see they've broken him. And it might change how this group operates. Pedersen coming right. A little bit close for Boulanger there. The other two very clean out. Late change of plan, it looked like, for Pedersen there. Takes his next drink. These three still together, they'll be fine. Away goes Pedersen. Surely he can't be thinking of going on his own now. But it looks he like could. he is. Yeah. That's it was definitely. exactly the same. It was exactly the same uh, pattern as his, when he split the group on the previous portage. Good move, obviously. To... There's water in this boat. Empty that out.
helping is bent the portage handle and that's rubbing on him so it just needs to tape's really not going to work on a wet boat is it <laughs> i think that first crash had broken something in that boat yeah They just I don't know what's happened there, but something's rubbing on him and they've tried to put a bit of tape over it. Probably a crack in the boat from that first crash, which was pretty heavy, wasn't it? Yeah. Maybe just a bit of carbon splinter. And Thompson joins in what is already a very, very strong group but not, by the look of it, a very motivated one. No. That's, that's a load of faff. They have given up. Two South Africans getting weed off the front of their boat. Yeah. And there's absolutely no one in there who's doing anything, is there? No. McGregor and Lovemore are doing K2 together tomorrow, so... In That'll be a pretty days. impressive K2, yeah. I think. It will. But, uh, in these positions, in this race, they should save strength for tomorrow. Well, here we go. Yeah, here we Alonso's go. Alonso's made his way back. Yeah. And Boulanger hasn't. Boulanger is 50 metres behind... And I don't yeah. think he's going to make it. No. We saw Peterson doing uh, almost the same in China. He went for his own for quite a long distance in one of his wins. How how good is Alonso all of a sudden? Stephen? Yeah. Just but, yeah. You know, two years ago, three years ago, you kind of thought maybe his time was up. He yeah. wasn't going to be up the sharp end anymore. But he said, in a, he said uh, in an interview that he was um, fond of it again and really motivated to, to go for it just for the love of sport. Now, that's a man with a lot going through his mind right now. Yeah. He's having a quick stock take, see how tired he is. And he knows the other group's a long way behind. They're 400 meters or 350 behind him. Yeah, which is a long way, but it is. there's also it's three also a long, long laps way to go. Yeah, yeah. And somebody is going to find or see him there and realise there's a bronze medal to be had. Yeah. Lindbergh seemingly on his own somewhere. On fourteenth position or so. About that, I think a bit of disappointment for him. So is this this is lapped athletes, isn't it? That's what yeah, we're seeing it here. It is. To give you some idea how much better these guys are than those at the back of the field, they are shooting past them. <laughs> yeah. I think they could have yeah. joined in for a bit. I think that's a costly error on their part. Ah. I'm not sure who, who they are up there. Try and find out for you. Four sixty one and four eighty two makes Canada, Andre Kanitsky and Japanese, I think Yamaguchi. Yeah. So B 
Boulanger, 70 odd metres behind. Uh, 497 from India also lapped shortly after that last portage, Shukin from India. And Peterson is really going fast now. He increased the speed around that around that turn. I Why think yeah, that, that was the last bit of his lead, wasn't it? He knew yeah. he was going to stop after yeah. the turn. Alonso yeah. goes. Boulanger is going to be checking out the distance between him and whoever might be catching him. And it's quite long still. Still close to 350 metres. That's the chase pack, and that's just not organized, is it? Strange. They've given up. Yeah, but these two in the front is very well organized. I'm quite amazed that they keep on going that hard. I think it's uh, Matt Brand Peterson who is setting the speed. Yeah. He's very eager to, to continue to go hard. You know what he did two years ago. Exactly that and tired everyone out and had a fantastic victory. Boulanger looks pretty good back there. Yeah. Good rhythm. He's come Eager to terms to... with being on his own, and yeah. he's just getting on with the job now. Eager to get his first uh, medal from from a world championships after quite many years in the sport. McGregor leading the pack behind. Looks like about a minute each for these guys at the moment. Yeah. And Alonso's probably happy to do that. He's for the minute each, you can just see the end of your lead always. You can see that bit of rest, but when you do one-to-one -one on that sort of stuff, if you're slightly weaker than the other athlete, it gradually builds up over time, the fatigue, and when it hits, it hits bad. I think they're far enough around the course now. They should survive it. Boulanger moving well again. And he looks pretty comfortable back there now. Some 106 metres at the moment, the difference. So the gap's growing, but it isn't growing too fast. I think Boulanger happy with what he's doing at the moment. Almost 500 metres, 400 metres back to uh, this group. 
Laurent's in the lead at the moment. Away goes Pedersen. Alonso to match his speed and onto the wave. Beautifully done. Still looking over the shoulders. It is difficult to be in front. You know, you you're not really know how fast they're going behind. So a lot of the driving force up the front there becomes fear, doesn't it? Yes, fan? exactly, and, exactly. And, yeah, with these courses at least, they do have the benefit of a turn yeah. every fifteen hundred yeah. meters. Yeah. So then you you get a good view as to whether people are closing you yeah. down or not, and. It's, on other uh, courses, you need some support from the support crew yeah. to, to help give time gaps. Like to do in cycling and cross-country skiing in this kind of sport. So these two slow just a little now. Alonso still looking comfortable. So Pedersen, Alonso coming round for Portage number five. Boulanger, a little bit of tension in the face, but both moving nicely. I think even Boulanger is opening up distance on the groups behind now, about 380 meters. Yeah, that's right. So, can Alonso do another catch up after this portage if Pedersen gets away again? He should have learned now. I think uh, Pedersen uh, found a winning concept. Getting in early at the right hand side. He's got out on the other side of the pontoon this time. Yeah. So he's left hand sided this time. You can see how hard Alonso is running. He knows it's important to stay in touch. You wonder if Pedersen can get in his boat as well on the left hand side as on the right hand side. Coming out at the other end, Boulanger. Boulanger out and running. And I, I think that the other two will leave together this time. Yeah. So two more portages. Yeah, away they go together. They still have good use from each other. Uh, Boulanger is still only 110 meters behind. Yeah. Well done from him. Very impressive. Yeah. There's the big group behind. 
Boulanger, so Lovemore, McGregor, Lawrence, Monsaisal, Russell, Thompson. Oh, they do not need. Everyone's out safely. That's good. Poor guy from Japan. Doesn't really know what's happening around him there. <coughs> Boulanger still moving well. You can probably hear the cheers from that group, but the gap is getting bigger, nearly 400 meters now. Canadian doing the wise thing there and letting the guys go through. Bold, Thompson, Laurence, Balboa. That's pretty tidy getting in from Balboa there. Yeah. Thompson, not going on, I don't think. He stood by his boat at the end of the pontoon there. There he is. No, he's done. Where is uh, Ravalio? Seems like he has stopped. Good point. He's not there anymore. No. On the graphics, he's down back with, yeah, on his own. Yeah. Far behind. The Thompson's got some damage in that boat somewhere. Yeah. And consolation for him, and Alonso goes on. The fight yet to start, really, for gold and silver. They're just making distance. Canada and Japan, they've been lapped now. Roger on his own. Some distance to cover still. So far, so good. That was... So Vold and Russell just losing contact with that group now. South Africans leading. Boros up there. Laurens up there. Conceição and Balboa. Still a really good group. If that was the front group of a race, yeah. you wouldn't be surprised. Exactly. And uh, it is reported that uh, Ramalio got some problems. He went to the bank and stopped for a little while and then continued. He has that so often, doesn't he? Back in Copenhagen yeah. years ago, he took that swim. In Portugal, he had the boat damage. Now, whatever it is today, it just doesn't ever fall for him. So Pedersen, Alonso. Marching on at the front. But 
lap time slowly increasing. So on lap seven now, one more portage to go. Six and a half K. Two more portages to go, sorry. Six and a half K to go. So confirmation that Romalo has retired. His boat is being carried back on the motorboat. So another tough day for Romalo, but he got his world champion title a couple of days ago in the short course. And that doesn't go away. So he's catching up a few more tail enders. Pedersen, Alonso, and Boulanger. Really sticking to his task back there. Holding his distance, Boulanger on the group behind him. That isn't going to catch now. It's just running out of time. 6K to go. It's reported that it is reported that Ramalho has given up. Never really made an impact on this one, Stefan. Oh. Didn't hit the front group and uh, never got into it at all. Wasn't his day. No, he was very, very pleased after his win the other day on the short, short distance, though. Maybe that impacted his. Yeah, maybe that's it. Yes. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's what he's been sticking out for. For so many years struggling yeah. to get a gold medal and then finally got it and yeah that was it Alonso just swapping sides on Pedersen there so those distances look pretty short but they're not they're quite big you've got almost 200 meters back to Boulanger and almost 600 meters back to that chase pack. Boulanger on his own with two portages to go. Kind of both pleasant and awkward position to be in. He's eager to get his bronze medal, but he's, of course, scared that they should start to, to catch. Tommy Yonley there in the blue from the US. Traveling round with Concha from Chile. It's reported that as Ramalho had a shoulder, uh, shoulder injury. He's assisted by by uh, 
the course umpires to get wow. get to the bank. Alonso comes through. Pedersen having a little lean back. Getting a little bit tired now. Yeah. And now also your mind starts to go towards conservation. Yes. For whatever's going to happen at the end. So it's like you run through your systems, see which ones are working, which ones aren't. Take note of all the... There you go, he's taking the pressure off his backside there. Just trying to relieve all the bits that are hurting. McGregor still pushing on. Boros with him. Lovemore, Laurence. Yeah, as you said, the second group could have been uh, the top group, but uh, these two guys in front is really in a class for themselves today. Yeah, it's funny how time changes things, Stefan. When was the last time Alonso beat McGregor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it's the same period of time since we've seen them, but one yeah. has, has you know, done well through this break yeah. by the look of it. Yeah. I mean... He won 2012, but then uh, it was in Rome, and then McGregor had some other problems. It was some crashes and disqualifications and stuff, and I yeah. don't really recall everything of that. But uh, in the end, Alonso was the winner. And since then, uh, McGregor won every everything. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Eleven gold medals. The first one, 2003, and then a gap to 11, and then 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was sick, actually, uh, 2019. Yeah, 19. Yeah. He didn't race there, did he? I can't remember what that was, but shingles, maybe, or something. Yeah, like yeah. An amazing track record. Yeah, an incredible track record. Yeah. And then additionally two goals in K2. I think it was 2014 and 17. And then the silver as well in Gear, as we have seen many times on this intro. Yeah. So, just about to enter their last long lap. Pedersen keeps leaning back, trying to take the pressure off his backside. Will we see an effort of blood now? To his legs. I think so. Yeah. Comfortable run for both of them. Still gain, gaining from keeping together. So about a minute, the gap. He's doing a great job. He has done unbelievably well, yeah. Scott, man. He had that little period when they first left him where he looked a little bit shaky. Yeah. And then he regrouped. And he's really been traveling pretty much the same speed as them. He's exactly. lost 200 meters in three laps, is it? Yeah, yeah. He lost a minute during the first lap, but then he has stayed yeah. also more or less at very, the same Very, very impressive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's a physical, 
impress impressiveness about that, but the yes. mental yeah. aspect of what he's doing out there yeah. is is quite spectacular. To him, it's winning a bronze, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So, one more portage to go, and then a showdown between these two. Probably have to favour Pedersen, because he's in it more depends. of a winning state Yeah, line. it depends a little bit how the last, uh, the final portage uh, turn out. Alonso yep. has a good in sprint. That's just lapping Holotov from Ukraine there. Lawrence. Lawrence McGregor. Love more Balboa. Oh. Well, Vold is still there. He's looked shaky for a long time. Still hanging in on that group. Balboa first in, he gets into his boat so, so well. A black boat at the front there, step and go. McGregor is just jogging over the portage. It's not so much eagerness in him now. For a man winning 12 gold medals, to become eight or ninth or whatever it could be, it's n nothing. So he probably save his strength for tomorrow, tomorrow. the best he can. So the Ukrainian having his time with the front group there. Some seconds in fame. Yep. Even if it's only the front of your boat. Yeah. Still counts. Balboa there, medaled last year, but not to be this year. This is the third medal right here. And I think this being the last lap, Boulanger has got a little bit of extra spring in his step. He knows he doesn't have to go up here again. This is the last time up to the top turn. that group away from the portage. So one long lap to go.
So a little bit of calm time now for us, Stefan, till the finish. It is. <clears throat> it didn't pan up. Didn't turn out this race uh, as um, expected. I thought it should have been a big group until uh, yeah, at this stage at least. Okay, I'm going to put it out there, Stefan. Yeah. Is this the first time the women's race has been more interesting than the yeah. men's race in the yeah, history right. of racing? I think it is. Mm. Even that's even not to take anything away from the quality of these guys, obviously. Exactly. In terms, uh, uh, in terms not, of interest. Uh, oh, no, yeah, and not from the previous winners or, or the ladies' race either. No. But uh, in terms of just interest that, and excitement. Yeah. It's just that uh, Alonso and Peterson is too good. Yep. Very high quality race from these two guys. I mean, we saw Peterson doing almost the same uh, in in China two years ago. Just go for it, and and now once again, and now together with Alonso, and that wasn't expected, not at least for me. No. No. So the Irish, both Irish are out. Foley has just retired. He's coming back on a boat. Egan stopped earlier. We're going to finish today with the lake as we started it, Stefan. Dead flat by the look of it. Yeah. The wind's dying down. Yeah, these conditions over this weekend so far have been absolutely amazing for marathon racing. Yeah. And for a lot of, yeah. Brian, sorry, just uh, Pedersen checking over his shoulder there, and I think yeah, they were they were laughing. <laughs> yeah, but he, that's because the first time he looked over, he mistook yeah. the lapped athlete for somebody chasing them. Okay, he had, he had a little panic, and then he realised what he'd done. That's what they were laughing about, I think. Yeah. Uh. I mean, for a guy like Alonso, a gold 2012, and then a silver 13 and 14, and then a bronze 15, and then then disappeared a little bit from yeah, from, real uh, drought for him, yeah. yeah, and Couldn't then being quite. back, it's yeah. it's it's very very unusual, very strong. It's great. Still swapping leads, so they're still not really. Entering into a race between the two oh. of them yet? No. Oh. Thank you. They will wait until the final portage. Yeah, probably about 300 meters before that. Yeah. They'll start to get a bit. Yeah. We'll see it when we when it happens, and <laughs> yeah. you see the change in attitude. Yeah. We saw a little bit of Alonso last year at the Europeans when he had a bronze bronze medal for himself. But uh, we, at least me didn't expect this. Yeah. I think he's better than he have ever been. Considering the increased quality of racing since 2000. Yeah, I mean, things always improve, don't they? Yeah. And if you can improve with them, yeah. you're doing very, very well. Yeah. But that is the most important impressive things so for these guys that have been staying in this game for so long like like hank yeah i mean it's close to 20 years yeah the first goal 2003 and actually he he participated in vaxol back in 1996 as a junior yeah that's basically stone age considering uh, how racing have, has developed. This is quite interesting. I've got a message from Rene Vestable glass that Alonso and Mads Pedersen have been on training camp together this spring. Ah, fantastic. So they know each other pretty well. Pretty then. well, yeah. So, yeah, fresh training group can sometimes stimulate. You kind of 
get out of the your usual environment. How good has this guy been today? It's good for him. It's really worth it. Having done this for many years as well without a medal. He had a silver medal at the Europeans back in 2018, but uh, a lot of results just uh, just under the medals, fourth yeah. and fifth and sixth, both on the Europeans and the Worlds in K1 and K2. And it means so much to these guys uh, to have a medal finally, as it as it meant to Ramalu to have a gold. Yeah, it just justifies the time yes. and the effort that you put yes. in and gives you something concrete to actually have at the end of it. And yes. But yeah, then again, yeah, having said that, Stefan, this isn't all about the medals, is it? There's there's races within races here, and you can come back from these. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of our canoe girl who's come fourth twice this weekend. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a bigger win as any of this. And, Absolutely, uh, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be winning to win. If no, of course that's... not. Yeah, tension is building up. It is just everyone sitting that little bit taller. Speed heading back up to 14k an hour again and I think Pedersen's only going to be happy with a win. Yeah. Alonso happy with either, I think. Yeah. And I think I, that's going to be yes. the difference ultimately, is that Pedersen isn't going to settle where Alonso is if it gets hard, I think. And now, now it's on. <clears throat> so Pedersen's going to come this side this time, onto the yeah. right-hand side of the pontoon, because yeah. that's, that's the side he knows he can get in on quickly. Yeah. Alonso still coming in aggressively, though. Pedersen up and away. Oh, I think this is already done. Just depends what Alonso feels. Gaps only three or four lengths. Alonso is running hard. Pedersen running run. harder, though. Yeah. I think that Alonso gap really, is opening up. Yeah. Alonso's yeah, looking backwards, is. not forwards. Yeah. The Pedersen's going to be in and away, yeah. about four lengths clear of Alonso. There he goes. It's done. Yeah. Once again, a gold medal to Denmark. What a championship they, they are doing. They're having a great time. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. They were a long time out of the medals. They were in yeah. the medals years ago, back in the yeah. 80s, 90s, then a long time out of it. And now yeah. this generation have really brought them to the top again. Yeah. Quite a few clubs specializing in marathon. Silkeborg is uh, Mats Pedersen's uh, club. Silkeborg is uh, one of them. And they... You say specializing in marathon, but you know, yeah, Torben Rask has got a good handful of, of medals course. from the sprint course, championships course, this year. And, uh, yeah. But on, they are training for, training yeah. for, 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 it. for yeah. marathon, and that pays off also for sprint distances. So many great paddlers coming through.
Yeah, he's cracking out over 15k an hour now. That's yeah. well under five, four minute, thousand meter pace at the end of a race like this. A super impressive. Yeah. And in two years' time, we will have a world championships in Denmark. And looking at these really? youngsters. Whereabouts? Copenhagen uh, again? Or? No, no. In the southern part. Nice. And looking at this young generation, it could be a really, really, really good championship. Yeah. So organizing yeah. a championship, you really need uh, good athletes. But now concentrate on Mats Peterson, winning his second gold medal in a consecutive world championships. Mats Peterson, Denmark. Superb. Yeah, just enjoy. This is I great. don't know why he's looking over his shoulder. Oh. <laughs> What's he looking for? <laughs> Driven by fear. Yeah. <laughs> Alonso more than happy just yeah. to come second. Yeah. And I th great. I do really think that's the difference. If Alonso had, you know, had to win this, his behavior coming into the portage would have been different. His behavior on the run would be different. But he just let it slip away because it didn't. It wasn't the end of the world to him to come second. It would have been for Mads, I think. Yeah, and then maybe they know each other too well as well. Yeah. And here's another happy guy. Uh, yeah, he'd like to shake his hand after this. He's done some sterling work over the day today. He's going to finish Absolutely. about 400 meters behind. Now comes the smile. Yes. Very happy man, Mats Peterson. Once again, an amazing race. Last the time it was the World Championships, he had two gold medals. Now he's winning uh, once again. Stand up, the same pattern as last time. Having a ball, a swim. Superb. Yeah, he's definitely superb. the best of the best at the moment. Yes. Now Another that's very, an even happier yeah, man, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think he's even happier with his silver than Matt is <laughs> with his... Gold. Yes. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> That's justified I, an yeah. awful lot of time yeah. put into I, the sport. I made it. I made it. Yeah. I made it. Yeah. That's really nice to see. You got yeah. three medalists here, not yeah. one of which is disappointed. Good friendship, exactly as it should be. Three the very happy men. Yes, the Fountain Boulanger, what a race you have done. Thanks. Well done. Finally, K1 medal for France. Tried many times, recent years. And they'll have strong K2s out tomorrow as well. Yes. World champions last year. I think that's fantastic to have all three medalists absolutely pleased as they can be with their medal. Yeah. Often there's disappointment for someone who thought they were going to win and didn't or got beaten on the line. But yeah, it's a big that, difference to to lose a medal than to win one. Yeah. Three people have all won their medals there. Yes. And that's superb. Hope to have some nice interviews from uh, Ross in a couple of minutes.
Ross will be all over it, asking him what it feels yeah. like yeah. to be a world champion. Big finish. Oh. Oh, two, two boys are having a fight at this stage of the game. McGregor's going to come through again. They're going to clash again. Oh. Ah. Teammates from from Durban. Amish Lovermore and, and uh, Hank McGregor is cuts fighting. McGregor out. Yeah. I think that's the Irishman on the floor there, Foley. McGregor not going to find a way out of that, oh. I don't think. That's a battle within a battle there. Lovemore takes that one. Yeah. Oh, Boa and Laurence and then McGregor. Boros behind McGregor and Vold behind Boros. James Russell finishes the top 10. Great start to that race for him. And there's a lot to build on from that. Got a great training group going there in Nottingham. And there's been some good results from that group this weekend. Women's K1, women's C1, men's short course, men's long course, under 23s. They've got everything up there and it shows Gary Kachia leading in this group. Jacob Adam with him. Lindbergh. Hungarian and Arian also. Cyril Carey. Cyril Carey also a guy with a more than 20 year career. And Hungary, got a load of weed on the front, but he's coming off now, and he's going to take this one, I think. Yeah. Aaron Yossi saved a little bit for the end. Maybe not. Still a long way past. Nope. It's going to be Gary Kachia. And the Hungarian challenge falters. And he's going to be finished fourth yeah. out of them. It's going to be Lindbergh from, oh, no, it's oh. going to be. Ah. Oh. Joke about it. No, oh, that was close. Who, oh, knows? Really who close. knows? Nobody knows that one. And the Hungarian challenged too early. Didn't make it to the end. Carey thinking he didn't enjoy his day too much today. Haufler, same deal. He's been up front end of those races for. Not today, though. Not the face of a man who's enjoying himself. So power flat across the line. And that's 19th position for him. Both the power brothers down an end of the race that they're not used to being in today. That's Shervov from Russia. Uh, 
And here's Ross with the interview for our new world champion, Mads Pedersen. <laughs> Yes, uh, thanks a lot, Ivan. And I have to say, uh, Mads Peterson looks less tired than I do after climbing up the stairs. Mads, uh, that looked easier than your last world title, was it? Oh, no, it was uh, super tough. We had a very high uh, average speed and we were working very hard uh, together, uh, me, Alonso and uh, Stefan, uh, to keep the distance uh, to the chaser. So, it was just uh, amazing to take the win. Uh, I've been training two years and thinking about uh, taking the title again. So coming here after a year with uh, Corona and being back on the world stage and take the world championship again, that's uh, absolutely amazing. What was your pre-race plan? Was it, I mean, basically after the second lap, you went out really hard and tried to split the field. Was, was that what you tried to do? Yeah, like I wanted to uh, stay in the top and uh, have the good rushes. And I knew for me it would be good to have a very hard uh, race with a hard uh, speed all the way. So the race suited me very well. And after the first portage, we, uh, we were going really hard. So, so I knew this was, uh, was the right way for me and uh, it worked out pretty well. So. <laughs> in 2019, you won two marathon races in 24 hours, basically. Uh, I wonder whether this was more pressure, though, this time being the defending champion and knowing everybody was watching you. Yeah, it's something else when uh, everybody knows who you are, so it's uh, really tough. But I think this is uh, amazing as well. I got a full set in about three weeks with the uh, bronze in the 5,000 metre on Lake Bowser and then a silver and a gold here, so uh, I'm pretty stoked with that. And uh, Ivan and Stefan in the commentary box mentioned that in two years' time we're going to be in Denmark for the World Championships. Uh, the results here have been so good for Denmark. It must be an exciting time to be a marathon paddler in Denmark, is it? Yeah, it's, uh, that's a good group of people doing marathon in Denmark and the level is very high and we can push each other, so it's pretty cool. And next year we have the Europeans in Silkeborg, where uh, that's my hometown, and... Uh, and I'm looking forward to paddling there, so it's, uh, it will be very nice. I'm sure everybody will be out to watch you in force. Mads, uh, another impressive performance today. Congratulations. Back-to-back -back world champion. Well done. Thank you so much, and thank you to everyone. <laughs> so a little insight into Mads' mindset on that. He knew if it was hard, it was going to suit him. So when it got hard, he just rolled with it and went for it. So, But it's interesting what he said. It's uh, exactly as we discussed, um, being a champ and everyone is watching you and every, uh, putting pressure on you. And, and Wanda Kisler said the same. She was very nervous. And I'm quite impressed all of these guys that have been staying uh, for years and years and years uh, as uh, champions. Every year feeling that pressure and uh, be successful. It's quite impressive. I think... That pressure works both ways, though, Stefan. In the lead-up to an event, yeah. it's, it's a pressure. But when you're out on the water, there's a level of respect that you get that makes yeah. your life slightly easier. Mm. Yeah, we, we talked about it with Hank before. Yeah, Often, you're given something that you wouldn't normally be given if you weren't that world champion. Mm. And so I think it, it, you know, there's, there's pluses and minuses. Yeah. And if you had to choose between being a serial world yeah. champion or not, you'd probably choose <laughs> being one. So, so I, I, feel, I don't feel sorry for him at all with that extra <laughs> pressure. I don't feel sorry for Vanda and I don't feel sorry for him. I think it's a luxury problem in uh, the sports world. It is, but it, it, it's great to withstand and uh, it's great to, to enjoy. Uh, so it's only some people that can in, enjoy it year after year because it's something that goes on in your mind all the time and and you yep. yeah some people f feel it uh, enjoyable and some people not uh, there's a lot of interest in psychology around sport that i think is not very well understood by a lot of people and that that is Quite general, I think, in society. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Canadian coming in there. Kainatsky. Okay, 
and behind him, Shokin from India. Big finish. The other people going round have still got a small lap to go. That's not because they're behind the Canadian. It's that they haven't been overtaken. So some the people who've been lapped have to come in early. In shot now, Yamaguchi from Japan. His day's over. Yeah. And talking about these big uh, stars that have been with us for so many years, what about Ravalio? Will you continue for next year and, and the world's in Ponte de Lima? I would think so. You'd think so, but if you're talking about pressure, yeah, yeah, pressure yeah. right there. You know, he had he had his home championships a couple of yeah. years ago, three years ago, and yeah, but this it, this it, is also kind of a home home championship for him, and yeah, we'll I see, hope but, he does carry on because I, I yeah, like absolutely, I, I, he's one of I the think, he's one of the yeah. figures of the sport. Yeah, and I think uh, Portugal needs him for 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 that championships. Yeah, yeah, I think they do. And, uh, it's it's uh, always very very uh, important for a hosting nation, organizing nation, to have good athletes uh, in their own championships. So and yeah, you need Lima. you need a poster athlete, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. You need somebody absolutely. for the, the fans to come and watch. Yeah. And Denmark will have that and World Championships to 2023. Well, they've got a lot of good. Big names yes. there now. There's that you know, is a good medal hall. I think we're going to have the medal table shown in a minute, yeah. which will uh, show us just who's who. Yeah, and I mean that uh, that race is um, that event is uh, taking place in Kolding, in the southern part of Denmark, uh, by, organized by Vejen. So it's a new place for us. Wow! But it's it will be great. Denmark is organizing quite many good races, big races now. And it was a dream from their former uh, chairman, president of the Danish Canoe Federation, Ole Tukep, who passed away recently. Um, uh, and uh, I think it's a tribute to him now to for them to really uh, make good, good uh, championships. They had a very good one in Copenhagen. Uh, three weeks ago and next year the Europeans in Silkeborg and then coming up the Colding World Championships 2023. It was his dream for Denmark to organize big events often and that dream came through. Just that he he couldn't couldn't see it himself. It. It's a shame. Yeah. A man who did a lot for canoeing. He was the organizer of Tour de Gudino for many, many years, and the chair, president of the, of the Danish Canoe Federation for as many years, basically. Chile, there. That is Concha across the line now, Italian Graziani. Tommy Yonley in the States. Good day's work for him. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, India there. Shakin. And the Ukrainian Lotov. Various finishing systems there. I think Tommy Yonley did the full course. Some have missed a big lap. Shukin. Kainatsky from Canada and Yamaguchi from Japan. I think all got lapped and have had to come in early. A right, long that's day. it for the day, Stefan. Yeah, a long day of, of uh, interesting racing. And I think uh, the highlights will, uh, have been many. Uh, it was very interesting to to see the C1 men, a uh, new winner uh, that have been um, winning this kind of races uh, before. And we will see a lot more of him, I'm sure of that, uh, in the coming years. And then the, the ladies... Uh, with this big group and uh, they're very very challenging and interesting yeah. racing going on there was great and then uh, this uh, final k1 men quite a, a little bit of a, a little bit unusual k1 men race but uh, really really good yeah i think it was the race itself that impressed me in the women's i think yes. it was exciting uh, you don't always get that and in the, the men's, it was just the scale of the performances. You have to appreciate yeah. how good those guys were today. Yeah. It might not have been the most interesting viewing, but it was superb performances. So for me, race of the day was the women's K1. And I think that was just fun to watch. It's good, good racing from start to finish. Indeed. And the men's was just a display of 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 current greatness really that's a very good way to explain current greatness that that is what it was and what to expect of tomorrow then i think we'll have a really good uh, both c2 k2 uh, women and k2 men ra racing many many good good um, participants there yeah, we've least. got the, the k2 juniors first as well and yeah. that, that can be exciting because yeah. there's a lot of unknowns in that yeah. And the C2 men, which is going to be very much the usual cat and mouse game, I think, of you know, the usual suspects in that. The K2 women, if it's anything like the K1 women today, I'm looking forward to that. And then yeah. the K2 men is always a big finish for the whole weekend, isn't it? It's, uh, it is, absolutely. It always ends on a high with that one. So I know, yeah. I know the graphics guys are working on a medal table somewhere in the background. So hopefully they'll get that up. Yeah. But all this graphics is produced by Marcos Oliveira, who is doing uh, most of the most most of the race management these days, both in sprint and and marathon in international races. Yeah, and he he's lifted the production of these events absolutely from from absolutely nothing to something that's really yeah. becoming quite a spectacle. Yeah. And yeah, he, he needs recognition for that, I think. He's, Absolutely. Uh, he's everywhere all the time. And uh, yeah, hats off to him. He gets things done. And also uh, the production company led by Alex, the local production company coming into this event uh, only a week ago. They have done great. But at least these highlights. That's it for the day. I think so. Yes, we do have a prize giving ceremony. Uh, of course, we need to celebrate these winners, these great sportsmen. We 
do have a prize giving ceremony coming coming up in a couple of minutes to celebrate these great sportsmen of K1 men. Three great happy medalists, as Peterson, Ivan Alonso, and Stefan Boulanger. The medals were presented by uh, Ruud Heisler, the chairman of the International Marathon Committee. We said of, of or, organizing these events. And that's all from us today. Thank you for staying tuned and welcome back tomorrow for another day of interesting racing. Have a good night.
Hver gang rammer man.